welcome you all to Locos Retreat Center. Let us surrender this day to God's hand and pray for all those people who prepare themselves to come here and all those who will be spending this one day here. Surrendering each and every one, let us pray for a mighty anointing, deliverance, healing in each one's life. Surrendering this day, let us pray in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty and eternal God, we praise you and thank you. You are nurtured Logos Retreat Center with the power of the Holy Spirit to reach out to the whole world and to spread your word. Heavenly Father, we implore you to bestow your merciful grace upon Logos Ministries and each member who extend their service and offer donations to this ministry. O God of divine mercy, shed your merciful light on all service entities of a Logos Retreat Center. Fill us with the Holy Spirit. Bless all its endeavors. Renew, reform, regulate all its ministries. Let our aim be only for your glory and to glorify the name of Jesus. We pray, O Lord, that there may be a special outpouring of all kinds of spiritual graces. Let this ministry be confirmed with your mighty healing, deliverance, signs, wonders and miracles. Our merciful Father, extend your compassionate hands on all those who enter Logos Retreat Center. Bless and renew them with your Holy Spirit so that they may follow you in truth and action. We consecrate Logos Ministries to the Immaculate Heart of Mother Mary and to the Eucharistic Heart of Jesus and to the Divine Mercy Hour. We ask all the angels and saints, holy apostles, to pray for Logos Ministries to the Lord our God. Amen. Amen. Holy Mother of Jesus, pray for us and Logos Ministries. Saint Joseph, pray for us and Logos Ministries. Saint Peter the Apostle, pray for us and Logos Ministries. Saint Paul the Apostle, pray for us and Logos Ministries. Saint Thomas the Apostle, pray for us and Logos Ministries. Saint Vincent de Paul, pray for us and Logos Ministries. Saint David Sahayim, pray for us and Logos Ministries. My dear friends, let us surrender this day and invoke the Holy Spirit in our midst and let us pray, begin this session. Today is the time table will be as follows. From 9.30 to 10, we have rosary and praise and worship. From 10 o'clock onwards, we have the first talk. And after that, 11 o'clock, we will have procession. And after that, we have, after that, we have one more talk by Father Jose. At 12 o'clock, 12 to 1, then we depart for lunch. Then we come back by 1.30. And 1.30 onwards, uh, we have praise and worship. 2 to 3, again, we have a talk. And 3 to 4, as usual, we have healing, adoration. And after that, for, after that our uh, uh, divine mercy, divine mercy uh, novena and theme will be preached. After that, the service for that day ends and you are expected to go to Holy Mass to your respective parishes for Ejil Mass. We will not have a Mass in the evening. And meanwhile, all those who are interested for confession, priests will be available behind the screen. Uh, after 10 o'clock onwards, fathers will be available and also some lay pre, uh, counselors will be available, um, available towards my right, that is in the Divine Mercy Hall. So I wish each and every one a blessed day. Thank you, Father. Let's gently close our eyes. Let's all close our eyes. Let's place our hands very gently on our hearts. Today is a holy day. Today is a day so beautiful to thank the Lord, to thank Jesus. It's because when he died, we are all saved. So let's welcome the Holy Spirit this moment. Let's ask the Holy Spirit to come strengthen us and give us that power that we need to come closer to the Lord. Welcome Holy Spirit We are in your presence Fill us with your power Live inside of me very honestly, thirsting for the Holy Spirit. Let's ask the Holy Spirit in every walk of our life, in everything that we do, every word that we speak, we need, it needs to be guided by the Holy Spirit. 
maybe in the past we have not prayed this moment let's open our hearts let's lift our voices lift our hearts just speak to the holy spirit ask the holy spirit oh holy spirit come change me make me a new creation and kindle the fire once again within me oh holy spirit welcome holy spirit we are in your presence fill us with your power fill us with your power live inside of me let's thirst for that living water that will come and cleanse us that holy blood of jesus that precious blood of jesus coming this moment and cleansing us of all our iniquities cleansing us of all our weaknesses let's earnestly pray to the holy spirit you're the living water never drying fountain comforter and counselor Take complete control You're the living water Never drying fountain Comforter and counselor Take complete control Holy Spirit we are in your presence fill us with your power live inside of me lord fill us with your power lord fill us with your power live inside of hallelujah 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 thank you lord we praise you we give you all glory and honor thank you jesus thank you for your holy blood thank you for your precious blood thank you for dying for us lord jesus setting us free lord from all bondage from all sickness from all pain lord jesus Thank you Lord for your mighty healing touch Lord. Thank you Jesus for dying for us. Thank you Lord for pouring out your precious blood upon us Lord Jesus. Karala bara shira la mara la Yeshu. Nila ra kala bara shira la mara la la. Oh Yeshu. Fill us with your power. Live inside of Let's close our eyes and let's place all our intentions as we look at Jesus the wounded face of Jesus the most holy face of Jesus let's bring to mind everything that we have in our hearts let's bring to mind our families let's bring to mind every little thing that we have come here let's open up our hearts to the lord let's speak to the lord let's pray to the lord this moment Jesus Dear us Jesus we thank you we give you all the glory and honor lord thank you lord thank you my jesus thank you lord sharala marala yeshu 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 psalm 95 verse 6 come let us bow down in worship let us kneel before the lord our maker psalm 66 verses 4 All the earth will worship you and will sing praises to you they will sing praises to your name gospel of saint mark chapter 41 and 42 moved with compassion jesus stretched out his hand and touched him and said to him i am willing be cleansed immediately the leprosy left him and he was cleansed as we begin this holy day a beautiful day in our life when we need to sit back and look at all that Jesus has done for us 
a beautiful ba- day to be washed in the precious the most holy blood of Jesus let's begin this day worshiping the heavenly father for sending that beautiful gift in Jesus let's thank the heavenly father for having showed us so much love that he sent his only son that so that we might all be saved we might all have a new life let's worship and glorify the lord father we adore you lay our lives before you how we love you let's take a moment let's thank the heavenly father thank you abba father thank you our heavenly father thank you for sending jesus so that we have all a new life today we have we have peace we have joy within us with the presence of jesus within us let us thank the heavenly father abba father we thank you we worship we glorify you with a grateful heart once again let's worship let's adore our heavenly father Father, we adore you, lay our lives before you, how we love you. As we close our eyes, let's picture Jesus, let's bring Jesus into our hearts. Let's speak to Jesus. Here I am, Lord. You are my Lord. You are my Savior, Jesus. You are my healer. You are my redeemer. You are my best friend. You are my brother, Lord. Jesus, here I am. As I worship, I glorify you, Lord. Wash every cell in my body, Lord. Let it be washed with your holy, your precious blood. Wash my hands, my feet, my eyes, my words, the thoughts that come to my mind. the people whom i have kept close to me lord yes jesus fill me with your love lord jesus yes lord jesus we adore you lay our lives before you ha once again let's this time worship the holy spirit a beautiful gift given by our heavenly father let's worship the holy spirit oh holy spirit i need you every moment of my life life i need your holy spirit as we worship you we glorify you anoint us anoint our hands anoint our feet our eyes our words anoint us oh holy spirit spirit we do you lay our lives before you how we love surrendering our lives spirit we do give you all glory all worship all worship all glory belongs to you lord o karana bara ishu ishu lord we praise you lord lord we worship you lord hallelujah ishu 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 first peter chapter 1 verses 18 and 19 for you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold 
that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your ancestors, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. And Hebrews 9, 14, How much more then will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself unblemished to God, cleanse our consciences from acts that lead to death so that we may serve the living God. Hebrews 9.22 says, In fact, the law requires that nearly everything be cleansed with blood, and without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. As we travel once again back to Calvary and we look at Jesus on this holy day, Let's pray for one thing in our life. Jesus, make me a holy person. Take everything that is unholy within me. As we close our eyes, gently close your eyes. And if there is anything unholy within us, let us surrender it to the Lord. Let's give it to Jesus. The holy of holies is here within us. Let us also pray, Jesus, help me to be holy. All unholy things, unholy friends, unholy relationships, unholy words, unholy thoughts, unholy things that we do. Let's offer it to the Lord. And today, let us pray, Jesus, wash me once again, Lord, in your most holy blood. Cleanse me, Lord. This is my Jesus. Cleanse me, Lord. Come, me sinners, lost and lonely, Jesus' blood can make you free. For he saved the worst among you. When he saved a wretch like me. Come, me sinners, lost and lonely. Jesus' blood can make you free. For he saved the worst among you When he saved a wretch like me And I know, yes I know Jesus' blood can make the wildest sinner clean And I know, yes I know Jesus' blood can make the wildest sinner clean And I know, yes I know Jesus' blood can make the wildest sinner clean And I know, yes I know Jesus' blood can make the wildest sinner clean as we close our eyes, as we look at Jesus on that holy cross, as we see that blood-stained body of Jesus and his blood covered, let's open up our hearts. Let's worship the Lord by giving him everything that does not belong to him. Let's give him everything that is not his. Let's surrender it to the Lord, maybe anger, unforgiveness, and let us worship the Lord. Let's glorify the Lord as we become new creations in Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for dying for us. Thank you, Lord. Give you all glory and honor, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for everything you're doing for us. Every moment of our life, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Give you glory, Lord. To the faint, he giveth power. Through the mountain makes a way. Find it water in the desert. Turns the night to golden day. And I know, yes I know. Jesus' blood can make the wildest sinner clean 
and I know, yes I know, I know, Jesus' blood can make the wildest sinner clean. Jesus' blood can make the vilest sinner clean. And I know, yes I know, my Jesus can wash me, cleanse me and make me new. As we spend this few moments reflecting on our life and worshipping and glorifying the Lord, let us worship Him in truth. Let's give away everything that's not His and let's glorify the Lord with our hearts. In temptations He is near thee Holds the powers of hell at bay Guides you to the path of safety Gives your grace for every day In temptations He is near thee Holds the paths of hell at bay Guides you to the path of safety Gives you grace for every day And I know, yes I know Jesus' blood can make the wildest sinner clean And I know, yes I know Jesus' blood can make the wildest sinner clean and I know, yes I know, Jesus' blood can make the wildest sinner clean. And I know, yes I know, Jesus' blood can make the wildest sinner clean. Colossians chapter 1 verses 16. For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All things were created through him and for him. And Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 A beautiful word. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus, which God prepared beforehand for all the good works. Let's thank the Lord. Dear Lord, we are thank you for everything you have done for us. With a grateful heart, we thank you, we worship, we glorify you. I hear the Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me thine all in all. I hear the Saviour say, Thy strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me thine all in all. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. Once again, let's surrender our lives to Jesus. Jesus paid the ultimate price. 
and here we are lord just to worship just to tell you thank you jesus thank you for dying for us lord thank you for saving us thank you so that we can enter into the home that is built by our heavenly father lord thank you for all the graces you are sending down thank you for your healing touch thank you for your deliverance thank you for the mighty anointing you are giving us lord we thank you lord we praise you we worship you lord lord now indeed i find thy power and thine alone can change the leper's thoughts and melt the heart of soul lord now indeed i find thy power and thine alone can change spot and melt the heart of stone tell Jesus Jesus paid it all all to him I owe sin had left a crimson stain he wore Jesus paid it all, all to Him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, He's washed it white as snow. He washed it white as snow. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you. We give you all glory. All worship belongs to you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for dying for us. Thank you for your mighty presence, Lord Jesus. Thank you for saving us, Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, good morning, brothers and sisters. Good morning, sister. Good morning, sister. We have a few announcements for the people who have come for the first time. Our uh, counselors are available for the counseling till 1 o'clock, which is arranged on my right in the Divine Mercy Hall. Also, confession is arranged just behind this main church in the ground floor retreat hall. Priests are available from morning 9.30 to 1 o'clock. If you want to make a good confession, kindly uh, make use of this uh, facility. As we step out of this uh, main church on my right, we have four departments. The first one is an office, but very few staffs are available. If you want to offer mass or any inquiry, kindly email them, logosblr at gmail.com. If you want to book the retreat, kindly email uh, logosblr booking at gmail.com. They will respond to you through the email for today and tomorrow. And next to the Logos uh, office, we have a book stall. Pious articles are available. Just next to it, we have uh, toilet facilities and the cafeteria arrangements have done. And also, a few more toilet facilities are arranged just behind the main church when we take the left and dead end and left. Also, drinking water dispensers is available behind. And Logos voice counter will be arranged. If you are inspired to uh, get a subscription, please approach the counter. And also our FCN program, which is arranged on my, as we enter the main gate, left side we have a gray building. In the base, uh, the ground floor, we have an office. You can get uh, updates regarding the FCN program. Our program will be like this now. Next talk will be given by our Reverend Father Aroge Swami, uh, followed by next 30 minutes of praise and worship, that is 11 to 11.30, instead of Jericho adoration. And 11.30 uh, to 12, there will be a second reflection by Brother Raghu. Then 12 o'clock, we will have a token distribution as usual. First comes, first served. As you are being seated, 12 o'clock, the token will be issued to counseling with Father Jose after the sessions. And 12 to 1, a session will be led by our Reverend Father Jose. And our lunch will be served 1 to 1.30 at the basement of St. Joseph's Church. 2 to 3 o'clock, the 1 to 1.30, the next praise and worship session. 2 to 3 will be our uh, th fourth talk of the day. Three to four, as usual, we have a Divine Mercy a, a chaplet with the novena, second day of the day of the convention. 
then we have a reflection of the theme. Then 4.30, our programs will be over and counseling will begin with Father Joe's on my right in the Divine Mercy Hall from 4.30 p.m. onwards. Others can go and attend the Holy Mass in our own parishes. And today's choir is Brother Ness and Joyce who are going to help us throughout the day. Let's assure our prayers. And now our first talk will be given by Father Reverend Reverend Father Aroge Swami, Father's theme is Through Adam all became sinners, through Christ all have become holy. Let's all welcome Jesus on this altar, standing up, invoking the Holy Spirit with the two lines of a hymn. Let's all stand up, extending our hands, we sing, Welcome Holy Spirit. Welcome Holy Spirit, we are in your presence. Fill us with your power, live inside of me, welcome Holy Spirit, welcome Holy Spirit, we are in your presence, fill us with your power. Live inside of me. You're the living waters. You're the living waters. Never trying fountain. Never drawing fountain. Comforter and counselor. Comforter and counselor. Take complete control, Lord. Take complete control. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Welcome, Holy Spirit. We are in your presence. We are in your presence. Fill us with your power. Fill us with your power. Live inside of me. Live inside of me. All freely worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. We worship the Lord. We adore you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Lord, we Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, Lord, we worship the Lord. Fill us with your power. Live inside of My dear sisters and brothers in Christ Jesus, we thank the Lord for this Holy Saturday. We extend our hands, closing our eyes, call to your minds. Yesterday, three o'clock, the Savior Jesus died on the cross, hung on the cross, shedding his precious blood for each and every one of us. His blood is precious. And is innocent, is unblemished, is holy, righteous, and this innocent shed the blood for the redemption of the humanity. As the word of God says, when I am lifted up. I shall draw everyone closer to me. Yes, Lord. Yesterday you were lifted up on the cross. Yes, Lord, we have come closer and closer to you right now. Bless all the children as they are going to reflect about you how you made us holy through your sacrifice. 
yes lord through your justification through your holy sacrifice on the cross you brought us life life eternal according to john 10:10 10, 10. yes lord you are called a second adam through you the life came forth not a physical life but rather a spiritual life eternal life has come from you we thank you jesus for dying on the cross through your death we are being saved through your death we are highlighted through your death we are alienated through your death we are lifted up to the holy state jesus thank you lord for this auspicious time bless each and every one of them who are watching online present here let your holy sacrifice bring us healing anointing and deliverance we make this prayer through christ our lord amen please be seated my dear sisters and brothers according to the church the church teaches us today is a day of silence a day of meditation a day of contemplation at the same time in silence we got to reflect about jesus passion and death at the same way we are preparing silently listening to the word of god for the resurrection of christ resurrection of christ therefore my dear sisters and brothers once again we shall reflect few more uh, things about jesus as our sister introduced to us today 10 to 11 o'clock for us to reflect the theme is a letter to the romans chapter 5 verses 18 a letter to the romans chapter 5 verses 18 we are going to reflect about this my dear sisters and brothers the word of god says like this therefore just as one man's trespass led to the condemnation for all so one man's act of righteousness leads to justification and life for all praise the lord praise the lord so theme for us is through adam through adam all became sinners through christ all became holy this is the theme for us so through adam we all became sinners through jesus we all became holy my dear sisters and brothers at the outset i would like to bring before you the origin of sin when we say through first man adam we all became sinners so we should know and we need to reflect why how where this first man called adam fall into sin so it is called original sin the fall the first fall the original sin my dear sisters and brothers so man as he came from the hand of god we all know that god made adam and eve how did he make he made in his own image and likeness he made adam and eve in his own image and likeness if somebody asks you how does god 
look. Suppose a atheist comes to you and asks, my dear brother, my dear sister, how does God look for you? What is your answer? What is your answer? My answer is like this, my dear sisters and brothers. As Bible says in the book of Genesis chapter 1 onwards, where God created the world on the sixth day, God created Adam and Eve. So my answer is like this. If somebody asks me, how does God look? I would say, God looks like me. Because the word of God says, he created us in his own image and likeness. What does it mean, uh, God looks like me? So God has the same features what we have. So God will be, look, will be looking like this. Maybe God looks like you. Of course, he is always present with, his, with us in spirit. But for us to understand as, as a human being, so you need to look up, we need to look into yourselves or you can look at yourself how God looks like me. Yes? So God made with his own hands Adam and Eve. How did he make it? So his creator was upright and perfect. The righteous law which God gave him spoke of life as a conditional upon his obedience. So after God creating Adam and Eve, he gave them freedom. So he, he created them in a perfect manner. When God created Adam and Eve, there was no sin. Adam was perfect. Eve was perfect. As word of God says, they were naked, but they couldn't recognize or realize that they are naked because you know, they lived like that. So they didn't feel shame. I mean, there was no shame because there was no sin. So my dear sisters and brothers, the word of God says they are perfect human beings. To put it like this, they were like God because there was no sin. Because God created Adam and Eve and all of us in his own image and likeness, when they were created, there was no sin existing. And therefore, my dear sisters and brothers, you know, before Adam committed sin, before Adam and Eve committed sin, they were like God. Perfect, sinless. At the same time, it says, God made them to be obedient to him. The obedience was a vital, important thing for Adam and Eve. As long as Satan sent a serpent, they were obedient, they were perfect, and they were all right. How did it happen? The fall, my dear sisters and brothers. How God made man that we can see in the book of Genesis, my dear sisters and brothers, 131, there's about what I spoke, my dear sisters and brothers. At the same time, after creating, God gave, you know, uh, authority, God gave uh, freedom, God gave, you know, you know, that power, authority, the Adamic administration we call, the Adamic administration. So he entrusted the Garden of Eden, enjoy your life. Same freedom we are receiving, we have received, my dear sisters and brothers. The arrangement God made with Adam in Genesis chapter 2, verses 16 and 17, he sometimes called the covenant of works because it depended upon Adam's obedience. So Adam's obedience was very, very important. So therefore, there was life, life, in abundance. When God created and trusted the uh, Garden of Eden and God set them, uh, that garden gave them everything, there was full of life. There was full of life, my dear sisters and brothers. At the same time, they had a, a closest, a profound relationship with God. 
whenever god wanted he spoke to them he walked into the garden of eden spoke to adam and eve he found out how they are living and there was an intimacy between adam and eve intimacy do you have such kind of intimacy with christ in your life the intimate relationship with christ adam and eve today before they fall into sin they are teaching us first thing is the intimacy with god the profound relationship with god so therefore my dear sisters and brothers the closest possible communion with god two reasons that intimacy communion with god first thing is the tree of life was also in the midst of the garden and they had never eaten from this tree there is also called a, a tree of life if you read genesis 29 genesis 29 chapter 322 to 24 we read book of genesis chapter 2 verses 9 book of genesis chapter 2 verses 9 out of the ground the lord god made a grew a uh, every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food the tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil there is a tree my dear sisters and brothers if we read romans 5:17 uh, the second thing is Christ the second adam has obtained life for us so in the new test in the old testament genesis 5:9 talks about the tree of life which gives good and bad now we are romans 5:17 uh, <coughs> jesus gives life he says if because of the one man's trespass death exercised dominion through that one much more surely will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness exercise dominion in life through the one man jesus christ praise the lord so here the comparison we can see in the new testament jesus becomes again a tree of life he hung on the cross this is a wood where he hung himself on it this is also becomes for us a tree of life in the old testament there we see genesis 5:9 that there is a tree of life but in the new testament we have the jesus himself who hung on the cross he becomes a tree for all of us to give life life in abundance life in abundance my dear sisters and brothers now we shall see the fall this is a very very important thing that that we are going to reflect about my dear sisters and brothers romans 5:18 says through adam we became sinners through christ we became holy through adam we became sinners how the fall what is it fall we shall see my dear sisters and brothers genesis chapter 3 verses 1 to 6 if you read there he was deceived we know the story i need not explain completely the serpent came and spoke to eve the other words the devil spoke to eve okay the devil spoke to eve but adam sinned with his i open actually it was it was actually in the beginning eve that gave consent the desire at the same time the willfulness the willingness to listen to satan that was the first thing that eve has done mistake giving your consent willingness acceptance the word of god says in the letter to the corinthians second corinthians chapter 11 3 second corinthians chapter 11 3 says but i am afraid that as the serpent deceived eve by its cunning your thoughts will be led astray from a sincere and pure devotion to christ praise the lord look at so when god created adam and eve they did not know what is wrong what is sin at the same time what is this cunningness they were pure like god they were 
holy like god they were perfect there was a you know a perfectness there was a goodness in them god is good that god's goodness was found in them but it was it was the devil the serpent because the devil is nothing but the fallen angel the fallen angel who disobedient disobedient she was the angel was disobedient to god it was disobedient and then god uh, sent her away chased away away from the kingdom of god now the devil wants dominion over human being because this fallen angel lucifer wanted to dominate god wanted to equal himself with god god did not allow it therefore next to else is there the beloved children of god very near and dear to god who are they adam and eve so now the lucifer the devil the serpent takes the advantage of this i know i cannot be subject to god and i cannot be equal myself with god god says no but i can make use of his children adam and eve and i can i can trap them that's what happens my dear sisters the words we read first corinthians chapter 11 3 the devil was cunning the 11 second corinthians 11 3 second corinthians 11 3 but i'm afraid that the serpent deceived eve by cunning the cunningness and even these days the devil comes to us with the same cunningness through different people my dear sisters and brothers through different people so my dear sisters and brothers if at the same time let it the first timothy chapter 214 first timothy chapter 212 chapter 214 letter of first timothy chapter 2 verses 14 and adam was not deceived but the woman was deceived and became a transgressor praise the lord so it was eve in the beginning not adam not adam my dear sisters and brothers but eve pressurized eve instigated eve disturbed eve became you know a thorn in the flesh of adam i ate the fruit from the tree of life it is wonderful it is wonderful you also eat uh, adam was not deceived he was deceived the evil entered into the life of eve and the sinfulness that evil made eve to fall or uh, to instigate adam to fall into sin that is how the first sin happened my dear sisters and brothers remember with this act with this act adam and eve even adam they welcomed death into the universe praise the lord when they were created there was no death for adam and eve there was no death they were happily living in the garden of eden they were wonderfully living my dear sisters and brothers but because of this this act the act against god act against god's law act against uh, uh, eternal law if you can say the act of disobedience brought forth sin and death to the world and the universe praise the lord praise the lord so therefore my dear sisters and brothers from this first sin we learn sin is breaking the law of god through the first sin we need to learn that my dear sisters and brothers that we are breaking the law of god first john letter to the first john chapter 3 verses 4 verses 3 and 4 everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness sin is law, lawless we when you sin we breaking the law of god 
that's what happened in the life of even adam my dear sisters and brothers sin is going our own way sin is nothing but see look at adam and eve they were always under the protection of god but the devil came and disturbed so they chose their way they have neglected they have sidelined they have said no to god's way they were deceived by devil and they have chosen their own way so this is how we can connect to our spiritual lives if you choose your own way which means you are following into sin that's what the word of god says book of isaiah chapter 53 verse 6 book of isaiah chapter 53 verse 6 says all we like sheep have gone astray we have all turned to our own way and the lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all praise the lord so we have all turned to our own way when you turn to your own way leaving out get reading off saying no quitting god's way which means falling into sin breaking commandment of god breaking the my dear sister some law of god same thing happened in the life of adam and eve they have chosen their way they wanted to be independent they wanted to be you know as a, a self dependent they didn't want to be a subject to god so therefore the devil disturbed deceived they gave their consent and the the fall happened my dear sisters and brothers so therefore when you go astray which means you have chosen your way this way seems to be wonderful this way seems to be attractive the way that you have chosen but it is a sinful way it seems to be a highway leading wonderful way i mean it shows a good smooth way but that leads to destruction that's what adam and eve chose being in the wonderful garden that god gave them so my dear sisters and brothers here i would like to say once again god's purpose in the fall god's purpose in the fall adam and eve fall into sin what is the purpose uh, god was neither the author nor the approve of the sin of adam and eve god did not allow this sin to happen that's what i said they have chosen their way when we choose your way when you choose your way god does not approve it god does not allow it there is a one more thing comes here god gives you freedom god gives you freedom through this freedom you choose it see most of the times what happens we fall into sin it might be a addiction drinking smoking unhealthy relationship bad habits bad friendship all kinds of things we choose it we cherish it we enjoy it when something goes wrong for example a boy fell into love with a girl they lived for years and then the division happened misunderstanding happened the first thing that the each of them do is they try to blame god am i right why god has to do this for me why god separated us why god brought forth the suffering into my life did god allow you to go and fall in love with somebody or did god allow you to listen to the devil it is you who have chosen this path and when we fail and when you have distressful situations bad situations we blame god god it is because of you i am suffering now we don't blame ourselves we don't blame because we have chosen it we don't blame ourselves because we have walked that way because we are facing trials tribulations sadness sickness problems there is no way out seems to be and there is no way to come out of it 
and then we can't blame human beings because they respond we god we blame god because god will not respond immediately for every fall for every you know disobedience we are blaming god in our spiritual lives in the life of adam and eve when god asked adam adam said it is not high eve disturbed me eve told me to eat when god asked eve eve said no it is not myself but the serpent told me to eat eve listened to serpent's word word she could not remember the words of god adam heard the uh, heard or listened to eve adam could have thought of this is not my father's will the creator's will i should be listening to my creator my god so he forgot god's voice and he listened to eve his, pa his partner the fall happened at the same way my dear sisters and brothers when you fail to listen to the promptings of god promptings of the holy spirit we tend to fall into sin we tend to fall into sin my dear sisters and brothers so therefore we read romans chapter 9 romans chapter 9 verses 22 and 23 what if god desiring to show his wrath and to make known his power has endured with much patience the objects of wrath and the made for destruction verses 23 and what if he has done so in order to make known the riches of his glory for the objects of mercy which he has prepared beforehand for glory this is talking about in the future so god did not intend god did not allow uh, did not author or approve the sin but he willed this he wished this to bring us glory adam and eve fall into sin as soon as they fall into sin the god already preplanned the glory of human being through their fall did you get to understand so when the sin came death came when death came jesus god immediately planned it man's glory through jesus christ that's what i will read we will understand my dear sisters and brothers so uh, god was neither the author nor the ap approver of the sin of adam and eve he had the power to prevent happening he had the power to prevent it but chose not to do so because he had a higher purpose to fulfill the glory of his name in both showing mercy and judgment upon sinners for this is the reason god did not stop it to be happen he did not stop what adam and eve done for what to glorify himself through man at the same time to express his unconditional mercy and the final judgment that's what we read romans 9 22 23 my dear sisters and brothers now this about fall of adam and eve how they will inter intervene in their lives okay now our particip participation in the sin our participation in the sin by this sin our first parents lost their former righteousness so this is what i would like to highlight through their first sin through their first sin through their disobedience they have lost their righteousness as i said they were holy they were righteous they were perfect they were like god having all the qualities of god but because of this disobedience because of the sin because of the sin they have lost their former righteousness and their happy communion with god was served my dear sisters and brothers so when they have committed sin 
they have lost righteousness at the same time they have lost their happiness they have lost the communion with god the relationship with god the unity with god is being broken my dear sisters and brothers their sin involved us all and by its death appraised to all all men became dead in sin and totally polluted in all parts and the faculties of both soul and body because of this falling of falling into sin they polluted both body and soul praise the lord praise the lord so we are also day by day cons giving consent to satan and we are polluting our body and soul with the sin with the wrong doings with iniquities my dear sisters and brothers so therefore my dear sisters and brothers the family of man is rooted in the first human pair as adam and eve stood in the room and uh, stead of all mankind the guilt of their sin was reckoned by god's appointment to the account of their prosperity so god after they falling into sin they were chased away from the beautiful garden so they disobeyed god lord jesus my dear sisters and brothers now how are we participating in this sin with the disobedience to the god the father disobedience to the son disobedience to the holy spirit my dear sisters and brothers so that is how the catholic church emphasizes an original sin sympathize on the original sin we all know what is the original sin it is nothing but sin of adam and eve through this sin death came and the sin came and death came so through through this we all became sinners that's what the word of god says today's reflection word romans 5 romans 5 verses 18 my dear sisters 18 says therefore just as once man trespass led to condemnation for all so one man's act righteousness leads to justification and life for all so through adam we all became sinners but through christ righteous act we all became holy so this is how we became so all men became dead in sin because most of us every day of our life we are giving consent to sin consent to devil and its desires and its manifestations in our day to day life and who also from birth derived from them a polluted nature in the beginning the adams adam and eve nature was very good there was no sin there was no you know unrighteousness their nature was like a nature of god because they have given consent the nature was polluted and we are all sharing this adam's nature now adam's nature but jesus but jesus wiped away this nature from us through his death on the cross but we fail to embrace jesus as nature in our lives because his nature is very very good but we don't try to acquire his nature because when we try to have his nature we are against the world and the, and the devil when you are against the world which means you are against human beings which means world is living in sin when you embrace christ you are embracing righteousness which means you have cleansed yourself from this polluted nature you want to live a life of righteousness so devil world human being will speak and go against you my dear sisters and brothers here our natural state and the need of salvation as sinners we have two problems as a sinners we have two problems what are these we are guilty 
what did what does it mean what does it mean because of the one sin of adam we are guilty liable to condemnation liable to means we are bound to you know be condemned because of this sinful nature because we are giving too much preference too much of importance to this polluted nature and then we are liable to condemnation because of our own personal sins we need god to justify us so we are also sharing in the polluted nature of adam and we are giving ourselves too much to this uh, uh, sinful nature and god says and i am ready to remove this sinful nature from you for that is the reason once for all i have sent my son to this world whom i loved unconditionally john 3:16 says god so loved the world he sent his only son to redeem us so to wipe away the sinful nature once for all he has washed us washed away all kinds of sins and the sinful nature but still we are giving consent still we are giving that that nature of sinning to devil and to falling into sin my dear sister sembra first thing is we are guilty so therefore god has to justify it so we need god to justify us why when you sin you are in the hands of devil now what god did to bring you out from the clutches of the satan to take you out from the bondage of sin and evil god justified by sending his only son to this world that's what happened yesterday he hung on the cross on the day of good friday that is how god justifies my dear sisters and brothers so we are guilty we are all guilty because of sin secondly we are polluted because of our nature uh, needing the cleansing of regeneration john chapter 3 john chapter 3 verses 3 we read chapter john chapter 3 verses 3 4 5 we read jesus answered him very truly i tell you no one can see the kingdom of god without being born from above this is this being born in second time is not as a nicodemus asked jesus going back to mother's womb and being born second time no but being born in spirit in christ through the cleansing of our sins having a new creation in christ that's what it means verses 4 verses 4 says nicodemus said to him how can anyone be born after having grown old can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born verses 5 jesus answered very truly i tell you no one can enter the kingdom of god without being born of water and spirit verses 6 what is born of the flesh is flesh and what is born of the spirit is spirit praise the lord so jesus gives importance to the new birth that is being born in spirit not in flesh because flesh is a polluted nature it has a polluted nature it 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 can be decayed because of the sin of adam it started polluting i mean it started decaying i mean it, it the nature the sin brought death but jesus says through his death on the cross as a man he came to this world but he had no sin in his life as a second adam he was born like a human being but he lived a righteous life he sets an example not example of adam but example of jesus himself a man can live like me rejecting satan once you live a life of righteousness you will have a life like me after death he is giving an example you will be dead you will be buried but on the last day and the final day you will have a victory over the death and sin you will be raised like me on the final day 
when the second coming of Jesus happens, you will be raised up and I shall, I shall take you to my kingdom. That's what my dear sisters and brothers, through sin, Adam and Eve were polluted the nature of man. Through Jesus' birth and his death and resurrection, he cleansed the polluted nature of human being. He gives that privilege to have these glorified bodies like him. That privilege, that, that privilege we have, my dear sisters and brothers, that is the reason proofs are being happening in the Catholic Church. The saints are being, you know, still not being decayed their body. Tongues are being alive. So Jesus wants to show, give us proofs that you will have a glorified body. So these are the two reasons. We are guilty, but God will justify when you really repent for your sins, when you really ask for the forgiveness, when you really reject Satan, accept Christ, he will justify you. Already justified us with his, with his sacrifice once for all. Secondly, we are polluted, that's what. So my dear sisters and brothers, Sin in the church, sin in believer, sin in believer, sin remains very uh, in every believer. Sin always uh, remains in us. It's called indwelling sin, sin, indwelling sin. We do not reach perfection through being uh, regenerated that waits until we are given new bodies at the resurrection in this life. We have to fight against sin that indwells us by the Holy Spirit. So as long as you are in this world, you have to fight against evil and sin. There is no other way. Because devil tries to control your life. Devil does not see you as a righteous person. It does not want you to see as a righteous person. It disturbs you. It tempts you. It comes to you in all the ways of life. Therefore, as long as we live here on earth, we have to, we are ought to fight against the sin and the devil and its manifestations. That's what my dear sisters and brothers, Romans chapter 7 verses 14 to 25 talks about. You can read afterwards. Romans 7, 14 to 25 talks about it. At the same way, Romans 8, 12 and 13, we read and understand how uh, sin will disturb us, how devil disturbs us. Romans 8, 12. Romans 8 12. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. Verses 13. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But, but if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. So as long as we live here on earth, there is a fight, there is a rift, there is a commotion, there is a conflict between you and devil, between you and sin. There is a constant fight because it is a work of the devil. If you give consent, if you allow it, then you shall decay. When you allow the sin into your life, then you are giving yourself to devil, my dear sisters and brothers. At the same way, uh, Galatians chapter 5, verses 16 and 17. Galatians chapter 5, verses 16 and 17. Live by the Spirit, I say, and do not gratify the desires of the flesh. So we are ought to live by the Spirit. We are reminded, we are forced, or we are recommended, or we are asked to live by the Spirit. Spirit of God will guide you. How does He guide? How does you lead? John 14, 26 says. John 14, 26 says. We shall see how Spirit will help us to remind all that Jesus spoke. It says, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. So whatever Jesus has spoken, it is written in the Bible. When you read it, it is in your mind and heart, but it is a work of the Holy Spirit. 
is a, it will remind you spirit will remind you every day what jesus taught us to keep to live in spirit so not to give ourselves to the flesh and its desires verse 17 we read galatians 5:17 galatians 5:17 for what the flesh desires is opposed to the spirit and what the spirit desires is opposed to the flesh for these are opposed to each other to prevent you from doing what you want so these are both are opposing each other so flesh desires is opposed to the spirit the spirit desires is opposed to the flesh so that's what is happening in our day to day life we are opposing most of the time god in our lives promptings of the holy spirit in our lives but we are accepting the world its desires according to the flesh therefore we are falling into sin which means we are we are we are sinners we are falling into it we are accepting we are giving consent to it my dear sisters and brothers so that is called a corrupt in nature that we have imbibed from sin of adam my dear sisters and brothers so therefore my dear sisters and brothers as we all our acts are sinful and god requires perfection in our character as well as in our acts god expects us to be perfect as as long as we live here on earth the depth of sin within us as a christian is one thing we learn as we grow in grace the nearer we grow to god the more we see our sinfulness the more we are nearer growing in spirit growing in spirituality the more temptations the more disturbances will bound to happen actually look at the sin of adam and eve the devil was very close to them talking interacted with them they would have actually said no they found it very interesting at the same way my dear sisters and brothers when you are coming closer and closer to god there is always a devil interacts with you through all kinds of flesh desires and if you give seeing that as it's interesting then you fall into it that's what the word of god says luke chapter 5 verses 8 luke chapter gospel of luke chapter 5 verses 8 But when Simon Peter saw it he fell down at Jesus knees saying go away from me lord for i am a sinful man so when you give it consent it happens my dear sisters and brothers so it is totally wrong for any christian to claim perfection nobody can be perfect when we live on earth of course the perfection is possible only through him only through him only through him the perfection is done my dear sisters and brothers either in nature or in action so therefore my dear sisters and brothers this is what happened in the adam's life and this is what happening in our spiritual life so now here i would like to bring before you where adam failed christ prevailed adam failed how though adam was a type of christ jesus was not like adam as i said when they were creator they were just like god they were just like christ blameless spotless sinless just like christ as as the saying goes where adam failed christ prevailed adam sinned but jesus did not so now whom are you following how are you following adam's nature or are you following christ's nature that's what we are supposed to reflect my dear sisters and brothers letter to the hebrews chapter 4 verses 15 jesus says letter to the hebrew chapter 4 verse 15 jesus says for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses but we have one who is in every respect has been tested as we are at without sin praise the lord this is about jesus's high priest except jesus 
no body can sympathize with our weaknesses that happened yesterday 3 o'clock on the good friday i mean jesus died on friday hanging on the cross he sympathized with all of us with all our weaknesses he wanted us to you know come out of sin and its nature i cannot sympathize with your weaknesses i have no such power but jesus had and he did it for each and every one of us for all of us so that's what the word of god says at the same time uh, second corinthians chapter 5 verses 21 second corinthians chapter 5 verses 21 for our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin so that in him we might become the righteousness of god praise the lord so this is what where adam failed christ to prevailed so adam was in sin because of the sinful nature of humanity jesus says for our sake he made him to be sin he has not committed any sin but yet he accepted as though he has committed something wrong in his life why to lift us up to you know give us a liberation to uh, redeem us from the clutches of the satan so that in him we might become the righteousness of god to make us righteous children of his he accepted death on a cross as though he has committed sin for each and every one of us this act is done for all of us for all of us for you and for me for entire world he had he knew he knew no sin he is perfectly perfect perfectly all right but for me and for you he is called blame he is called sinner he shed the blood that's what the word of god says my dear sisters and brothers so we will see these two heads of humanity contrasted with each other five times through verses 5 to 19 of our past so this is how we see there are some reasons so when you look at adam's life sin and death is reminded of when you look at christ resurrection and redemption is given to us the message is given to us my dear sisters and brothers here i would like to bring before you as today's reflection let us do the romans romans chapter 5 verses 18 5 verses 18 my dear sisters and brothers that we are justified and we are made righteous but through the through the sin the condemnation came to the world but this condemnation is being removed by the sacrifice of christ on the cross here i would like to give an example a small uh, uh, incident we'll understand better how we are how we are justified by jesus death on the cross there was a father and daughter and the daughter completed her uh, intermediate studies and uh, she went for driving class but she doesn't know perfectly how to drive but she wanted to drive four wheeler then her dad is a, a judge he always says this is not the right time for you to drive you have a no proper age you have to cross age 18 or 20 21 at the, at the same time you do not know how to drive but she ha- has a desire to drive vehicle she was going on disturbing her father pestering that i will drive vehicle he said no it is not allowed you are not you are not allowed to drive it is not permitted for you but one day uh, the dad parked the vehicle in front of his house and the key was there in the car and she saw it and then immediately she got into the car and then she started driving and she doesn't know they had some uh, problem with the vehicle there was a brake failure she wanted to in a call the uh, mechanic for the repair but meanwhile this happened she took the vehicle out and she was driving and it was going very fast we didn't know what to do the father didn't know what to do he called the police and informed 
this has happened my daughter has taken the vehicle she is a minor and she doesn't know proper driving please do something but by the time police reached and she hit two three men and uh, all of them you know they broke their legs and the police meanwhile police came arrested her and taken to the judge i mean to the court the judge is our own father what kind of judgment that father can give as per the law the punishment is given to the daughter you know beating up 50 beatings at the same time 10000 rupees of fine the daughter was you know cursing her father being a judge you cannot show mercy towards me being a judge you cannot reduce the punishment that you have given to me everybody in the court also same mentality how cruel this man is how can he how can he give such kind of verdict towards his own daughter after verdict he comes out of his chair changes his dress comes before his daughter and takes all the punishment of his daughter he pays his own money 10000 rupees as a penalty as a fine and he receives the 50 beatings instead of her own daughter praise the lord same thing as christ has done for all of us he justifies he accepts it he received it willingly for our sins for our transgressions for our sinful nature he has received the beatings he has paid the price his life is a price my dear sisters and brothers that is how christ justified of our sins praise the lord praise the lord so therefore my dear sisters and brothers through adam sin and death condemnation but through jesus resurrection and the redemption has come we thank jesus for his wonderful sacrifice on the cross for his selfless sacrifice shall we all stand my dear sisters and brothers continue to reflect about this too are you still in the line of adam failing every day of your life or in the line of jesus victorious every day of your life following jesus way now our brother nesen joyce will lead us in praise and worship for half an hour and 11:30 we will have one more talk by brother ragu praise the lord praise the lord say hallelujah hallelujah praise the right hand let's say hallelujah 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 let's very gently close our eyes let's place our hands on our hearts we have just been filled with the word of god let's bring to mind just one word that has touched us this morning just one word of god god has spoken to us through his word is that one word coming deep into our hearts as we turn to jesus and look at his holy face once again a face that is full of blood and he died for you and me for all of us so that today we could be in freedom freedom living in jesus so let's bring to heart that one word and as we praise as we worship as we glorify god let's ask the lord jesus let this word come deep into my heart let it take let it take your word lord let it take your very presence lord yes jesus let this word become flesh within me lord jesus yes let it bring your presence let it bring your holiness lord within me lord second corinthians chapter 7 verse 1 therefore since we have these promises dear friends let us purify ourselves from everything that contaminates body and spirit perfecting holiness out of reverence for god Hebrews 12:14 Make every effort to live in peace with everyone and to be holy without holiness no one will see the lord Leviticus 20:26 You are to be holy to me because I the lord am holy and I have set you apart from the nations to be my own 
Once again, let's close our eyes gently and as we praise, prepare our hearts to praise and worship the Lord. Let's tell Jesus, Jesus, anything that is unholy within me, Lord, you take it away from me, Lord. Help me to live a life that you have shown me, Lord. Yes, Jesus. He paid the debt he did not owe, I owe the debt, I could not pay. I needed someone to wash my sins away. And now I sing the song, Amazing Grace, all day long. Jesus Christ, my dearest Lord, you paid the debt for me, I could never pay. Just as Father told us this beautiful story of our, how the Lord has himself taken all our debts and he has taken upon him and he has suffered for us. As we sing this beautiful song, let's look at Jesus and let us thank him constantly from our heart. Thank you, my Jesus. Thank you for my Lord for coming and setting me free, Lord. He paid the debt he did not owe. I owe the debt I could not pay. I needed someone to wash my sins away. And now I sing a brand new song, Amazing Grace, all day long. Christ Jesus paid the debt I could never pay. He paid the debt he could not owe. I owe the debt I could not pay. I needed someone to wash my sins away. And now I sing a brand new song, Amazing Grace, all day long. Christ Jesus paid the debt I could never pay. Yes, He paid. Yes, He paid. Jesus paid all my debts away. Yes, He paid. Yes, He paid. Jesus came and took my sins away. As we close our eyes, as we picture Jesus on that holy cross, yes, he paid, yes, he paid. My Jesus paid all my debts away. Yes, he paid all my debts away. Jesus came and took my sins away. With a grateful heart, we stand in this holy temple. We stand on this holy ground and this one prayer within our hearts we make, Jesus, help me to be holy. Help me to give away every unholiness within me. Maybe anger, maybe jealousy, maybe pride, maybe a habit of telling lies, Jesus. Here I am to praise you, Lord, as I give my life to you, as I surrender my life to you. I praise you, I worship you, I glorify you, Lord. Yes, he paid, yes, he paid. Jesus paid all my debts away. Yes, he paid, yes, he paid, yes, he paid, yes, he paid. Jesus came and took my sins away he paid the debt on calvary he saved my soul and set me free i'm glad that jesus washed all my sins away and now i sing a brand new song amazing grace all day long christ jesus paid the debt i could never pay he paid the debt on Calvary, He saved my soul, set me free. I'm glad that Jesus washed all my sins away. And now I sing a brand new song, Amazing Grace. All day long Christ Jesus paid the debt I could never pay. Jesus, yes He paid, yes He paid. Jesus paid all my debts away. Yes, He paid. Yes, He paid. Jesus came 
and took my sins away. Yes, he paid. Yes, he paid. Jesus paid all my debts away. Yes, he paid. Yes, he paid. Jesus came and took my sins away. For a brief moment, let's very gently raise our hands. Let's all raise our hands. Let's close our eyes. There's something we'd like to surrender this moment. Let's give it to Jesus. Let's offer it to the Lord. Let's lift our hearts in worship and surrender. Let's tell Jesus, here I am, Lord, in this holy temple, on this holy ground. And I offer my life to you. I surrender my life to you, Lord. I surrender my family, Lord. Every member of my family, I give them to you, Lord. They belong to you. I belong to you, Lord. And I want to be one day with you, Lord, in that beautiful home that has been built by my Father. I want to be with you, Lord, praising you, worshipping you, glorifying you, Lord. Yes, Lord, you paid a price for me, Lord. You set me free so that one day I could be with you, Lord. Thank you, my Jesus. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you. Thank you for everything you are doing in my life, Lord. You are my God. You are my Savior. You are my healer. You are my deliverer. You are my salvation, Lord. You are everything to me, Lord. Yes, my Jesus. I offer my life to you, Lord, this moment. Help me to give away everything that is not yours, Lord. As I open my heart, lift my heart, Lord, and I worship you, Lord. Let our, let's lift up our heart this moment. From the very depths of our heart, with a grateful heart, let's worship the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You are everything to us, Lord. We give you all glory and honor. All worship belongs to you, Lord. Yes, he paid, yes, he paid, Jesus paid all my debts away. Yes, he paid, yes, he paid, Jesus came and took my sins away. Yes, he paid, yes, he paid. Jesus came and took my sins away. He paid the debt on Calvary. He saved my soul, set me free. I'm glad that Jesus washed all my sins away. And now I sing a brand new song, Amazing Grace. All day long Christ Jesus paid the debt I could never pay. He paid the debt on Calvary, He saved my soul, set me free. I'm glad that Jesus washed all my sins away. And now I sing a brand new song, Amazing Grace. All day long Christ Jesus paid the debt I could never pay. Yes, He paid, yes, He paid. Jesus paid all my debts away. Yes, He paid. Yes, He paid. Jesus came and took my sins away. Jesus came and took my sins away. Jesus came and took my sins away. Let's pause for a moment. Let's thank the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for taking everything from me, Lord. Yes, Lord, everything that does not belong to you, Lord, you have taken it away from me, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your mighty blessings, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Psalm 23, verses 4. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, 
for you are with me your rod and your staff they comfort me Isaiah 41:10 So do not fear for I am with you do not be dismayed for I am your God I will strengthen you and help you I will uphold you with my righteous right hand Praise the Lord Praise the Lord Say hallelujah 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 Let's repeat this word So do not fear So do not fear for I am with you For I am with you Little louder do not be dismayed Do not be dismayed for I am your God For I am your God I will strengthen you I will strengthen you and help you and help you I will uphold you I will uphold you with my victorious right hand With my victorious right hand Praise the Lord Praise the Lord Hallelujah 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 Jesus is waiting near the old rugged cross waiting to bring home a sinner who's lost his pardon and grace is sufficient for all Whisper to Jesus he'll hear your call Let's all be seated let's all sit down Jesus is waiting near the old rugged cross waiting to bring home a sinner who's lost his pardon and grace is sufficient for all whisper to Jesus he'll hear your call he's waiting for you and me for each one of us he's waiting at that holy cross to be blessed to be washed to be cleansed to be anointed let's once again tell jesus lord here i am lord every moment lord i want i want to be blessed i want to be filled with your grace i want to mighty anointing lord is yes, jesus each moment as we spend in this holy place Let's pray for the presence of Jesus. Let's pray for his mighty healing touch. Let's pray for his deliverance. Let's pray for the great anointing of the Holy Spirit. Jesus is waiting near the old rugged cross waiting to bring home A sinner who's lost His pardon and grace is Sufficient for all Whisper to Jesus He'll hear your call Whisper to Jesus hear your call speak to the lord whisper to jesus he not let you fall trust in the savior he's all that you got on an old rugged cross your sins he bore lift up your hands give him praise each day all you need say is jesus please stay Oh glory is father on your throne above thank you for Jesus and his wonderful love let's make it a small prayer lift up your hands 
Give him praise each day. All you need to say is, Jesus, please stay. Stay with me every moment. With every breath that I take, Lord, you stay with me. O oh, glorious Father, Abba Father, on your throne above, thank you for Jesus and his wonderful love. Thank you for giving us Jesus, Abba Father. Pour out your love this moment as we pray, as we glorify you, as we come together to worship you, Abba Father. Pour out that mighty love of yours. Lift up your hands, give him praise each day. All you need say is, Jesus, please stay. O oh, glorious Father, on your throne above. Thank you, Jesus, and his wonderful love. Let's speak to the Lord. Whisper to Jesus, he'll hear your call. Whisper to Jesus, he'll not let you fall. Trust in the Savior, He's all that you've got. On an old rugged cross, your sins He bought. On an old rugged cross, your sins He bought. On an old rugged cross, your sins he bought. Once, once again, let's very gently keep our hands open or you can raise your hands. On an old rugged cross, he brought all our sins. Whisper to Jesus as we praise him. Offer yourself, offer, surrender your life to Jesus. This is one of the most beautiful moments when our hearts pray, when our hearts tell, speak to the Lord. Let's just give everything. Let's experience the presence of Jesus this moment in this holy place. Let's be able to see his holy face. Let's listen to his holy voice this moment. He is here in our midst. He is here right here. And as we praise him with angels and saints, we lift up our hearts, our voices. Let's praise Him. Let's worship and glorify the Lord. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Oh, Karala Bara Shere La Bara La 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 La. Oh, Yeshua, Yeshua! Hallelujah! Lord, we give You all glory. All worship belongs to You. All glory belongs to You, Lord. Oh, Karala Bara Shere La Bara La. Oh, Yeshua, Jesus, Jesus. You are everything to us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. On an old rugged cross, He bore our sin. On an old rugged cross, Jesus bought our sin. Let's feel the precious blood of Jesus flowing into our hearts, into our bodies. Let's ask the Holy Spirit, O oh living waters, pour out your precious living waters upon us, your anointing. Living waters flow on, sweep away my pain. Bring your healing to my heart Help me love once again Living waters flow on Sweet
pervade my pain Bring your healing to my heart Help me love once again Yes, Lord. Bring us back to that love once again, Lord. The love which we lost in the Garden of Eden the presence that we lost in the Garden of Eden restored to us back through the passion, death and resurrection of our Lord so that once again we can live as a child of God. And this morning as we prepare to listen to God's word, let's ask the Spirit of God to teach us everything so that our hearts may be enriched and strengthened through God's word. So dear brothers and sisters, today, the Holy Saturday, a day of reflecting in the silence of a heart what God did for every one of us. And the theme they are reflecting today is about what Jesus did. What was the merits of Jesus' passion, death and resurrection and how that transformed our life. And the theme for this particular session we are taking is from Romans chapter 8 and verses 1. Letter to the Romans chapter 8 and verses 1. It says, There is therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. First of all, we need to understand this. The Bible says, as Paul writes, there is no condemnation for every one of us. First of all, we need to understand how we became a con no, people who are, were actually lost this grace of God. How did we become condemned people? Jesus, on this holy Saturday, as the scripture says, even went down to the souls in the dead and he released them from the captivity. When you read the second letter of St. Peter, chapter 3, and verses 19. 2 Peter 3, 19 tells us like this. Second letter of St. Peter, chapter 3, and verses 19, he says, he went down to the dead to release those who have gone ahead of us from this captivity. The second letter of St. Peter, chapter 3, and verses 19, we read like this. Now, when we reflect on this, it's very clear that everyone who believes in Jesus Christ are set free from the condemnation that comes from this. Again, we read in the Gospel of St. John, chapter 3 and verses 16. John's Gospel, chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that everyone who believes in him may not perish Therefore, it says, when you look, read all these uh, verses together, it gives us one clear message. Our faith in Jesus Christ sets us free from the condemnation. Now, how did we become a condemned people? How did we become condemned? By First of all, we need to understand that. St. John again writes in 1 John chapter 3 and verses 8, the first letter of St. John chapter 3, verse 8, he writes like this. Everyone who commits sin is guilty. 1 John 3, 8, we read. 1 John 3, 8. Everyone who commits sin is a child of the devil. For the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The Son of God was revealed for this purpose, to destroy the works of the devil. So it says, Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. So his passion, death and resurrection is nothing but the destruction of the work of the evil one in you and me. That's why... The condemnation came to you and me only through the works of the evil one. He, by his passion, by his death, he destroyed it. So for, therefore, even the people who went before us, who died before Jesus died, were also relieved from this captivity of condemnation. Because there is no condemnation when we believe in Jesus Christ. What do you mean? Everything that has to be done to set us free was already bound by Jesus Christ. St. Paul again beautifully summarizes it when we read Colossians chapter 2, 
verses 14 and 15. Let it be Colossians chapter 2, verses 14 and 15. Erasing the record that stood against us with his legal demands, he set it aside, nailing to the cross. Next verse. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and made a public example of them, triumphing over them in it. Therefore, it says, through this death, he disarmed the rulers and authorities. What was the rule of the evil one? What was the authority that he had? The authority the devil took away from man was the condemnation that came upon man. So he says, he disarmed the rulers and authorities. Whose authority? I'm asking a question. I know it's a holy Saturday, a day of deep silence, but you can answer a spiritual question, no? What is the condemnation? What is the authority of the evil one? At least say, I don't know, no? That's also a good answer. Okay. Now, what is the work of the devil? We need to understand that. When we say condemnation, what is the work of the devil? Hebrews 2.14 tells us that. Hebrews 2.14. Hebrews 2.14, it says, Since therefore children share flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared the same thing so that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is the devil. So the power of the evil one was death. That is what was nailed on the cross. And what is that authority? What is that power? When you say death, it's destruction. What kind of a destruction? When we say no condemnation, what is the condemnation that we received? What did we receive? Yes, sister, tell me something, no? Sin. Okay, in general, we call it a sin. That's something man committed, am I right? Sin is something that man committed through Adam. That we know that. But what, because of that, what is the condemnation you received? Yeah, number one. Let's read, focus on one chapter in the Bible. Number one, Genesis chapter 3 and verses 16. Genesis 3, 16. To the woman, he said, I will greatly increase your pangs. In childbearing, you will bring forth. In pain, you will bring forth child. So number one is pain. So brother, a physical sickness, that's the first condemnation. When we say condemnation, I say you're condemned. It's not just a word that we are talking about. It's something that affected you and me. And the first condemnation was physical sickness. Number two, Genesis 3.10. Genesis 3.10. I heard the sound of you in the garden and I was afraid. Fear, fear is to do with the mind. The second condemnation, the mind was captivated. Today mind was captivated. That's the second condemnation that we received. The third one, as you said, sin. We all know the soul was condemned because of the sin of man. Three now, body, mind, soul. The fourth one, let's read Genesis chapter 3 and verses 12. Genesis 3, 12. Okay, the woman whom you gave me, she gave to me. What is the fourth condemnation? Problems in the family. The man started blaming his wife and she started blaming the serpent. That's the third thing happened. Number four, Genesis chapter three, or number five, Genesis 3, 17 and 18. And to the man he said, because you've listened to the voice of your wife and have eaten from the tree about which I commanded you, you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. In toil you will eat of it all day of your life. Next verse. Thorns and thistles you shall bring forth to you and you shall eat the plant of the field. So problem in the area of finance. He had to toil for everything. And the sixth one is Genesis 3.15. I will put affliction, you know, enmity between you and the woman. Genesis 3.15. So these are the six areas that was affected. When I say we are condemned people, the condemnation means sickness of body, sickness of mind, sickness of the soul, sickness of brokenness in family, brokenness in the finances, and finally afflictions of the evil one. Now tell me, did all this affect Adam? Yes or no? Tell me yes or no. There can only be two answers, either yes or no. Yes. Did it also affect you and me because of that? Yes, through Adam we are also affected. So are we were we condemned? Yes. Now, through the merits of Jesus Christ, that condemnation is taken away. So every problem. So what are the six areas I said anybody remembers? Number one is what? Body. Okay. Okay. I'll give you one example for that. Can we read Matthew chapter 14 verses 14? Just giving you an example to how Jesus took away this condemnation. 
when he went ashore he saw a great crowd and he was compassion on them because and cured their sick so is the first problem solved through jesus christ yes am i right what is the second one mind okay that's to do with fear all that is to do with the mind fear is only one part of it now let's not read the word of god it's a long passage you know mary and martha lost their brother lazarus so jesus is coming to the tomb of lazarus and that family of martha and mary are very sad when jesus came into that family that sadness turned into something joy so the mind was healed am i right so the second part of the condemnation taken away by the presence of jesus christ yes or no what is the third one soul okay i'll give one example in john 8 the woman was caught in adultery do you know that the law says she must be stoned to death if jesus had you no know, commanded her to be stoned to death would jesus been wrong no according to the law that's right am i right but jesus wants to take away that condemnation am i right so what did he do he found out a way of making her forgiving her sin so is the third one the soul condemnation of the soul taken away by jesus christ yes the fourth one what was the fourth one we saw family okay um act 1631 says believe in the lord jesus you will be saved you and your family am i right so if you believe in jesus will your family be saved so is the condemnation from every family been taken away by the presence of jesus in the family yes no zacchaeus had an encounter with jesus christ what did jesus tell him okay after that zacchaeus came down and he said repented i'll give half of my okay then what did jesus say salvation has come to zacchaeus salvation has come to family not only to zacchaeus am i right who believes sister zacchaeus believed and the condemnation was removed from that family i'll give you one more example when sin multiplied on the face of the earth god found one righteous person called noah okay at least some of you know him good so noah was a righteous man am i right so god told him can we read that um, genesis 7:1 let's read that genesis 7:1 Then the Lord said to Noah, "Go into the ark, you and your household, for I have seen that you alone are righteous. Only Noah was righteous. Bible does not say his wife was righteous. Bible does not say his son or the daughter-in-laws were righteous. Only Noah, but the entire family was set free from that condemnation of that flood. That's what it is. And the fifth one, finance. Am I right?" Okay, we'll take the example of the wedding of Cana. Just give you an example. The family which was running out of material need. Wine is a material need at that point of time. Yes, but then Jesus entered that family, and what happened? That shortage turned into an abundance. So was that condemnation of material, you know, poverty taken away by Jesus Christ? One more word of God, I'll give you. Let's read two Corinthians eight nine. Two Corinthians eight nine. for you know the generous act of our lord jesus christ though he was rich yet for your sake he became poor so that by his poverty you may become rich so brother if you are condemned financially jesus says i will take it upon myself are you not set free from that condemnation of material want and finally the affliction am i right we know that i already read from colossians he disarmed the rulers and authorities so now look at this all these six areas of destruction is taken away by jesus christ am i right so sister if you become one with jesus christ then do you have any of these condemnations upon you no that's why romans 8:1 says there is no condemnation for anyone who is in christ jesus can we all read this word of god together So the question is am I in Christ that's the only thing we need to examine ourselves anyone who is in Christ because every condemnation that is to come upon a human being in any form has been taken by Jesus Christ we are set free from every condemnation there's nothing to worry about it there's nothing to worry about it can you read uh, can we read a small passage now in John chapter 
verses 10 and 11 we read. It's a beautiful thing. We are talking about sin. Sister, you said sin. And the brother said soul. Something to do with that, am I right? And what happened to that woman who was caught in adultery? What happened to her? Forgiven, yes, in general. But what did Jesus actually tell her? Does anybody remember? Let's read. Yes, let's read John chapter 8, verse 10 and 11. Jesus straight up said to her, Woman, where are you? Has no one condemned you? Look at this. Has no one condemned you? Because that sin brought the condemnation on that woman. And he's asking, let's read the next verse also. She said, no one, sir. Jesus says, neither do I condemn you. Go your way. And from now onwards, do not sin again. Look at this. I don't condemn you. Why, sister? Why you and I should not be condemned? We all made mistakes, am I right? Is there anybody sitting here or even standing here who has not committed sin? I have to include myself also. All of us have committed sin. We all should be condemned for that. Then why did Jesus say, I don't condemn you? Because he has taken all the condemnation on himself. That's all. It doesn't mean that we are not condemned. Yes, we are. But he has taken it upon himself. That's why I said, if we are in Jesus Christ, this condemnation, because you know why? Every sin needs a punishment. Every sin deserves a punishment. Whatever it is, venial, mortal, needs a punishment. Romans 6.23 says, the wages of sin is death. Yes. But then what happens? But when we are in Christ... He took away your condemnation, that punishment upon you and me. When he says, I don't condemn you to that woman, what did he actually tell her? Let's get this straight. The punishment for that sin was being stoned to death. That's very clear. Am I right? I don't condemn you means what? I'm not going to punish you for this. That's exactly what it means. That means all the punishment for you and me is upon himself. That's why we say when we are in Christ, there's no condemnation, means there's no punishment. When you read Isaiah chapter 54 verses 9, just read that, Isaiah 54, 9. This is like the day of Noah to me. Just as I saw that the waters of Noah would never again go over the earth, so I have sown that I will not be angry with you and will not rebuke you. Isaiah is prophesizing this many years before the birth of Jesus Christ that we will not be rebuked. We will not be condemned. We will not be punishment because in the previous chapter, what did Isaiah prophesize? Okay, let's read that also. Isaiah 53, 4, 5, 6, 7 we will read. Isaiah 53, 4, 5, 6, 7 we will read. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases. Yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God and afflicted. Go on. He was wounded for our transgression, crushed for our inquiries. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole. Can we all repeat this together? The last part of that. Upon him. Can we all raise our right hand up? We have brothers and sisters. Okay, repeat after me so that there will be a uniformity. Upon him was the punishment that made me whole. You put yourself there in that. Am I right? So this is what you mean by there is no condemnation is Christ because every sin we are condemned. There is a condemnation for every sin that you and I do. But the only thing is Jesus has taken it upon himself. When you read the Catechism of the Catholic Church, 1472, Catechism of the Catholic Church 1472. Let me read it for you. 1472. To understand this doctrine and practice of the church, it is necessary to understand that sin has a double consequence. Grave sin deprives us of communion with God and therefore makes us incapable of eternal life. Once again, grave sin makes us deprived of communion with God and makes us, you know, incapable of eternal life. Now, let me, let's, let's break it down. I'm going to break it now. It says, 
grave sin makes us incapable of eternal life how many of us have committed grave sin my hand is up going up right now i am not ashamed to accept it yes we all fallen short of the grace of god am i right so just take it as example don't take it personally so sister you raised your hand up so no eternal life for you hold on there i'll come back to you in a moment let me finish reading this on the other hand every sin every venial entails an unhealthy attachment to creatures which must be purified either here on earth or after death in purgatory okay then it goes on these two punishment must not be conceived as a kind of vengeance inflicted by god but as following by every nature a conversation which proceeds out of it so the church says there is a provision to get rid of sin how to do that now you said that sister okay now let's put go back to john 316 okay you won't have no eternal life just take your example she's thinking only me so many people are sitting here just an example that's all you have no eternal life okay because we read that now let's read john 316 in that case for god so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life so you want eternal life believe in jesus christ you get it now because you and i cannot earn it by any action cannot earn it showing the board for confession even if you go that you cannot earn it but then when you do that you unite yourself with christ that's the faith in christ that's all all that we do is what only to establish our faith in jesus christ the sacraments unites us with christ so when i unite with christ i know that every punishment for me is already taken by christ let me a small example suppose brother you commit a, a violation some law law of the land you're caught by the police and you have to pay a fine of 500 rupees without that you will not be let alone praise the lord suppose you're traveling in a scooter or a motorbike along with your wife or daughter who it is so one of them is traveling with you am i right now the red signal is there if you jump the red signal 500 rupees fine you have to pay the fine am i right there's no escape for that you jump the fire, uh, signal and you're caught by the cop now what is the consequence of that what have to do now you have to pay the fine i am sitting behind you brother i am sitting i am your pillion imagine that okay he is thinking when did he sit behind me imagine i am sitting behind you so the cop says pay a fine otherwise you are not left am i right now i take out my wallet i give the fine who is going out free me or you i'll be with the police sister i paid the fine sister why should i be there i did not come in sin but i paid the fine brother who is going to go free now me or you both of them that's the right answer oh, oh you don't be a rocket scientist for that <laughs> both of them will go free am i right that's what it is you understand this now what do you mean you are not condemned you go now why not because of something you did because of something i did this is what is called as what jesus did there's no condemnation am i right but then the cop has to believe that i was the one who was traveling with you am i right so you believe in jesus christ you will be saved now you get it now connected together this is what we mean by this there's no condemnation for anyone and then that is explained in john 3:16 those who Uh, believe in jesus have eternal life yes you need to believe that god is there with you he has taken it upon himself and what do you mean by that remain according to this actually every sin has a reaction but somebody who believes in jesus christ that will be transformed to the body of christ that's what i mean by that that's why isaiah said upon him was the punishment that made us whole so who took your punishment for your violation brother in this example which i gave you i took the punishment that's all 
So, your punishment and my punishment, your condemnation, my condemnation is upon the body of Jesus Christ. That's why Isaiah says, he was wounded for our transgression, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was a... So, he becomes a substitute for you and me. So, this Good Friday, as we reflect on it, we finished it. Why? Good Friday is to remind you and me, there was a substitute who went through all the suffering that you and I have to go. And that's when, when I believe in this, that's when I participate in the glory of Christ on Easter Sunday. Let's read John 3.36. John 3.36 we will read. Who believes in the Son of Man has eternal life. Hello sister, once again coming to you. Who believes in the Son of Man has eternal life. Who will disobey the Son will not see life but must. Okay, now let's, let's hold this on the screen for a moment. Let it be on the screen. So now, one point is clear. Your faith will give you that. Am I right? How many of you believe in Jesus Christ? Ah, of course, I know that. I know without waiting on a Saturday instead of preparing something at home, you won't be sitting here. I know all of you believe. Just for our understanding, those who believe, put your hand up. How do I know that you believe Christ? Again, only for you to understand this, I'm asking. Anybody can say, no? Read this word of God, brother. That gives you an answer for that. That's why I put it there on the screen. Read it, read it loudly, no? Okay, that part we know. Read the second part. Who believes have eternal life, who disobeys. So what is that belief then? Get it from that two questions, you know? What is that belief then? It says... Those who believe in Christ have eternal life. Those who disobey Him have no eternal life. So what does that belief then? Obeying Christ, that's all. Oh, that's a long time to answer that. So what do you mean by faith? Why I ask this? We can all say we have faith, am I right? Faith is not something that I say I have faith. Faith means obeying all the law and all the commandments of God. That is what is called as faith. Not by telling others I have faith. No, that's not it. Living according to the teachings of God. When I say I have faith, I have to live by what Jesus told me to tell you. That's called as faith. If I tell you, no. Example, if I tell you, as per the timetable was read to you sometime back by Josephine, if I'm right. Yes or no? If I tell you, Okay, all of you can go home. No more program now. 12 o'clock, there's no preaching by father. Will you believe it? Will you get up and go? You will not get up and go. Oh, brother, you won't listen to me. Okay, don't worry. So you won't get up and go. Okay? But suppose father comes and tells you, no preaching at 12 o'clock. You can all go. Will you get up and go now? Huh? Why do you get up and go, brother? Because father has told her. Huh? I'm also father of two children. Huh? I also told the same thing, sister. Why are you not <laughs> doing that? Why are you getting a... See, just for you to understand this, okay? Don't take it literally, okay? I'm just making you understand. So why didn't you get up and go when I didn't tell you not to, to go? Because you did not believe in me, am I right? When father said, you believed him, that's why you got, am I right? So belief means obeying something, some dog no. That's what I mean, that I'm not trying to tell you. So what does that belief mean? Obeying. Obeying it. That's a sign of belief. You're not getting when I said because you don't believe in me. That's the only difference. Okay, let's preaching at 12 o'clock. Don't get up and go. Only an example I gave. <laughs> See, this is what we mean by that. So belief means obeying that. Today, today, that's where we fail. When Jesus has done everything, when the Bible says there's no condemnation, dear brothers and sisters, there is no condemnation. We don't have to live like a condemned people anymore. But the only difference, why some of them are living in the glory of Christ, others are still living, the only difference is faith. Can we go back to Romans chapter 8, verses 1, 2 and 3, we will read. There is therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, point number one. Next verse. For the law of this, let's hold on here for two for a moment. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus 
has set you free from the law of sin of death. See, I just what I was telling, the law of the spirit in life in Christ. So we have to live in Christ. Through that life in Christ, I have been set free from the law. Not because of something that I did. The life in Christ has transformed me. Let's also read the third verse and then I'll explain this together. For God has done what the law weakened by the flesh could not do. Listen, let's break it. For, the, for God has done what the law weakened by the flesh could not do by sending his own son in the likeness of a sinful flesh and to deal with sin, he condemns sin in the flesh now. Sister, you began by saying sin. That sin is condemned by Jesus Christ in his body, in his flesh. That's why I say all the condemnation for you and me is taken by Jesus Christ on his flesh. So we don't have to live in the, you know, in this flesh as a condemned people. It's not only about eternal life. It's about living this present day, today. Today I can live as a child of God, in the freedom of a child of God, because I have been set free from every condemnation of the flesh, not of the spirit alone. That will happen in eternal life. No, no, this is for everyday life also. Every day you can live, this day you can live. And that's the freedom we have. And that's the liberation we have. And that's what this Good Friday to Easter did to you and me. Liberated us from every condemnation. But all that has been done 2,000 years by Jesus Christ. So we don't have to do anything. Only believe and live in that promise. And how? By obeying all. That's, very, that's the key. Without, you know, everybody can believe. Good Friday, the churches can be packed. and can be overflowing also. But that doesn't mean everyone merit of that. The merit is when I start living what God told me to live. If he says, no sin, don't sin anymore, I have to follow that. If he says, spend one hour and pray with me, we have to follow that. If he says, love your enemies, we have to do that. That's when this promise of, you know, living without the condemnation of a child comes to in me. Therefore, it says, everyone who is in Christ, are you in Christ or around Christ? Okay, I'll give a small example for you to understand this. There's an altar here. Suppose I go and hide behind that. Can anyone see me? Why brother, you can't see me? Why you cannot see me? You can come that side and see me, no? If you come that side, you can see me, no? Did I tell you not to leave from your chair? I didn't tell that. Can you see me if you come from that side? Yeah, that's very clear. I can see you brother. But suppose I'm hidden inside this. Can you see me? Okay. Now what does the Bible say? There's no condemnation for anyone who is in, in Christ. Today are we around Christ? Or are we somewhere near Christ? Or are we in Christ? In Christ means what? It is no longer I but Christ who lives in me. He lives through me. So if I'm going to be a part of grafted onto Christ, when I'm grafted onto Christ, Every condemnation for you and me is already upon Christ. That's what we both are traveling together. Am I right, brother? When we are one, one of us paying fine is enough. But suppose I come in another bike behind you, I also jump right, I pay fine rupees. Can you say he paid for me? No. Because you were near me. You were traveling in front of me or behind me, but you are not with me in the bike. That's a difference. That's what we need to apply to our lives also. So when we are living a life in Christ or Christ is in me, there is no condemnation. So the challenge before you and me, the season of this holy week, what is the challenge it throws before you and me? That preparing us to live the rest of our earthly life according to God's will. Let's finish with one word of God. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 4 verses 2. 1 Peter 4 2. So as to live the rest of your earthly life no longer by human desires, but by the will of God. That's exactly what it is. So condemnation for you and me is taken by Christ. There's no condemnation. But that also means that I need to rest, live the rest of my earthly life, not eternal life, earthly life, no longer by human standards, but by the will of God. Are we ready to take that decision? If we are ready to take this decision, to live the rest of our earthly life, not by human standards according to the will of God, 
then there is no condemnation for you and me because every condemnation, whether it's of the body, mind, soul, family, finances, afflictions, any kind of condemnation doesn't matter. Jesus has already taken upon himself. Can we close our eyes for a moment? Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us the grace to understand. We are not a condemned people, Lord, because every condemnation that Satan brought upon us, you have already taken upon himself. It is transferred to the body of Christ. Therefore, all I need to do is in faith unite myself to live in Christ and live a life in Christ Jesus so that no more will I live as a child condemned but as a child in the freedom of God. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, so is now and ever, ever shall, shall be, be world, world without, without end. end. Amen. Amen. God bless you and thank you. Let's give the Lord mighty claps for the gift of Brother Raghu, who shared us a wonderful message. Thank you, Brother. So our uh, announcement for the people who have joined us late, a counseling session is arranged on my right in the Divine Mercy Hall. Counselors are available if you want to make a good counseling. Once the board is shown, 10 of them at a time, you can go make use of this arrangement. Also, our confession is happening arranged just behind this main church in the ground floor retreat hall. Priests are available till 1 o'clock. If you are prepared yourself for a good confession, kindly make use of this opportunity. On my right, as we step out of this building, on my right we have four departments. The first one is the office. If you want to offer mass, donation, tithe, love offering or residential retreat, booking, so on, kindly approach the office and get the updates. Just next to the office we have a book stall, pious articles, candle, oil, so on a calendar, SCP books, things are available according to your need, kindly purchase it. Also next to the bookstall we have a Logos cafeteria, refreshments are available. Next to the cafeteria we have arranged few toilet facilities, few more are arranged just behind this main convention hall as we take left, dead end and left. And drinking water dispensers is available behind. Also our Logos voice counter is uh, arranged as we enter the main door, uh, it is 250 rupees per year. If you are not subscribed, kindly uh, take it as a chance and get a subscription for yourself and for your friends. And our FCN program which is arranged as we enter the main gate uh, towards my left, we have a, a grey building, the f ground floor we have an office, person in charge is Sister Jacqueline. You can approach her for the uh, details regarding the FCN program that is food, clothing and nest. And uh, whoever has come here to give a live testimony that God has blessed you through different days or through different means through Logos ministry, please come to the right in the reception and give your testimony along with your photo and medical reports if it is available, which will be processed and delivered during 3 o'clock prayer. And also our lunch break will be 1 to 1.30, which is free, no need of any registration, which is arranged just when we step out of this main convention hall, St. Joseph Church, basement of the church, lunch is arranged for all of us. So, and now by 12 o'clock the token will be issued, whoever wants counselling with Father Joe's, kindly collect the token. At 4.30 after the session gets over for the day, you can all assemble on my right in the Divine Mercy Hall with the token and get a counselling facility from Father Joe's. Praise the Lord. And once again we thank our brother Ness and Sister Joyce who are helping us in worship today. Let's assure our prayers, extending our hands on our altar, we'll offer one Hail Mary prayer for the personal intentions. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our next talk will be by our Reverend uh, uh, Father Joseph Uncle, Director of Logos Retreat Center. Father is going to speak on uh, where sin increased, mercy increased all the more. That's Romans 5.20. As we're preparing our hearts to listen to the word of God, let's join the choir and welcome the Holy Spirit in our midst. Let's gently close our eyes. Let's keep our hands open before us. Once again, we pray to the Holy Spirit, melt me, mold me, make me the person that you want me to be. Yes, O oh Holy Spirit, Jesus, help me to be and do everything that you want me to do, to speak the words that you want me to speak, to listen 
to the things that you want me to listen oh holy spirit i surrender this moment into your hands melt me mold me mold me fill me fill me and use me and use me melt me mold and honor to Jesus forever and ever amen on this holy saturday we wait for receiving fresh anointing ephesians 119 lift up your hands and say those who believe in jesus 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 this power this power fresh anointing fresh anointing is available is available this immeasurable power this immeasurable power is already working is already working in the believers in the believers hallelujah hallelujah so let us read together what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe according to the working of his great power and uh, this power worked in the tomb today we commemorate the rest of jesus in the tomb but he is not at all resting there he is still working in the tomb first peter 319 first peter 319 he went to a place called sheol he went down to sheol on saturday and he proclaimed the good news who were in bondage so lift up our hands so jesus went down let us pray together jesus went down to a place called sheol or the lap of abraham where all the souls holy souls were in prison by the power of the devil jesus went down to sheol on holy saturday and he proclaimed the good news of ransom that he paid on the cross hallelujah thank you jesus so jesus paid ransom on the cross he declared that good news to the souls in sheol who were sitting in the lap of abraham 
and Jesus took them and put them in heaven. That is our meditation on Holy Saturday. 1 Peter 4, 19. So Jesus is still working. His body is resting in the tomb. Then the middle of the night, Saturday night, early morning of the Sunday, Holy Spirit descended upon him. That Holy Spirit is known as power of resurrection. Ephesians 1.18 Ephesians 1.18 Power of Resurrection So this power of resurrection is a glorious inheritance. That inheritance we will receive it and still it is working in us. So on this Holy Saturday we pray that the power come upon us. Then our eyes will be opened Kidneys will start working. Brain tumor will disappear. And at this power, Jesus manifested during his lifetime. That power is available for us. St. John Paul II just used to say, don't boast of yesterday's saints and their activities. You have to do something as they have done. Take an example. What you are doing, that is most important. Luke chapter 436. By the power of the Holy Spirit working in Jesus, Jesus commanded with authority to all evil spirits. He commanded. So the power of resurrection is going to work in you. If it is working, this will happen in you. And what I did, I, that I am going to tell you. Then that is a possibility. You can also do it. If we are not doing it, St. John Paul II said, our preaching is empty. We are giving false witness. One side we say, power comes. And we feel powerlessness. St. Paul said, we are false witnesses. 1 Corinthians 15, 16 If you and I are not going to use this kind of power False witness We say Christ is risen, power is granted Where is it? False witness If the dead are not raised Christ has not been raised Then verse 17 Then what we are giving we are giving false testimony. Christ has not been raised. Your faith is fruitless or futile. And you are still in your sins. And verse 18. We are giving false witness. Christ is and power is released. And this power is working in you. But you are still powerless or I am still powerless. False witness. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 14, 14 and 15, what we read there, false witnesses. We say power is available, power has come in the tomb. And Matthew chapter 28, 18, this power I give it to you, all authority in heaven and earth, all authority in heaven and on earth, lift up your hands. So this, this waiting day for getting this fresh anointing, you and I must receive fresh anointing and we have to do something great. We should do. Power and authority, all authority in heaven. Please repeat. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Then verse 19 says, I give you this power and authority. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So, Jesus, keep your hands down. Jesus declared this power after his resurrection. Same power worked in Jesus. Then, Romans chapter 15, 17. Saint Paul said, the continuation of the work of Jesus through me, the proclamation of Jesus, continue to my proclamation, 
if not i am a false witness to christ jesus romans chapter 15 16 16 paul says i am a minister of christ i preach the gospel to the gentiles and to all world to sanctify their offerings and the holy spirit then verse 17 the full sentence says what the full sentence i give you the power those who have bible please open it then it is will be very clear because in the words that we have seen fragmented so we read the full test what we have to do how to give a full witness to christ jesus so the lord says in christ jesus then i have a reason to boast my work for god verse 18 for i will not venture to speak anything except that christ has accomplished through me then five things mentioned there so we have to say something as a good news what the lord has done through my hands through my words through my deeds if not i think i am a false witness to christ jesus then come to jesus ministry luke chapter 436 he commanded the evil spirit come out and bound at the feet of jesus so jesus commanded the evil spirit luke chapter 439 jesus commanded with authority with authority to the sickness so now if i give a command to a cancer patient if that cancer spirit of cancer doesn't come out my preaching is empty i am giving only a false witness an is officer came from goa with his family and he told me when you command the spirit of cancer come out tumor come out allergy come out devil come out i was thinking this is not a good preaching in the modern terms there are medicines if medicine doesn't fail people are to die but when we attend the session one day you just commanded cancer come out tumor come out then fever come out my daughter and myself and my family and my wife attending the session through online ministry suddenly one tumor on her hand disappeared we all noticed it then we noticed that one tumor was on her throat that also vanished then they went for check up there was tumor in her uterus and tubes that also vanished then he came here to give a testimony we can command to the sickness to come out it will obey you luke 439 jesus commanded to the fever to come out as he commanded to a person jesus commanded the evil spirit with authority come out and it came out mark chapter 439 jesus commanded the wind and sea they also obey him wind and the sea then people amazed and said mark 441 they am i are they amazed and they said even wind and sea obey him so the power of resurrection is in you or not these are the manifestations if it is not there don't depressed today is the day we have to pray lord send this spirit in this clay jar lift up your hands second corinthians chapter 4 verse 7 lift up your hands second corinthians 4 7 we are clay jars there is a treasure in this clay jar that is the holy spirit in this clay jar there is a power 
And uh, how you know that, that that power is there? You command to the fever. It should come out from your children. It should come out from the person who is not being healed of medicine. Command. And it will work out. If not, we give false testimony. We preach, we don't do it. We preach, we don't see it. Then people around us will think, this is fake preaching. This is fake ministry. Let us pray. Jesus, I believe in the power of resurrection. This power of resurrection manifested in the ministry of Peter, in the ministry of Paul, in the ministry of all the saints in the church. Now, this power must be manifested in the life of the believers to continue the work of Jesus. Then keep our hands down. What are the works of Jesus? Matthew chapter 9, verse 35. All of you take Matthew 9, 35. Matthew 9, 35. Four things mentioned. That is the ministry of Jesus. So you have to continue it. I have to continue it. I have to go to village. I have to go to town. I have to command the evil spirit to come out. I have to command the cancer to go out. And if it doesn't happen, it's a false ministry. It's not a right ministry. Because Jesus did it. He asked us to do it. And all sickness are not being healed by medicine. And we apply care, prayer, medicine, word of God and faith. Still people die. That's called the time of death has come. Nothing will work out. That time we have to go to father's house. But if we have not applied all these five together, then there is something to regret. Lord, I didn't take care. Or I didn't give care. Lord, I didn't take the prayer. Lord, I didn't use your word. Lord, I didn't use this power through faith. Then something to regret. I could preserve my life, I could preserve the life of my children, but it doesn't happen. Then you and I should regret. But after doing five things, care, prayer, medicine, word of God and faith, nothing happened. Person died. Will of God. But that person leaves. It should disappear. The sickness should disappear. The cancer should come out till the time of death. Let us pray together now. Jesus, your name has power. Still that power working in me. This is power of resurrection. Help me, Lord, to enjoy this power of resurrection in my personal life, in my family. Now, lift up your right hand and pray for pastors and preachers. They are doing not family ministry, but we are doing the ministry of Jesus in our family. It is a domestic church. You must do it. This is the mind of the church. Brethren, I tell you, this is the mind of the church. You should do the ministry of Jesus in your family because compendium of the catechism of the Catholic Church says family is a domestic church. Church is established to continue the ministry of Jesus. It is a clear statement that you must do the ministry of Jesus in your family. Proclamation, casting out demons, Matthew 9.35, you must do in your family. Then, now we lift up our right hand. There are pastors who are doing this ministry for the whole world. We pray. Jesus, bless our pastors, preachers, and ministers of the word of God. Let them exercise this power in the church, in the church, in the community. Let them do this ministry in their family first, then in their church for the use of all people around the world. Amen. So now keep our hands down. 
those who are online and those who are present here going to have a fresh anointing that possibility is there and we are going to give a command hereafter and it will obey a person called Mary Vergis and she is suffering of cancer you train cancer how this is working out in our ministry that i tell you not only in our family in family you have to do it and in the church the priest will do it or the preachers will do it and she is suffering of last stage of cancer and uh, she is a patient in velour medical college dr abraham said you come this particular day we will do the surgery after that we will do chemotherapy let us do what is best from our side the previous day of her surgery she was here that was a friday i think it was for saturday one day she has come what is written here you have to command the cancer to come out if she has life to live it must obey so i given a command in the name of jesus spirit of cancer come out then she went for that surgery the following day dr abraham said no need of surgery your cancer is not there your uterus is normal amen thank you jesus and even today she is alive and last month or uh, last year last year month of december 2023 she has come from us together with all the family members to give once again the testimony this happened in 2014 and 10 years after she is remaining in our healing still she is healthy so here after you and i have to command the sickness as jesus did because there is some power if does it work out that means we have to still sit in our prayer room and get more anointing anointing is less not the statement in the bible or mystery in the bible is wrong but from our side we have to work out more work out your faith philippians chapter 2 verse 13 work out your faith something more work out until the power comes out for it is god who is at work in you enable you both will and to work for his good pleasure so work out your faith until we get this power continue the prayer one day this will happen one side there is a possibility on the side there is a, a testimony it is your chance to get it in your side 38 years one man was blind and he was listening this online ministry and last week he has come here to give a testimony 38 years he was blind because of glaucoma and also diabetes i said is lost cannot uh, get it back then the ministry of christ will help us through the church through the ministry of the pastors and he got back his full sight and he has given that testimony suppose nothing happened in one time prayer or one time retreat nothing happened take a decision i will continue until i get the blessing that i need i will continue until i get the blessing so try work out again again philippians chapter 2 verse 13 work out your faith until the power comes we have to sit and pray luke 24 49 until you get this effect continue the prayer that means prayer is less now let us pray together lifting up our hands this power is available for you as bible says this is available for you 
and it is working in you Ephesians 3:20 this is working for you it is available for you automatically it may not come to you or to me sit in your prayer room now itself start praying lord sent you this power upon me this is power of resurrection your destiny is not to live in sickness that is not your destiny that is a plan of the devil plan of god is always healing deliverance anointing or some people uh, deny it hebrews chapter 10 verse 35 some people refuse to be healed healing is their birthright you can be healed but you can deny it also to have a better resurrection some people hebrews chapter 11 1135 hebrews 1135 some people reject what they reject it for what they reject it lord we want to be tortured is our occasion to get more power of resurrection it is your personal choice to continue it or not to continue it i am refusing to accept release in order to obtain a better resurrection now transfix your hands on your chest better resurrection means little teres of lisio she doesn't want to be healed so th- there are exceptions hebrews chapter 1135 little teres of lisio executed in her life lord i don't want to be healed she was suffering a something like a tuberculosis and she was taking medicine to manage but she refused to be healed to get a better resurrection so after her death and during her lifetime she is able to exercise power of resurrection to obtain a better resurrection more power now take off your hand take another example saint alfonsa in kerala three times she was she prayed and she was healed again the affliction happened sickness reappeared she didn't pray hebrews 1135 she applied lord i don't want the healing this time i want to get more power of resurrection so those who do not deny in order to get more power of resurrection in the healing they deny the healing deny the release they don't want to be away from persecution they endure it by their own choice but god has not asked anyone to suffer catholic church says in do cat 66 66 says god has not asked anyone to suffer except his son jesus christ god asked jesus to suffer not all human beings so we have to exercise our faith and work it out and take it for ourselves it is already there you can do it from practical side when you suffer fever you have to command to that fever in the name of jesus i command you wicked spirit of fever come out and be bound at the feet of jesus he should obey you and should obey me and what i have done that i declare it romans chapter 15 15 and 16 and 17 so romans 15 17 and 18 says precisely verse 18 for i will not venture to speak of anything except what christ has accomplished through me to win obedience from the gentiles by the word and the deed by the power of signs and wonders and by the power of the spirit of god so that from jerusalem and till greece illyricum i have 
fully proclaimed the good news of Christ. Now all of you may stand up. Something going to happen in this place. If a sick are not healed in Logos or around the world now, when I give the command, this mystery in the Bible is only a history. It's a history. This happened. But this is no more remain as a history. It is a mystery. History only will repeat. Mystery will reenact. Reenact means it will happen as it is. History repeats means similar things can take place several places. Re rep repeat. History can be repeated. This happened this or every hundred year some kind of disease will happen in this world this happened in um, 17th century 18th century 19th century and 20th century 21st century and finally COVID so every hundred year it repeats some kind of disease will come and many people will die we all witnessed it and still the bad effect of it is not completely gone so history repeated, not the same disease repeated, but some other disease. So history repeats. Or oh, revolution happened in some place because of some particular situation there. In another place, another revolution happened, but not the same revolution. Another one. So history repeat. The whole book, this Bible, is not history. It is mystery. It will happen as it is. As it is written, it is repeated in you, reenacted in you. It's not a repetition. It's not a revision as it is. It will reenact in you. As the Holy Mass, we have a reenactment of Calvary event. It is not a repetition of the Calvary event, it is a reenactment. As it is happened. Now we give command to the sickness, command to the tumor, command to the cancer, command to the allergy, command to the devil, command to the black magic. How many of you have a suspicion of somebody did a black magic against you? How many of you have that suspicion? Lift up your hand. So that is going to be canceled, maybe real or unreal, whatever it be, something has happened and you have a suspicion that there is an element of work of devil in you or black magic in you. So those who have a fear or a suspicion or a doubt, this is something because of black magic. That means somebody used to the power of the devil, not power of the Holy Spirit. The pastors and preachers are using power of the Holy Spirit. But black magicians, sorcerers are using power of the devil. Pastors are using the power of the Holy Spirit to help the people. Black magicians are doing the power of the devil to destroy someone or disturb somebody. That is called a black art. So those who have this suspicion, lift up your right hand. By the power and authority of Jesus... I give a command to the devil and demons. Come out. Now put your hand on your chest. One mystery happened. That's going to happen here also. Acts chapter 8 verse 7. Philip, a deacon, after the resurrection of Jesus then to Samaria. As Paul said, he wanted to do something in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. When he was preaching, Acts 8, 7, when he was preaching, demons came out. Lame walked. Blind received sight. Paralyzed healed. 
lame were cured so this is happened when deacon philip preached the word of god demons came out and great joy spread everywhere in samaria years after we stand here not in samaria but in logos and the whole world from different parts of the world some people looking to jesus now wherever you are the power of jesus comes out i am going to give a command the power of the black magic will come out and you will not be afflicted hereafter and it is your choice to keep it or to release it hebrews chapter 11 35 some people reject we don't want it the reason that we want have only power of intercession power of resurrection power of miracle working grace more and more so we don't want it we have some saints like did there is bless you john of the cross and saint alfonso and many other saints but there are multitude of saints who have prayed and received the blessing for themselves and released the blessing for others so two traditions we have which tradition we want to follow that is our own personal choice catholic church says god has not asked you to suffer or to remain in your sickness god has not asked you you cat 66 says and god is no way directly or indirectly responsible for your suffering compendium 57 says god is no way responsible directly or indirectly the cause of your suffering or blindness or retardation church says it is through the work of the devil through the cooperation of people it happened through the work of the devil sometimes with the cooperation this happened with the consent of the people this happened now place your hand on your chest in the name of jesus jesus of nazareth i bind and cast out this spirit of black magic from you i command to you wicked spirit of black magic come out and be bound at the feet of jesus now we pray in the name of jesus i command to you by the spirit of sorcery and the power of black magic come out and be bound at the feet of jesus amen thank you jesus now the lord says 14 people who are standing here having tiredness in their body they are tired there is not much strength compared to last year or previous month now you feel weakness there is not much strength 14 people receive now the spirit of strength in their body praise the lord clap our hands and praise and thank god hallelujah thank you jesus praise you jesus amen so how many of you are freed from tiredness when you come to logos today you are weak and tired now your tiredness is gone you feel that you are strong how many of you have that experience 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 25 26 27 28 29 30 31 32 33 33 persons now the power of resurrection going to work out those who have a cyst and tumor in the body lift up your hand any part cyst or tumor just place your hand on your sickness or on your chest and all of us pray together in the name of jesus we bind you and cast you out all spirit of infirmity all spirit of sickness spirit of blindness spirit of unhappiness spirit of doubt come out and be bound at the feet of 
Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. The Lord says, four persons are already healed of their cyst and tumor in the body. Thank you, Jesus. Kindly sit down. John chapter 19.10 John chapter 19.10 Certain spirit having power over you. Jesus said, God has allowed it. Pilate asked this question. Jesus, don't you know that? I have power and authority to release you or to kill you. What is the reply of Jesus? Verse 11. John 19.11 What is the reply of Jesus? Pilate. If God has not allowed it, you will not have no power over me. Now, come to your life and to my life. If God has not allowed, black magic will not have any power over you. If God has not allowed, this cancer has no power over you. Cancer is always there, but it has no power over you. If God has not allowed, seizure cannot have any power over you. This infection has no power over you. So what happened? God allowed it. Not God has given. God allowed it. Then what is the reason that God allowed it? Do you have any guesswork? Why God has allowed it? If somebody has a request, then only it is to be allowed. Who has made this request to have power over you? Jewish people asked the pilot, Pilot, we ask you, use your power, declare this man to be crucified. Somebody requested, Pilate granted. Jesus said, Pilate, you don't worry about all these things. My father has not allowed it, you will not have this power. So God allowed your blindness. God allowed it. Then who demanded it? Job chapter 2 verse 3. Job chapter 2 verse 3. God said to Satan directly, You have asked me again and again and compelled me to torment this blameless man. He is upright. And he is a true man. He is a holy man. But you have insisted me to afflict pain upon him. So I have given you the permission. Now come back to John chapter 19 verse 10. Pilate said I have power. Jesus said John 19 11. If God has not allowed it, you will not have a power over me. So what has happened? It is allowed by God. Then how to cancel it? Cancellation, you need power to cancel it. That power is granted, that power is known as power of the resurrection, power of the Holy Spirit. And also there is a crime sheet placed on the top of the cross. Other two crosses, nothing is written there. Only one cross has a title. What is the title? John 19.19. John 19.19. Pilate wrote a title for Jesus. What is the title? Jesus of Nazareth. King of the Jews. So inscription written and put on the cross. It read... Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Other two crosses have no title at all. Who is there? What is their cry, crime? What is the title? No, only Jesus has a title. What is the title? Jesus of Nazareth. The whole world must know that Jesus of Nazareth. And what is his crime? He is the King of the world. So he has power and authority over you. 
One man came from Goa and he was drinking 20 years, continuous drinking, three bottles he finished every day. He has no power to come out of it. His wife prayed for him daily. 20 years after, 20 years she continuously prayed, but she was not depressed. She has hope. One day this man will come out of it. 20th year of his drinking, when he was about to drink, Jesus appeared in the liquor. Not only on the cross or in the bread or in the church, he appeared, his face visible in the glass, on the liquor. And Jesus told him, why should you spoil your body? My son, stop it. Last week we heard his testimony. He stood here and given a testimony. And I uploaded that testimony also in the YouTube. Then he lost that interest to drink. So that power of the alcohol went out of him. Not by his prayer or his interest, but by the power of the prayer of the wife. So do not be depressed seeing some people in your house not praying. Your prayer is enough to save them. Acts 16, 31, you believe your family will be saved. Matthew chapter 15, 28, woman, your faith is great. Your daughter at home is healed and freed from the dominion of devil. So your prayer in the name of Jesus will give release to the people who have no faith. First, you have to be healed. Second, you must heal others. Secondly, you have to set yourself free from the dominion of devil. And your family members must be freed from the dominion of devil. Don't be depressed. You continue the prayer. Your family is a domestic church and you have a priestly ministry in your family. You must do it. And I do the priestly ministry in the church and I must do it for the whole world that I am doing it every day. And all people are not being healed or delivered when I do the ministry, but 98% of people are already blessed. 100% have not seen it. Maybe in future 100% will happen. Still I have to work out my faith more. And continue to do the same until you get good result. Those who are sick, lift, extend your hands towards the sanctuary. First we have commanded the evil spirit of black magic spell and curse and all those who are online are freed today and all those who are present here are freed from the spirit of black magic. It will not trouble you. If it troubles you again, again you have to pray and defeat him until he is completely defeated. Continue the prayer. Now we pray for healing of physical ailments. Those who are sick, extend your hands towards the sanctuary. Those who are online, extend your hands towards the sanctuary through online ministry. You are going to be healed. Extend your hands. In the name of Jesus, I bless your hands. Receive the power to heal the sick. Mark chapter 16 verse 18. You will lay your hand on the sick and sick will be healed. Now place your hand on your chest or on your sickness. In the precious name of Jesus, I pray that the Lord may heal your Parkinson's. The Lord Almighty may heal your blindness. The Lord may set you free from your less hearing and hearing complaint to be healed. Jesus may heal your osteoporosis and osteoarthritis. He may heal your depression. He may heal your infection in your body. He may heal your excessive hair fall. 
the lord may touch you and heal your alopecia the lord may heal your diabetes the lord may heal your intestinal problems the lord almighty may touch you where you place your hand and heal your disease and sickness be healed in the name of jesus make one sign of the cross on your forehead and pray jesus i apply your precious blood on my forehead make the sign of the cross on your sickness and believe that the lord has answered your prayers it is already granted so now we have the summary what we have listened today i say our chapter 30 verse 18 is a summary of the message that we heard today i say our chapter 30 verse 18 the lord is waiting for you in logos retreat center the lord is waiting for you two things will happen first one he is here to give you mercy and his generosity will be manifested in you therefore the lord waits to be gracious to you therefore he will rise up to show mercy to you for the lord is a god of justice blessed are all those who wait for him so today you are waiting i am also waiting for what to receive fresh anointing that's the whole message that i preach today we are waiting for receiving fresh anointing and this fresh anointing is known as ephesians 119 power of resurrection and this power of resurrection is available when you and i believe in jesus believe in jesus then the practical side of this power manifested first in isaiah chapter 43 verse 2 isaiah 43 2 when you are facing troubles in your life struggle in your life when you are going through the waters this will not overwhelm you when you are going through fire ish will not destroy you what does it mean two things are mentioned there one is fire another one is flood i say r43 2 says this is a time of your struggle what's the time of your struggle fire and water means you are maybe sick or maybe afflicted with black magic or maybe suffering of injustice or somebody has done an injustice against you and you are waiting for justice but it is delayed and delayed this promise has given when you are going through this days of struggle some power that you need don't expect somebody will come and help me some prayers or some ministry will help me help will come from within you because the power is already granted to you you have to work out philippians chapter 2 verse 13 work out your faith it is granted to you power is in you and uh, don't think that you are helpless or powerless work it out then how to work it out take our prayer book nine steps of personal prayer daily do it you are working out your faith and one day this power will work favorable for you lifting up our hands now just have this meditation of the power of christ acts chapter 2 verse 3 this is our meditation how we are going to receive this power 10 days the first community of jesus prayed 10th day power came upon them they had wonderful manifestations why not this happen now in our life 
It's already happened in you. Many of you are already anointed. And those who are already anointed are waiting for fresh anointing. Now that fire comes upon you. A wind moving over you. You hear the sound of the wind. That means you are hearing something. The word of God or feel the movement of the fire and air. Fire and the wind. And just imagine that that power goes within and you are anointed. It's a meditation of Acts chapter 2 verse 3. Now place your hands above your head. In the name of Jesus, I pray over all Logosians around the world. Lord Almighty, send your power and anointing upon all. As we heard today, this is available for all believers. And this is already working in you. But help us, Lord, to work out this faith. Work out this power. And help us to come out of our struggle, fire and water. And the struggle. Your power will help us. Amen. Take off your hands. This power is available, make use of it. And I have a given command, as St. Paul said, I have seen 98% of people who are healed and blessed and freed. 2% I have not seen. So this is my personal experience. St. Paul said, what the Lord has done through my word and my hands and my deed." I want to witness it. Nothing else I want to preach. So Paul never preached what he has not seen, what he has not done, what he has experienced that he shared. I also did the same. The same will happen in your ministry. Now we bless the food that we are going to take. Bless us, O Lord, and these thy gifts which we are about to receive from thy bounty through Christ our Lord. Amen. So the food is blessed. After the food, all of you may come here, one thirty. Meanwhile, we will listen some of the testimonies happened in Logos Retreat Center through the preaching and the ministry. If you have a special prayer intention, lift up your hand. And extend your hands towards the sanctuary. In the name of Jesus, I pray over this special prayer intention that you have. Let this prayer intention be fulfilled in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So your special intention is also fulfilled. Go for lunch and come back after half an hour.
23. Encountered Jesus and it totally changed my life. I have received abundant blessings from him. Some of them are, my garden is full of fruits and vegetables, which was impossible. Earlier, few only fruits used to be, but that also, in, uh, like by animals, like birds and all, used to get damaged, we could not eat. But now, I'll tell you so much, I'll, like I'm really blessed, I would say. And we eat like almost every day, we have a fruit from the garden itself and vegetable. And uh, the second thing was, my Lord has set me free from my sinful bondage that I was suffering from nine years. I was struggling, I wanted to come out of it, but I couldn't, but through Logos, I, it was possible for me. And the third was uh, my sickness, that was early morning when I used to wake up, I used to always have sneezing and uh, cough, running nose. I was struggling with it. Every time, like, you know, I was like, why God, why you give it to me? Like, I couldn't, and also due to my sickness, I was, uh, some other sickness I had, so I have, that made it uh, more difficult for me to manage it. And I believe that sickness also will be healed of mine, and uh, I've completely set free. And when I came, uh, actually about this sickness only, about the morning sickness, after I went back home in September, after my retreat, uh, I was set free, completely. But I went back into the pigsty, I would say. I went back into sin. And uh, that sickness came back again in me. And uh, I said, Lord, I know that when I come back to Logos, it's going to be set free again. Just as I entered, I reached morning, Saturday morning, 3 o'clock. Since then, nothing was there. Since now, nothing. I'm healed completely. Nothing of that sort has happened. And the fourth is uh, my business. Business has flourished like anything. Uh, like I was struggling with my business. And... Uh, uh, my finances have increased and multiplied. All praise and thank you, God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. My name is Anita Jisoza and I'm from Goa. I just come to give testimony of my husband. He's a diabetic person of at least 15 years of high BP and high sugar. He had four times stroke and last time he fell on the road with high BP. And doctor gave medicine but medicine of no use. One month, high BP and sugar. Then I start one ICO prayer and with the blessed salt and water, the pressure and sugar come down to normal. And I had just come to give his testimony. But when I am doing my retreat here, I also healed from migraine headache and itching problem for at least 15 years in my body. I was just giving thank to God for Almighty, for all the blessings He had given for us and for my children. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. My name is Doris Silvera. I'm from Dadar, Mumbai. I'm since uh, 2016 Logosin. And I'm, I got a lot of problem in my house, but I came, whenever I used to come here, I used to heal. And suddenly in 2021, uh, 2020, after the lockdown, my back pain started, lot paining, and I cannot carry anything and uh, heavy things. If I carry anything, I, uh, my back start paining. I showed many doctors, uh, two doctors, and especially a spanner for uh, doctor I showed. They, uh, one doctor told, if you are not healing, then you should not do surgery also. I said, no, I don't want to do surgery. And uh, whatever me medicine they are giving, I'm getting a reaction of that medicine. Uh, itching and everything, I, full body was itching. Full night, I cannot sleep also because of itching. And because of itching also, I cannot sleep. And because of pain also, I cannot uh, do. Little while I sleep, little while I do my work, I was sleeping full day, so sometimes I cannot sleep long time also. Long time also, I cannot walk also. And uh, I told my children, my elder daughter, I told, I, I'm going to Lobos. I want to do retreat. In 2016, I did first. And I said, uh, 2022, uh, uh, last year, 23. 
I said, um, I'm going to uh, Lobos, uh, uh, I'll pray and come. My daughter said, okay, um, I'll uh, remove your ticket. Train ka ticket she removed and no one was with me. I came alone I, and a doc doctor given me belt to wear. He said, compulsory, you must wear belt. I, say, uh, I said, okay. And I came like that only, uh, my, carry my luggage and I came alone. And I said, uh, last day, five days I was not healed. But last day I went to uh, three minutes counseling to father. That time father told me, you are healed from your backbone. I said, praise the Lord. And no need of um, wearing this belt um, anymore. I said, okay, father, I will not um, uh, wear this belt. I removed and I kept in the my bag. And I went like that only. After that, I still am not wearing that belt also. And I'm healed from that um, pain last year. Uh, to, uh, after that also I came again to uh, retreat with my mommy and my daughter. That time my daughter also healed, my mommy also healed. Lot of blessing I got from here and uh, plus I'm 2006 also father uh, was uh, in a Chembur Ashram, Mumbai. I used to go there also to meet father. And a uh, lot of blessing came for me and uh, plus I was in a lot of bondage and black magic. Somebody did on me. I must not grow in spiritual life also and financial also. I'm the widow, but God bless me so much. No, no one helped me. I got three kids, but they grown up. They educated nice. They are uh, working. Good place. My son is working on rig. Everything was going well. But suddenly something happened and my finance was gone. Zero again. I was not working, but everything was going well for my children and everything. After that, I came here and everything became nice. Last, uh, in July, uh, no, in uh, July I came. July with my daughter and that time I free from that bondage also from black magic and everything and uh, everything my finance all started growing I'm taking my orders also nicely and everything is going well thank you Jesus praise you Jesus my name is Glenn Dimnell I am from Vilipram that is in Tamil Nadu I work for Indian Express and I served Indian Express for nearly 27 years which Indian Express was terminating all the senior members because they were getting fresh hands to give them less salary. In 2003, it came to me and they asked me to resign. I said, for what? No, if you don't resign, we will terminate you. And they done what they said. But I didn't accept, expect, accept that. I had been to court in labor court and there in 2009, December, I won my case but they never gave me anything. They appealed to high court. In 2010 till 2023, they were just adjourned, 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 adjourned. Three months ago, they say another date. Three months ago, they say another date. So when in 2022, in November, I had the opportunity to come into Logos and we met Father Joe's. And Father Joe's told us, don't worry, your case will be over soon. And as he said, it was done. In 2023, my case came to an end and they gave me my full settlement. For this, my wife and myself are come here as a Thanksgiving retreat. Thank you, Jesus. My name is Manjula. I come from Bangalore. Uh, I would like to, uh, I have already given this uh, testimony in past, but again, I would like to share my testimony here. In the year 2018, uh, way back uh, uh, in April, uh, we came to meet Father Joe's. I was jobless and uh, I was working in Chennai and uh, I took a sabbatical break of two years. After that, I came here and then I applied for around 200 uh, application, 200 jobs. And in fact, I finished one of the costliest certification as well. But still, I did not get any job. So myself, my husband, my two kids were going through a lot of financial problems. 
the problem was so much i didn't have money even to buy half liter of milk so we were depressed and we want to go back to chennai because my husband was working in chennai so we want to go back and uh, that is when uh, my husband happened to meet somebody in the bus while coming to bangalore his name is uh, brother ragu not this the brother who is to preach the other brother so he told please go and meet uh, father jos in fact we know father because uh, we used to go to elavur and uh, loyola college in chennai and we have attended so i told my husband we'll go to logos uh, we'll meet father whatever father says we'll we'll do then he was not convinced with me but somehow i i told him i convinced him i brought him to logos uh, not even one minute father at time because there was a huge queue we came for the divine mercy feast uh, we could not meet father the following week we came i think we uh, back in april i think so when i was in queue then i was praying to god and holy spirit that father has to know my problem because i don't have much time to tell the whole issues right so i told father father this is the background i want to go back to chennai please tell me if i have to go back to chennai or i will get a job so then he prayed over me and he said don't worry you'll get a job he didn't tell me anything else he said you will get a job that's all that 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 was a prayer but he prayed over me with the word i trusted and he said one more thing do divine mercy chaplet every day i went back home my husband said okay let's see if you are getting a job or not i prayed i every day i used to recite divine mercy uh, chaplet and rosary one fine day my husband supposed to attend an interview i somehow uh, got an opportunity to attend the same interview i went for the interview i was late for the interview and uh, i was the last candidate and in fact i did not do well in my interview but uh, i was the first one to be selected so they gave me the offer letter on the same day with a nominal increment i could not believe it happened within one week after uh, after father confirmed me within a month and then had to join and uh, it's not a uh, ordinary job i work at one of the big four and uh, the the promotion was delayed for me so i said father uh, i don't know he said don't worry about anything you keep on reciting divine mercy chaplet that's sufficient for you and then you do the personal prayer prayers and common prayer and then online uh, i used to do only these things and uh, last year august i got my promotion as well my children are promoted to the next class and then my husband he was asked to come from chennai to apply for a job in bangalore he was not confident he also got in very good company in chennai our uh, when we were jobless we had around 5 lakhs loan i don't know god has blessed us uh, you know in a various way i have a very big list so this is very important which i wanted to share the last one was my own studies uh, last year uh, students prayer i came father said whoever is doing a doctorate please come here if you are not able to finish your uh, research Uh, come with your synopsis or your papers submit it here definitely you will be able to complete i in fact i don't have a confident on me i told father i i am not at all confident that i'll be able to complete he said excellent spirit will restore you you will be able to complete this project that is the only trust i had with that i worked very hard since last one year i submitted my uh, thesis in december with that i was doing in masters in business analytics course which was sponsored by company my company and it was uh, the value of the course is 40000 us dollar and i i was able to do it with free of cost with god's blessing and that was very tough course i was able to complete that as well thank you jesus i am alin azmedo from mumbai actually i didn't know about logos i came to came to know to my friend so my legs were paining so much yesterday when i could not uh, when i came for retreat it was paining very badly i could not walk limping and i was limping and walking so second day of the retreat i was healed and even my stomach was little uh, heaviness so for that also i'm healed and i was feeling loneliness from loneliness also i'm healed thank you jesus praise the lord praise the lord i'm peter joseph fernandez from mumbai in fact i had a fall and then slowly slowly i develop a back pain on the lower c5 c6 and i couldn't walk i couldn't walk even this short distance i should take up and out to walk and then i couldn't sit for a long time for mass during mass couldn't get up and all 
So then uh, it happened last May. And then uh, the MRI report showed that I had to go for a surgery. So then my wife and we sat down and set a second opinion, what to do. Wife said, nothing doing. And even I said, no, no operation. We'll see. God can help, help us out. So I was due for retirement in the month of November. So I said, after that, I'll do my retreat somewhere, Tabor, or Porta, anyway. So then we decided to come to Logo. My wife said, why don't we go to Logo? And it was difficult to get booking also. So online we tried, and just the God's will, they say. Many are called, few are chosen. So maybe I was one of the one, and my wife and me both uh, got a flight ticket, and we came. The first day, we started. Second day, Father Joe announced that some one person with L5, L6, C5, C6 getting healed. And then I could literally feel that, you know, I'm not getting pain only. So then I claimed that I am healed. And today, I can walk, I can run, I can dance also. I was, you all saw me dancing. I couldn't do that. I couldn't bend. Now I can bend. Thank you, Jesus. Praise Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We adore you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We glorify you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We give you all glory and honor. We give you all glory and honor. Let's very gently close our eyes as we gather once again in the presence of the Lord. Let's experience His great mercy. Let's experience His great love has experiences that great joy that comes in our heart in the presence of the Lord. Isaiah chapter 43 verse 2 When you pass through the waters I will be with you and through the rivers they shall not overwhelm you. When, when you walk through the fire you shall not be burned and the flame shall not consume you. Psalm 16 11 says you make known to me the path of your life you make known to me the path of life in your presence there is fullness of joy at your right hand are pleasures forevermore let's gently close our eyes let's all close our eyes let's keep our hands open before us let's surrender once again everything into this into the loving hands of the Lord on this holy day, let's surrender all our brokenness, our tears, the storms, maybe the storms we are going through, the mountains that are ahead of us. Let's surrender because Jesus is there. He will stand beside uh, us every single moment. He is there forever. Let's surrender. It's like a storm that cuts apart. It breaks your will. It feels like that. When we are down and out, the only thing we can turn, the only person that we can turn to is our Lord at this moment, bringing all our tears, all these mountains, all the storms that we are going through, let's surrender. Let's forget everything this moment. You can place your hands in your hearts or just leave your hands open before you. Feel the mighty presence of the Lord. It's like a storm that cuts apart It breaks your will, it feels like that You think you're lost, but you're not lost On your own, you're not alone I will stand by you I will help you through When you've done all you can do I'm your Lord I will dry your eyes I will fight your fight I will hold you tight And I won't let go As once again we bring Jesus in front of our eyes 
and we bring the sacrifice that Jesus underwent the pain and suffering simply because today he could be he will be with us every single moment of our life i will stand by you i will help you through when you have done all that you can do and there is nothing more left but i am there i am your lord i will dry your eyes i will fight your fight i will hold you tight and i won't let you go let's believe in this beautiful promise as we sing this once again let's just surrender everything that we have to the lord let's give everything every trial every hurdle that is there in our life every tear that is there in our eyes let us offer it to the lord it's like a storm that cuts apart it breaks your will it feels like that you think you're lost but you're not lost on your road you're not alone i will stand by you i will help you through when you've done all you can do i'm your lord i will dry your eyes i will fight your fight i will hold you tight and i won't let go as we close our eyes let's meditate on these few words as we make it a small prayer jesus here i am lord in your holy presence lord take away everything that does not belong to you also lord take away our hurts our anxieties our pains our fears our sickness our toils jesus that are in vain lord it hurts my heart to see you cry i know it's dark this part of life oh it finds us all we are too small to stop the rain oh when it rains lord you will be beside me you will be there comforting me it hurts my heart to see you cry i know when stop this part of life find the soul oh we are too small to stop the rain oh when it rains i will stand by you i will help you through when you've done all you can do i'm your lord i will dry your eyes I will fight your fight I will hold you tight and I won't let go Let's believe this moment as we sit in this holy place let's experience this this great miracle of the Lord just walking into our lives touching us healing us making us whole wiping our tears taking away everything this is a moment to surrender this is a moment to worship the lord to glorify him for all the things that he has done in our life for all the good things that we have received oh lord we worship we glorify you you are everything to us yes lord you are everything to us the silence let's just surrender anything we'd like to give the lord just give it to the lord believe that he will walk into our lives he will make it whole all the darkness so when jesus comes is taken away because jesus is the light he will take away all those wipe away all those tears yes jesus it hurts my heart to see you cry i know it's dark this part of life or oh, it finds a soul 
We are too small to stop the rain. Oh, when it rains, I will stand by you. I will help you through. When you've done all you can do, I'm your Lord. I will dry your eyes. I will fight your fight. I will hold you tight and I won't let go. I will stand by you. I will help you through. When you've done all you can do, I'm your Lord. I will dry your eyes. I will fight your fight. I will hold you tight and I won't let go and I won't let go. Let's believe in this beautiful promise. Lord says, I won't let you go. I will be beside you. I will hold you. I will hold your hand. I will walk with you. And I won't let go. Let's believe as we tell Jesus, Jesus, I want you to walk into my life. I want you to hold my hand, Lord. I want you to be with my family all the time, Lord. Maybe a broken family, a prayerless family. Jesus, help us to praise you. Help us to worship and glorify you, Lord. Help us to be with you, Lord, every moment of our life. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. John 15, 5 says, I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me, you can do nothing. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Yes, Lord, without you, we can do nothing, absolutely nothing, Lord. All the good is in you, Lord. Lord, nourish us with your very life, Lord. Nourish us with your very presence, Lord. Be with us every moment. Once again, as we worship and glorify the Lord, let's tell the Lord, Jesus, I need you every moment of my life. Every single moment, Lord, I need you. In, and I want to find your presence, Lord, in the words that I speak, in the thoughts that come to my mind, in my relationships, among my friends, in the media that I use, Lord. I want to find your holy presence, Lord. Yes, my Lord. Lord, I come, I confess, bowing here, I find my rest. Without you, I'll fall apart. You're the one that guides my heart. Lord, I come, I confess, bowing here, I find my rest. Without you, I fall apart. You're the one that guides my heart. Every word, let, it make, let us make it a prayer. Let's tell Jesus, I need you, my Lord, every moment. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour, I need you. My righteousness, oh Lord, how I need you. Lord, I need you, oh, I need you. Every hour I need you. My one defense, my righteousness. Oh Lord, how I need you. Let's gently close our eyes. Let's all close our eyes. 
is a moment to speak to Jesus, to tell Jesus, Jesus, I need you. I need you every moment of my life, Lord. Help me to be with you every moment. Hold my hand, Lord, and walk with me. Speak to me, Lord. Jesus, guide me. You lead me, Lord. You lead me in everything, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. In this spiritual life of mine, Lord, as I walk this path, Lord, you be with me. Guide me, Lord. I need you. Every hour, I need you. Yes, Jesus. Every moment of my life, with every breath that I take, Lord, help me to find you, Lord. Lord, I come, I confess, bowing here, I find my rest. Without you, I fall apart, you're the one that guides my heart. Lord, I come, I Bowing here, I find my rest. Without you, I'll fall apart. You're the one that guides my heart. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. runs deep, your grace is more. Where grace is found is where you are, and where you are, Lord, I am free. Holiness is Christ in me. And this is our prayer, Jesus, today. Help us to be holy, Lord. Take away everything that is unholy. Wash us in that holy, that most holy blood of yours, Lord. Jesus, wash us. Wash our eyes, Lord. Wash our tongues. Wash our hands. Wash our feet. Wash those words of us, the words that we speak, Lord, the thoughts that come to our mind, Lord. Yes, Lord. Wash them, Lord. Jesus, here I am, Lord. Bless me. Bless my family, Lord. Where sin runs deep, your grace is more, your grace is found, is where you are, and where you are, Lord, I am free, holiness is Christ in me, where sin runs deep, your grace is more. Where grace is found is where you are, and where you are, Lord, I am free. Holiness is Christ in me, Lord, I need you, oh, I need you. Lord, I need you. 
righteousness, O God, how I need you. O God, how I need you. We just close our eyes for a moment and just speak to Jesus, O Lord, how I need you. How I need you every single moment of my life, Lord. Yes, Jesus, let's feel that mighty presence of the Lord. Let's invite the Holy Spirit this moment. Let's ask Jesus, oh Jesus, send down your power, Lord. Send down the power of your Holy Spirit, Lord, to help us to do what is right, Lord. Yes, pour out your Spirit, Lord. Pour out your mercy, your love, your compassion through the power of your Holy Spirit, Lord. So very gently, let's place our hands open. Feel the presence of the Lord. Feel the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Speak to the Holy Spirit. Call upon the Holy Spirit this moment. As we close our eyes, call upon the Holy Spirit in our families, in our situations, in our sickness, in our pain, in our tears. Call the Holy Spirit. Ask the Holy Spirit, O oh Holy Spirit, anoint me. Anoint me with your mercy. Anoint me with your love, your compassion, your joy. Pour out your spirit. Pour out your spirit. Pour out your spirit. Tone me. Jesus, pour out your spirit, pour out your spirit, pour out your spirit on me. Be very free. You can keep your hands open, keep it on your heart. Just speak to the Holy Spirit. Forget every person who's beside you. Remove every other thought from your mind. Just call upon the Holy Spirit greatly desire the Holy Spirit to be a part of your life, to be the very breath of your life. Let's once again earnestly pray for the Holy Spirit. Pour out your spirit, pour out your spirit, pour out your spirit, Don't Pour out your spirit, pour out your spirit, pour out your spirit on me. Spirit move in your temple, spirit move in my life, spirit raise our hands very gently this moment we are going to take the name of Jesus whatever comes into your heart thank you Jesus praise you Jesus whatever comes into your heart just call upon the name of Jesus just say thank you Jesus we love you Jesus we adore you Jesus thank you Lord thank you Jesus thank you Lord you are our Savior Jesus you are our healer you are our deliverer you are our Redeemer Jesus Jesus we give you all glory Jesus 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 we give you all glory Jesus we worship you Jesus we glorify you Jesus we give you all the glory and honor all worship belongs to you Jesus, all adoration belongs to you. 
Let's worship the Holy Spirit this moment. Let's take upon the name of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we love you. Holy Spirit, we worship you. Holy Spirit, we glorify you. Oh, Holy Spirit, we love you. We worship you. We glorify you. Oh, Holy Spirit, you are our everything. You are our strength. Oh, Holy Spirit, anoint us, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, Pour out your spirit, pour out your spirit, pour out your spirit on me. Jesus, pour out your spirit, pour out your spirit, pour out your spirit on me. continue to close our eyes for a moment in this beautiful day a day of silence a day of traveling deep into us let's also strive to listen to God speaking into our heart Elijah on Mount Carmel did not hear the voice of God in the rushing of the wind he did not hear God's voice in a mighty thunder but in a silent whisper let's tune your hearts to listen to God's word and let God's word bring us the transformation that we are all looking for and we also seek the help of our dear mother to be with us may your mother Mary help us to receive the word as she received the word So dear brothers and sisters, today we continue our theme on the mystery of salvation from Adam to Christ. We meditated on various aspects of this salvic power right from morning. For this afternoon session, the word of God that we have taken for our meditation is from Romans chapter 5 and verses 16. Let it to the Romans chapter 5 and verse 16. And the free gift is not like the effect of one man's sin. For the judgment following one trespass brought condemnation, but the free gift flowing many trespasses brings justification. You know, the, the topic we are going to meditate is law of sin affecting all of us and how the law of grace and effective through faith in Jesus Christ for all of us. What do you mean by that? So we all know once man's sin brought trespass to everyone. Let's go back to Romans chapter 5 verse 12 and 13. That will give us a better idea to understand the topic we are meditating on. Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man, and death came through sin so that death spread to all because all have sinned. Let's hold on here. Probably it's very difficult for many people to understand that. How can one man's sin affect the entire creation? Is it possible? Yes or no? Yeah, he's saying, how do we know that? Okay, dear brothers and sisters, you know, this is something that we need to understand a little more deeply so that we understand what Jesus did to every one of us. We all know this is what we call as original sin. One man's sin bringing condemnation for all. How can one man's sin affect every one of us? To understand that, let's go back into creation history itself. In whose image and likeness were we created? Okay, God, that's a very, you know, everybody knows that. Let's read that also. Genesis chapter 1 and verses 26, let's read, 26 onwards. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness. Can we go to 28, 28? God blessed them 
okay, maybe one verse earlier also, 27 we will go. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of all created them male and female. So we have two things here, image and likeness. What do you mean by an image and what do you mean by a likeness? First of all, we have to be clear about that in order to understand how spin spread to every one of us. It says two things here, image and likeness. Okay, now, image is something that we can see. Suppose, um, maybe you have children, sister. Okay, if somebody looks at you and tells your child, daughter or son, I don't know who it is, is looking like you, that means what? There is a resemblance of something in you and them when people look at us. Likeness is something. Suppose this brother is walking and I walk behind him and he says he's walking like him. So that means there's some kind of a, a, a character of him which I am imitating. Now, in a broader aspect, when you understand this image and likeness, there is an image all of us were created in. That image is the image of God. Now, what is that image of God? Does God have an image? Then what is this image, brother? He's very clear. God doesn't have an image. Yeah, okay. Let's not go deep into it. So that will take us in a different direction. Um, God doesn't have a physical image, but he has a spiritual image. That means the image that all of us were created was a spiritual image of God. To understand that, let's go back to Genesis chapter 3. After man committed sin, what happened to him? Let's read Genesis chapter 3 and verses 7. Let's read that. Genesis 3, 7. You can all read it from the screen if you want to. Then the eyes were open and they knew they were naked. Okay, let's stop it there. Let's hold on there. Two things here. The eyes were open. If their eyes are open only now, till then how were they looking? How did they see everything till then? Spiritualized, okay. So that means they had a spiritualized, am I right? It also says something. And they knew they were naked. What were they wearing before that? Nothing. They did not realize they were naked, brother. A difficult, no? To answer this question. He's thinking, whatever you ask is difficult, brother. <laughs> See, the problem is, that means what? Suddenly, they realized a physical image. That's why they saw it was naked. Am I right? So before that, they could see only a spiritual image in them. They could see the, through the eyes of God. They had the image of God, which is nothing but spiritual image. But then their eyes are open. They lost the spiritual image. And therefore, they could make the human image. So the first thing they lost was the image of God. Do you understand that? Likeness of God. What is likeness of God? What is God? Likeness of God is the, um, maybe let's put it as the character or the nature of God. What is the nature of God? Love, okay then. Holiness is the right answer, I would say. Yeah, well, love is all a part of it, okay. Whatever you want to call it, love, holiness or something. So they lost the image of God. Man became unholy. Now let me tell you, in what image are they in now? A physical image. Clear about it? What uh, likeness are they in? A sinful likeness. Sin is there in them. Clear about it now? Now, where does the child get all the nutrients from? Okay, sister. From the mother, am I right? From the mother. You said your daughter is looking like you. From where did she get all the features from? Mother, father, okay, DNA, whatever you want to call it. Scientifically, you can call it DNA or something like that. Am I right? Let's take it simply from the mother, am I right? Now, what is the image of Eve, Adam and Eve now? What is their image now? I just now told you. A physical image and not a spiritual image. What is their likeness now? Sinful nature, not a holy nature. Am I right? Now, every child born from that has to be born in an image of a human nature, an image of an unholy likeness. Am I right? So can any human being be in the image of God now once again? In, in that situation. Okay. In whose image and likeness were we created? 
Tell me, you know, something. Whose image and likeness have we created? God's image. What is the image of God, sister? Ah, Genesis 1.27, he created human beings' image and likeness. Can we go to Genesis chapter 5 and verses 4? Okay, one verse earlier, 5.3. When Adam had lived 130 years, he became the father of a son in his likeness according to his image. Hold it there. Sister, she's writing down now. <laughs> Whose image were we created? Okay, in general we say that. I'm not saying no. Adam was created in that image, am I right? But after he fell, did he have that image of God anymore? No. Did he have the likeness of God anymore? No. Adam's son was created in whose image? Can you read that verse and tell me now? What nature is that? A fallen nature. Now tell me, because of that, are all in sin now? Yes or no? That's why it says, one man trespassed, all of us became sinners. Let's read that once again. When Adam had lived 130 years, he became the father of, of a son in his likeness and his image. So that's what is the fallen nature of man. That's why it says one man's sin brought condemnation for everyone. Praise the Lord. Yes, sister? Yes, sister Abel? He can always become innocent because he still have a communion with God. You can always do that. So now I'll ask you, sister, I'm going out of the door, but I'll answer your question. When you were baptized, whose image were you gained to once again into? Image of God. That's why we call we are in the image of God. Nothing wrong in the answer you gave, but we must understand the process of it. Sister, you're in the image of God. Am I right? Yes or no? Can you commit sin? So you're still prone to that. Am I right? Now Adam, sorry, Abel is not in the image of God at that point of time. Am I right? Still, can he do good? Yes or no? Can a non-baptized person still go do good? So Adam, can, Abel can do that. Do you understand that? That's what we need to understand this thing. So therefore, ultimately, it boils down to our relationship with God. That's what is important here. Okay, that's something that we need to understand this very clearly. Can we go back to Romans chapter 5 verse 12 and then we'll read 13. Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man. Remember that. That's the key here. Sin came through one man. And death came through sin. So that death spread to all because all have sinned. So therefore, even without committing that original sin, we are an original sin. Leave about the other transgressions that we commit afterwards. Leave that alone. All of us are an original sin, born in original sin. Sister, even without committing a sin, you are in sin. Am I right? I gave the example of, brother, you're still with me in the bike? Oh, you're still there. I'm the pillion rider. No? Okay, fine. We'll continue with that. So, you're the one who are riding the bike. Okay? You cross, jump the signal. I'm sitting behind you. Am I also a party to it now? Though I'm not the one who actually did it, I also crossed the signal. Am I right? Therefore, everybody in the same bike have crossed it. So therefore, even without me committing a sin, I am in original sin because of the trespass of one man. And that's what we call us. And Jesus came to took away the sin of the world. What sin? That sin, particular sin. That's what we need to understand this very, very clearly here. Can we go to the next verse now? Let's read that also. Sin was indeed in the world before the law, but sin is not recognized where there's no law. Just hold on here. It says, sin was in the world before the law came into effect. Now, um, what is sin? Ah, that's a very general term, sister. Now, what the Bible says, you should know that, no? Okay, 1 John chapter 3 verses 4. First letter of St. John, chapter 3 and verses 4. Can we read that? Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. Therefore, sin means breaking the law of God. You understand that? Now, what was the, 
when was the law or the commandment given? Ah, at the time of Moses, am I right? So before that, there was no commandments, brother. Are we clear? Then how can there be sin if sin is breaking the law of God? Oh, one commandment he gave, no? Genesis 2.16, the Lord God commanded the man not to eat from that tree. Okay, that commandment is over, sister. Adam ate that. But what about Abel? Okay, I'll ask you this question. Cain committed a murder. Is it a sin? Only in the fifth commandment, God told Moses, do not commit murder. Okay, the tree we will leave to Adam and Eve now. How did that become a sin then? What? God did not tell him not to kill, no? At that time. No, no, I'm not saying it's wrong. This is where we need to understand this part very clearly. Am I right? Okay, now I'll tell you. Again, coming back, brother. Bike, you're still in the bike, okay? Okay? There's a signal there. Okay? Red light. You're not supposed to go. Suppose there's a man who does not know that uh, crossing the red light is, is, uh, is breaking the law. He does not know that. And he crosses the signal. Is he wrong or right? He does not know, brother. He don't know, so it's not sin. So, sister, okay, I'll come to that. So he's crossing and going. Other side is the green light. So the bike is coming fast. He hits him and he dies. Whose mistake is it? The one coming from the red or coming from the green? But you said it's not right. It's okay. He does not know you told, no? Whether he knows or not, the consequence is the same. Am I right? Whether he knows... I'll give you three situations, sister. Let's be clear about it. One man knows red light he's suppo not supposed to go. So he stops there. This fellow on the green side comes and goes fast. Nothing happened there. Perfect. Another man knows that he should stop. But still he crosses and goes and he's hit by this bike. We know he did mistake, am I right? The third man, he does not know he should stop, but still he goes and he also gets hit. What do you say now? That is the first one, we are all clear about that. The second and third? The second knows and he's breaking it, am I right? But the first one, although he does not know, still the consequence of that is the same. Therefore, all of us, in spite of not knowing what is the original sin, I enter this world, the consequence of original sin, which is death, is there in everyone. He'll die, sister. He cannot say, I do not know. He's already dead by now. You understand that? Yes. So therefore, this is what we call as the consequence of original sin. Everybody, whether you did it or you don't did it, we are all in it because of the sin of man. That's called above. That's the consequence of that. That's what we... Can you go back to... Um, Romans 5.13. Sin was indeed in the world before the law. Sister, that's what I'm saying. Sin was there. Law was not there. But the sin was there. Because of one man. The red light is there. Just because I know or I don't know doesn't matter. It's there. Yes, sister? We are not dealing with Lucifer, sister. We are dealing with humankind now. Salvation is for humankind. And I'm coming to the second part of this. How Jude reaches that. One man's act of righteousness is saving us somebody. Let's not leave about him. <laughs> Why want to discuss about him now? So this is what, but sin is not recognized where there is no law. Sister, coming back to you. So the second, third man, you cannot say he committed a mistake because he does not know. But the consequence is the same. You understand that? So that's what we need to understand that. Whether we know or we don't know. Whether we commit or not, we are all sinners. That's what this is, you know? That's what it says today's topic. Law of sin affects all without going, doing sin. So even without a doing that sin, this man, third man, did not commit a sin because he does not know. Am I right? But then the consequence of that is the same. And that's what this is, you know, every one of us, none of us have committed the original sin. Sister, that one commandment, Genesis 2 16, you shall not eat from that tree. Did you eat from the tree? I also did not eat, sister. But the consequence of that is there for you and me. 
You understand that? So that is what it is. And now, this, as you said, all the child gets all the nutrients from the mother. Am I right? Therefore, the nature of man, which is a fallen nature, is come into every one of us. We are all born in the fallen nature. But only through baptism we are reincorporated in the body of Christ. Okay, that part we will come later. But this is what actually it is. Can we also go to uh, verses 20 in this chapter, Romans 5.20? I think Father must have dealt with this morning. Okay. But law came in with the result that trespasses multiplied. The sin increased, grace abounded all the more. Um, when you go back to um, 5.16, we read, no, okay, let's go back to verses 17 and 18 now. That gives us a clearer picture. Because of one man trespass, death exercised dominion through that one man, much more surely will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness exercise his dominion in life through one man, Jesus Christ. Next verse. Therefore, just as one man's trespass led to condemnation for all, one man's act of righteousness leads to justification and life for all. So that's the point we are meditating. Not the sin of Lucifer, no. <laughs> this is what we are going to focus on. Therefore, this is exactly what it says. Therefore, we are we into that, we come into that. This is what God did. He took upon entire thing, all these things. The misery of humankind was upon us. As I told you in the morning, all this misery is because of that. Sister, we lost the image and likeness, am I right? If, if I, what do you mean by, let's come back to your, you and your daughter, just again an example. If your daughter is not looking like you, general terms, huh? don't take it practically. She's looking at someone else. In simple terms, people may not that know that she's your daughter, am I right? She may know, they think there's a stranger here, am I right? In other words, they will think the relationship is not exist. In the Garden of Eden, man was the prototype of God. He was the representation of God in this world. That's called the economy of salvation. He was, you know, um, the Bible says God stopped working after he created man. Am I right? Then how to provide for man after that? Entire creation has to be provided, no? Then why? If God doesn't work, who will provide for you and me? We sing, no. Yehovah Jaira, you are my provider. We sing that song, no? How does he do that? So everything that God wants to do, he wants to do through you and me. Through man, he wants to work. So we become the likeness of the prototype of God. Therefore, once again, we need that relationship with God. Relationship is lost. But it says, one man's act of righteousness. Now, what is that righteousness that has to be established now? There are two things important here in general. Number one, what has to be done? What's the cause of us fall? What happened first? What is that called as? Sin, I told you, no? So I told you, sister, I told you the consequence, that man has to face the consequence of that. So that consequence of sin has to be taken upon by someone else. Clear? Now, number two, restoration of relationship. Now, when he says, one man's act of righteousness leads to justification for all, what does it mean? Jesus is, becomes that righteousness and that justification for you and me. Let me explain this. Let me explain this to you, simple way. Um, okay, when God created the world, who had authority over the world? Can you come here, no? Can you come? Simply get up and come and don't worry. No, no, there only. Don't have to come up. This is my rosary. I'm giving it to you. This is for you. What's your name? Ar Ar Arunav. Okay. Arunav. Now, who's at, whose rosary is that? I'm asking them, not you. You keep going. I gave it to him. Hey, hey turn your man. Don't look at it. I gave it to you. This is for you. Use it. Whose is it now? His. I gave it to him. Though it came from me. Am I right? So God created everything and gave it to the hands of man. That's what Psalms chapter 8, verses 6 alone we will read. Hold on there. Huh? Psalms 8, 6. You have given them dominion with the works of your hand. You put all things under their feet. Whose feet? Man's feet. When you read from 4 onwards, it clearly says that. So every authority is them. Am I right? Yes or no? Also come, no? 
you also come no simply come don't worry you trick him and take it away from him how easily he gave it off here I told him, trick it and take it him. The fellow is turning and give it to him. This is exactly what man did in the Garden of Eden. He gave all authority in the hands of the devil. Who has authority now? That's why he said in the mountain of temptation to Jesus Christ, all authority has been given to me. Who gave it to him? Adam. Not a God, sister. Adam gave it to him. God gave it to Adam. Adam gave it to evil one. Am I right? Now God wants to restore it. Am I right? Okay, let's continue this drama for a moment. I said, through one man's act of righteousness, there is a restoration of everything. Am I right? One man's act, condemnation for all. So Jesus, through faith in Jesus Christ, I will come to that in a moment. Now there should be a restoration. Okay? Now, Satan, his, his demand is only, death is his only demand. Okay? Number one, I have to read, return it for you. Let's read uh, 1 Peter chapter 1 verses 18. 1 Peter 1 18. 1 Peter 1 18 and 19. Okay. You know that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your ancestor. Okay. Before that, just hold on here. Sister, suppose I kidnap you. Or let's take somebody else. I kidnap this fellow. Hey, don't get up and come. He's ready to come. Please do that. Can he pay the ransom? Why he cannot pay, brother? Yeah, more importantly, doesn't have, okay, I'll kidnap you. Can you pay the ransom? I'm not saying pray, sister. Ransom, pay, pay, not pray, pay. Can you pay? Why? Because you're the captive, am I right? How can a captive pray? Therefore, all of us, because of originals and we are all captives, can any of you pay for yourself? So in order for ransom to pay, that person should not be a child of Adam. He should not be a captive. Tell me who is the only one who is not a child of Adam, who is not a captive. Who is the only one? So if Jesus had not come for a ransom for you and me, we will have to be in our captivity. That's what's a one man's act of righteousness. Okay, I will come to that. I will finish this drama first. Okay, first thing we have to pay a ransom for him. Okay, go back 1 Peter 1 18. For you know the generous act of our Lord. Okay. You know that you were ransomed from the futile base inherited from your ancestor. What did we inherit from Adam? Who is our ancestor? Adam. Tell me you know something. You are saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. But tell me you know who is our ancestor? Hello, who is your ancestor? Tell that loudly, you know, Adam. So what did you inherit from him, from Adam? Sin. It says, you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your ancestor, not with silver or gold, next verse, but through the precious blood of Jesus Christ. So, Jesus paid the ransom. Am I right? Number two, can we go to Hebrews 9.12? Hebrews 9.12. He entered once and for the holy places, not with blood but of goats and calves, but his own blood, thus obtaining eternal redemption. Number one, he paid the ransom. Number two, once and for all he paid. Sister, you don't have to pay. Whatever has to be paid is paid by one man's act of righteousness. Okay? So two things here. Ransom is paid, eternally paid. Third thing is justification. Go back to Romans 5.18. Therefore, just as one man's trespass led to condemnation for all, one man's act of righteousness leads to justification. What is justification? What to fulfill the demand of what one is asked? What is the demand of Satan? Death. Am I right? So justification means what? Jesus is ready to pay that. 1992 of the Catechism of the Catholic Church says the justification of Jesus merited um, you know, mercy for you and me. On the cross, you know what happened? The mercy of God and the justice of God is meeting. What is justification, brother, here in this case? Death. Am I right? Yes or no? So Jesus took the death upon himself. Am I right? And what did he give you and me? Mercy. Do you understand that? So now look at me. Ransom is paid. Once and for all is paid. Justification is also done. Has Satan any right over the, us anymore? No, no. 
then you give it and go back. You go back, you stand there. You stand there, my sister, I'm not finished with them as yet. Okay, God settled with Satan, am I right? Let's go back to Colossians chapter 2, verse 14 and 15. In the morning, I told you that. You hold on, men. Colossians 2, 14 and 15. Erasing the red God that stood against us with his legal demands, he set it aside, nailing to the cross. Next verse. He disarmed the rulers and authorities, made a public example of them, triumphing over it. That's what he did. He demolished the Satan, am I right? On the cross. But what about the relationship between man and God? What about between you and me? I gave the rosary for you to pray, but you gave it off to him, am I right? So is our relationship all right? So therefore, man has to set right his relationship with God. So can you do that, brother? How, sister? Ah, praying. Generally for everything praying, you say, I want a practical exam, you know, way for it. I'll give you. First of all, what did he commit when he gave that to him? What is it called as? Sin. Am I right? So what has God got to do now? Man committed sin. What has God got to do now? For Redeem is the general thing. How to do that? Forgive. So he has to forgive his son. Am I right? That forgiveness is happening through Jesus Christ. Ephesians 1.7. Let's go to that. If in him we have the redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses. Okay, now, forgiveness is over. Am I right? Is it okay? Is it enough? Sister, I fought with you. Then I say, I forgive you. Is it enough? What should happen between you and me? Reconcile. Who's that? Yeah, reconciliation is required. Am I right? That reconciliation is also happening through what Jesus did. Colossians chapter 1 verses 19 and 20. 20 alone we will read. Colossians 1 20. And through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things. Look at this. So reconciliation is over between man and God. Okay. Second thing is over. Is that enough? When man committed sin, he went far away from God. He has to be brought near. Remember when Adam committed sin, what did he do? He went away and hid himself. Am I right? God did not run away from man. Man ran away from God. Now they have to be brought closer. Am I right? That is also happening through Jesus Christ. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2 and verses 13. But now in Christ Jesus, you were once far off, have been brought near by the blood. So sister, you brought near to God. I'll give you one more example. In the Old Testament, where was the presence of God? Ah, where was the Ark of the Covenant? It was in the temple. Where in the temple was it? In the Holy of Holies. Could anyone enter into it? No. Can anyone see it? No, a curtain was covering. That means we did not have access to God in the Old Testament. Am I right? But when Jesus died on the cross, what happened? Why, brother? You said it went off. Why? No tailor to stitch it, no? Why? Because now man has an access to God. No need of curtain anymore, sister. Because Jesus entered once and for all by his own blood. So do you need that curtain anymore? So you have access to God, am I right? So if, I, if you have access to me, is our relationship all right now? Yes or no? Thank you, go sit now. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that's very good, you told me. I'll come back to you in a moment. Now, now tell me, who has made our relationship with God perfect now? Jesus, am I right? Who did everything? Who did everything? Come on, tell me. Uh, God, Jesus, who did everything? Can you tell me that please loudly? There are about maybe 60, 70 people here. I, why you hesitate and confess the name of Jesus, I don't know. Who did that for you and me? So you didn't do anything, sister. That's why it says, one man's act of righteousness. Not my righteousness, not your righteousness, but one man's act of righteousness. Everything that was needed to make us all right with God was done by Jesus Christ. Do we know that? Yes, we all knew that. Am I right? Sister, all this is over, no, 2,000 years back. What to do now? It has to be effective in our life today. That effectiveness today is happening also Christ. 
What did you tell me? When I asked him, is your relationship with me all right? What did you tell me? Only if you believe. Am I right? Therefore, God has done what he has to do. But you and I have to believe. That's why it says, faith in Jesus Christ merits righteousness for all. We don't have to do any righteous. That doesn't mean we have to be in sin. What I'm trying to tell you is, whatever act of righteousness we do, that is not enough. We can never do what is required. Therefore, we need to depend on someone, unite with someone who has already done everything for me. I paid the fine for you, brother. In the morning, I paid fine for you. Remember, how much? I better go, give it to me when I go out. Huh? <laughs> okay, so I already paid for you, no? That's what I told you that. That's the act of righteousness. I've done that. I did not cheat the law, but I fulfilled the demands of the law. Jesus did that. He fulfilled everything for you and me. Another question for me, I'll tell you brothers and sisters, why this is so important. So do you believe that only Jesus' act of righteousness can save you and me? Do you believe that at least? Okay, we all believe that. Now, can't he be God and save us? Why has he become man to save you and me? It says one man's act of righteousness. It doesn't say God's righteousness. What do you prefer? Him to be God and save you and me or to become man like you and me and save to you and me? Man. Why? Okay, I'll give you an example, brother. Okay? Let's take an example. Brother, you're walking on the road and you fall into a pit. Somebody has to put their hand and lift you up. Okay? You have our friend there and that boy there. Both of them are walking. Can you stand up, brother? Can you also stand up, man? No, not you, sister. So now, two of them are there. One of them has to put the land and lift you up. Who do you prefer? This fellow or that fellow? Why here? Ah, look at the size. Look at him. So who do you prefer to save you? God or man? Let God save you and me. So why he has to become man? It says one man's act of righteousness. The humanity of Jesus Christ did everything for you and me. He did it through our human nature, all these things. That's what I'm trying to tell you. You know Why? So, uh, thank you. Thank you. Sit down. You know why? So, what, what was the demand of Satan? Misery of humankind. Am I right? So, someone has to take the entire misery of humankind upon himself. If Jesus remains of God, can give, Satan give all the problem? So, son of God had to become son of man so that taking the misery of humankind upon himself can set you in free. The Catechism of the Catholic Church, 2448. Let me read it for you. 2448 says like this. 2448 says, in its various form, material deprivation, unjust oppression, physical and psychological illness and death, human misery is the obvious sign of inherited condition of feridity and need of salvation in which man finds himself as a consequence of original sin. Once again, let me read for you. In its various form, whatever misery it is, physical, psychological, material, sickness, whatever it is, Human misery is the obvious sign of inherited condition and needs for salvation which man finds as a consequence of original sin. That's what I'm trying to tell you from that beginning. Clear now? This case is, this misery elicited the compassion of Christ the Savior who willingly took it upon himself. Sister, how did he set you free? By taking your misery upon himself. That's the act of righteousness. What do you mean by act of righteousness? Without sin, taking the sin of somebody else upon himself. That's the act of righteousness. It's easy to say, act of right. What is that righteousness that Jesus did? Having no sin, being without sin, he became sin for you and me. That's the act of righteousness. Adam, even though I didn't commit a sin, I've inherited the sin of Adam, I explained to you. Now, even though I don't do anything, I inherited the salvation won for me by Jesus Christ, by his act of righteousness, simply by believing in him. Believing in him, that's what he said. Unless I believe, I won't know that. You have to believe in that. That's what it's all about. Can we go back to uh, Romans chapter 5 verse 16? Romans 5 verse 16. And the free gift is not like the effect of one man's sin. 
Look at this. The free gift is not that for the judgment following one trespass brought condemnation, but the free gift of, fo of gift following many trespasses brings justification. How do you do that? It says it's, it's not like that they automatically we get it. You understand that? What does this word of God say? Automatically because of the sin of Adam we all inherited. But the righteousness of Jesus Christ does not come automatically to you and me. We need to come on, tell me that. Believe and accept it. That's a difference. That's a difference. So that's the only thing. That's why when Jesus told Nicodemus, let's go back to that. We read that two, three times, but it doesn't matter. We go back to that. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. Let's read the next verse also. Verse 17. Indeed, God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Next verse also. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are already condemned because they have not believed in the name of the only son of God. Very clearly it says that. Therefore, that is merited to us. That's the act of righteousness. Therefore, dear brothers and sisters, today, today you know, as we have completed the you know, Good Friday, the death of Jesus Christ, we need to share the resurrection of Christ. That's the glory. He rose again victoriously. Can we also read uh, Matthew 20, 28? Just as the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give up his life as a ransom for many. So that's the death of Jesus Christ brought the ransom for you and me. That paid the ransom for you and me. After this, Jesus is resur resurrecting gloriously. His resurrection is also for you and me. Dear right, brothers and sisters, today if I want to be a part of the resurrection of Christ, live in the glory of God, we need to accept the righteousness that God earned for you and me through His passion, death and resurrection. That's what it says. One man, whatever does it matter, we are all sinners because of one man. There's no choice for you and me. You, we cannot say, I did not commit the sin. We were a part of it because that's the nature that we have incorporated. But the moment I'm, I'm incorporated in the body of Christ, that is through baptism, I once again am incorporated in the body of Christ. And that for that, faith in that will make me understand that. That's very important to understand that. And not only that, not only a redemption, it also gives us a total acceptance to everything else. Even for our, even this, when I say about that righteousness, it is not only for eternal life, that relationship. Even our day-to-day -day things are taken by Jesus Christ. Let's take a few problems, day-to-day -day problems which you have. What is the first one we have? Common problem most of us face. Ah, okay. Let's come to finances also. 2 Corinthians 8, 9. Let's read that. I thought finance will come third or fourth. Straight away, first of all, she wants finance. Okay. <laughs> Let's read that. 2 Corinthians 8, 9. For you know the generous act of our Lord Jesus Christ, though he was rich, yet for his sake he became poor, so that by his poverty you may become rich. So the, what is the righteousness he earned? Even our poverty took upon himself. That's why Paul says in Philippians 4.19, what did he say? My God shall supply all my needs according to the riches in Christ Jesus. So Anandita, where's all your financial blessing? In Christ Jesus. Yes, everything is there in him already. Because he has earned it by his righteousness. Every poverty that Satan brought in the world, Jesus has turned it into a abundance. It's with him. In him there is a fullness of all this richness. Therefore, the moment I believe in him and I unite myself with him, that misery of financial problems taken away. What's the second common problem? What's the second problem? Selena, do you want to say something? Health, okay, very good. Very important, no? Health, I think 99 people will agree with that on the health. Am I right? Okay, 1 Peter 2, 24. We all know this word of God. Am I right? Now, sister, let's read it fully now. That's where we make a mistake. Yeah, okay, it's there. 1 Peter 2, 24. 
yeah jesus took away our sins i absolutely agree with you all our sickness is taken by jesus christ but there's something else to that okay he himself bore our sins in our body so that part if sickness is because of sin who took it upon himself jesus took it but then we have a responsibility you know what is that faith read that sister two points are given there free from sin living for righteousness am i right that's my responsibility i have to live a life free of sin am i right and i have to live in righteousness whose righteousness righteousness of god so we told you one man's act of righteousness if this healing demands a righteousness not the righteousness of my own but that of jesus christ so what i have to do unite myself with christ second problem solved brother any other problem common problem don't tell your personal grievances here huh family sister act 16 31 what did it say believe in the lord jesus you will be saved you and your family will be saved am i right so you believe sister your faith in jesus christ can bring that salvation to your entire family zakeus family what happened i told this in the morning but many of you were not there when zakeus came down what did jesus tell him today salvation has entered this household i gave the example of noah i'll give it to you once again can we read um genesis 7 1 let's listen to that carefully Genesis 7:1 Then the Lord told said to Noah get into the ark you and your sister read it no please is there on the screen read it sister read it loudly can you see that okay those who can see can read it please sister only Noah was righteous not the wife of noah i don't know bible does not record that not the sons of noah not the daughter in laws of noah who was righteous only noah that righteousness what is that righteousness i told you righteousness of so sister like noah you become righteous through the righteousness of jesus christ your entire family will be saved clear family problem also solved now one man's act of righteousness bring us not only eternal life what else any other problem huh addictions we need deliverance there sister am i right she said addiction no yes it's a work of satan every addiction is work of satan do you believe that so you need deliverance mark chapter 1 verse 23 onwards we will read mark 123 onwards Just then there was a synagogue a man with an unclean spirit when he saw Jesus mark 123 onwards it's okay just listen to it it's a long passage i will tell you what it is there let it come on the screen a little later jesus is entering into capernaum is entering a synagogue the bible says just then there was in the synagogue a man with an unclean spirit he cried out why have come here jesus of nazareth have you come to destroy us what did jesus tell him get out of him yeah go next verse brother 24 what have you do with the jesus of nazareth have you come to destroy us i know who you are the holy one of god next verse but jesus said to him rebuked him say be silent come out of him sister through the righteous see jesus telling come out of him am i right just by telling come out of him will satan come out of you and me so what do you need for that righteousness if i am not righteous how can i command someone who is not righteous to come out of him therefore i have to be righteous for that I know I cannot merit that righteousness on my own through the righteousness of Jesus Christ he has given that righteousness to me so in the name of Jesus Christ I can set that addiction free done sister anything else any other problem phone switch off the phone sister addiction i told you addiction to everything that's what i'm saying all addictions i'm not telling which all addictions that's also an addiction no so what i'm trying to tell you is all addictions we cannot know which all addictions now <laughs> what to do what else health finance family addictions over some people are worried about curses also family curse all the summer right can we read galatians 3:13 
Christ redeemed him from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, curse is everyone who hangs on the tree. Every curse upon you and me is taken by Jesus Christ. So through the righteousness of Jesus Christ, you and I can live without any curses in this world. No curse can affect you and me. You know why? Righteousness of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Now people are thinking, what problem to tell now? <laughs> All problems are over. Okay, let's summarize it. No, summarize everything. Can we go back to Galatians chapter 2, verses 13, 14, and 15? We will read together. Let's read from 13. Colossians 2, 13 onwards. Colossians, brother, not Galatians. Colossians. Colossians 2, 13 to 15. And when you were dead in the trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive together with him, when he forgave all our trespasses. Let's hold on here for a moment. God made you an alive together with him. Am I right? So can I become alive without Jesus Christ? No. That's what he says. One man's act of righteousness. Because of the righteous act of Jesus Christ. I am alive today. Because of that. We are able to celebrate Easter. Because of what Jesus did on Good Friday. For you and me. That's his act of righteousness. And because of that, what happened? Every other authority was demolished. That's what we need to do. The problem is, okay, let me finish with five minutes. The only issue here is, we know without Christ, we can do nothing. Am I right? But is that Christ there with you and me today? Say something, no? Yes or no? Some of you are no. Whatever we say, he's going to say something else. <laughs> is he there with you, brother? I don't know. He's saying, of course. You don't even know I was sitting behind you. <laughs> okay, see, is there Christ with you today? I don't know. I'm not, I don't know. I'm not doubting or questioning of you. But just let's examine for a few minutes. You know, one day Jesus was in the boat with his disciples. Am I right? And he was sleeping. Why was he sleeping? We can read either uh, Mark 4 or Luke 4, 8. We can read that. Mark 4, 38 or Luke 8, 24. One of that we can read. Mark 4.38 or Luke 8.24. Any, any one we will read. You don't have to look at the screen. You can tell me. He was sleeping. Why was he sleeping? Tired. Huh? Sister, you're a Catholic, no? Catholics have by hearted two, three psalms. You know that? Which are the psalms you by hearted? 91, okay. Then? 121. Who said 121? Somebody said one. Sister, what 121 says? He never sleeps. He never slumbers. What are you saying? He was tired and sleeping. Okay. Let's take your... Let's take it. Human being must have been tired. Okay. Now, uh, suppose you have worked for three days and three nights together. You're very tired. Next day morning, we both are traveling in a car. I am driving the car. You are in the passenger seat. Will you sleep? Of course you will sleep because you're tired. But if we keep on talking to you, you'll be irritated, of course. But you cannot sleep. Am I right? Mr. Jesus might have been tired, but there are 12 other apostles with him. Still he's sleeping. That means what? None of them were speaking to him. Maybe Jesus is there with you, but am I in a relationship with Christ? That's what we need to examine. I, I'm, not, I, I'm not judging any of you. We have to you know, introspect and see ourselves. Where are we today? We all say Jesus is with us, but am I communicating with him? When I say communication, a constant relationship with him. Okay, I'll just give one example for you to understand that. We know the parable of the lost sheep, I know. You know that? Yes or no? How many sheep were there? Hundred. One gets lost. The shepherd leaves the 99 in the wilderness and goes after the one. Which is important, hundred or one? Anybody for 99? Sister, suppose you have a hundred, two thousand rupees note with you. One flies out of this door. Will you leave the 99 here and go after that one? But you said nine, one is important. Be clear. Okay, let's leave the mathematics alone. 100 minus 1 is how much? I didn't go to school, so I don't know. Sure? Are you sure? Okay, any teachers here? A lot of teachers. Oh, you're a teacher. Very good. 100. Minus of that one. What do you have there? Two zeros, not one. So what gave value to these two zeros? What gave value to these two zeros? So what is important in our life? 
that one that is jesus in our life everything else is a zero what do you mean by that nothing that we did has anything but only the righteousness of christ without that righteousness of christ we are all zeros my dear brothers and sisters we may be good we may be prayerful but all that is a zero but bring that righteousness of christ into that everything that we do has a value our prayer has a value our no uh, pious action has a value the good works that we has a value only when we have that one jesus with us that's the righteousness of christ he gives value to everything that is there in our life your family has value because of jesus sister my preaching has value because of jesus christ not because of what i spoke if i speak about myself there's no value so it's only jesus who gives value to everything in our life that's what we says one man's act of righteousness everything is done by him and we you know we walk as if we are proud christians yes nothing wrong to be because we are a children of god that's fine but then nothing we did nothing the man outside the biggest sinner and you are the same the only difference is we have christ with us that one is there otherwise all are zeros yes he's thinking what brother <laughs> what to do that's the righteous act of our god what we cannot do he did it in his flesh is that not wonderful to you and me that makes what we celebrated yesterday more meaningful it will make this easter vigil more meaningful to you and me only thing that faith in jesus christ and what is faith in christ shall we go back to john 3:36 okay let's finish with that john 3:36 is wind up with that who believes in the son has eternal life who disobeys the son will not have see life but by endure the god so what does it mean that so finally that believe in christ the righteousness every righteous act is done by jesus christ so we need to believe him in what is that belief i explained to the people who are there in the morning the second half of this verse gives us a meaning for what is that belief obeying everything that god told us to do when we obey everything that christ wants us to do through the word of god through the teachings of the ch- church whatever the church and the word of god tells us to do when we obey that that is a sign of our faith in christ and that is what we need to do rest everything is done by christ for you and me every other act is done by you and me so let's find wind up with once again when we go back to romans 5 16 17 18 16 to 19 we will read while well, we wind up once once again we'll read that and the free gift is not like the effect of one man's sin for the judgment following one trespass brought condemnation but the free gift following many trespasses brings justification next verse it is if because of one man's trespass death exercised dominion through that one man surely more surely will those who receive the abundance of grace that's what it says abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness brother hold on there brother abundance of grace and free gift of righteousness of god can you all raise your right hand and say this abundance of grace can you all repeat after me abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness exercise dominion in life through one man jesus christ yes my dear friends free gift of righteousness that's what it says condemnation sin through one man righteousness through one man faith in that one man brings merits us that righteousness can we also read 19 and 20 we'll finish with 18 first therefore just as one man's trespass led to condemnation for all one man's act of righteousness leads to jesus so jesus did the righteous act and he's giving it to you and me as a free gift 19 we will read for just as by one man's disobedience that many were made sinners so by the one man's obedience that many will be made righteous we will all be made righteous when we obey god in every matter obeying god through the word of god and through the teachings of the church let's close our eyes for a moment heavenly father we thank you for giving us the grace to understand that we are all sinners even though i have not committed sin i become part of that original sin because of one man's sin but through the one act of righteousness by jesus christ i am safe from eternal wrath because 
that one man's act of righteousness brought life to everyone today give me the grace to unite my to the righteousness of god that's a free gift you give to every human kind who believe in him who obey his word and the commands heavenly father we make all these prayers in jesus name amen amen glory be to the father and to the son and to the holy spirit as it as was, was in the beginning, beginning is, is now, now and ever shall, shall be, be world without, without end, end. Amen. amen god bless you and thank you praise the lord and louder praise the lord hallelujah 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 let's very gently close our eyes as we prepare our hearts we enter once again into the holy of holies let's once again pray on this holy day i let our prayer be jesus help me to be holy take away everything that is unholy and fill me with your love your mercy your compassion colossians chapter 1 verse 16 says for by him all things were created in heaven and on earth visible and invisible with the thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities all things were created through him and for him and ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 for we are his workmanship created in christ jesus for good works which god prepared beforehand so that we should walk in them let's close our eyes and for a moment let's thank the lord let's thank him for all the good things that we have received in our life for all the blessings for the beautiful family that he has given us for the times we were down and out and he was there with us for the countless miracles that we have seen in our life let us thank him as we come in his holy presence as we sit in this holy temple of the lord let's experience his great presence let's experience his healing touch let's experience the joy of being with jesus Lord we come into your presence we bow in humble adoration it's your holiness that surrounds me this moment your very presence gives you love as we sit once again as the holiness of the lord surrounds us this moment Let's speak to Jesus. Let's tell him everything that is in our heart. Let's offer it to him. And let's with joy in our hearts. Let's tell the Lord, Lord, you bless me. Lord, you fill me with your love, your mercy, your compassion. Lord, we come into your presence. We bow in humble adoration. It's your holiness that surrounds me this moment Your very presence gives you love Praise praise to your name Praise praise above all things Praise praise to your name Praise praise Jehovah our king You made the earth and you made it breathe every morning You fill the air with birds and butterflies You let the cool breeze to refresh all creation You turn the darkness into light As we forget so many times to just look around us and see the beautiful things that God has given us as created for us every breath that we take is a beautiful gift from our God so once again this moment let's just open our hearts let's thank the Lord for all that we have received you make the earth breathe every morning you fill the air with birds and butterflies You let the cool breeze to refresh your creation You turn the darkness into light Praise praise to your name Praise praise up 
everything this moment let's forget the person who's next to us let's bring to God our family let's bring to Jesus our family the beautiful family that he has given us every member of our family our parents our brothers our sisters and as we worship the Lord as we glorify the Lord with a grateful heart let us thank the Lord praise praise to your name Let's gently place our hands on our hearts. You move the mountains and the ocean. You light the moon and stars every night. You made heaven and earth in your own purpose. You bless your people in different ways. And here we are, Lord. Yes, Lord, you made the heaven and earth with a purpose. And you have called us here with a purpose, Lord. Here we are, Lord. We open our hearts. We speak to you, Lord. Bless us, Lord. Let your blessings come upon us, our families, Lord. Let your healing touch come. Let your deliverance come, yes, Lord. You move the mountains and the oceans. You light the moon and stars every night. You made heaven and earth in your own purpose. You bless your people in different ways. You move the mountains and the ocean. You light the moon and stars every night. You made heaven and earth in your own purpose. You bless your people in different way. Gently let's raise our hands. Let's just worship the Lord. Praise, praise to your name. Praise, praise above all things. Praise, praise to your name. Praise. How mighty is your presence As we worship you from all nations Thank you Lord, we give you all glory We worship you Lord, you are everything to us Jesus Bow our heads in humble adoration Send your blessings on us now Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God is good. All, All the time. time. All the time. God is good. Jesus is Lord. Now, now and forever. Now and forever. Jesus, Jesus is Lord. Lord. Today the promise word. Prophecy of Isaiah. Chapter 30. Verse 18. Blessed are the one who wait for the Lord. Blessed are the one. Who is expecting and waiting for the Lord. Two things will happen. Generously, God will give you mercy. Then the justice also will be given to you. How many of you have uh, illegal court cases going on without having much remedy and no hope? But the case is going on. How many of you have? Wait for the Lord today. 
you will get a favorable judgment at the earliest. That's a promise. How many of you are waiting for uh, mercy from God Almighty? Certain areas we don't have any merit, but we are depending upon His mercy. Lord, it is your mercy. We have no merit at all. So how many of you want to have a mercy of God in your children's life, family, and in your life? Then wait for the Lord. There's a time for everything. And continue the same level of prayer, same type of prayer, and same spirituality until something happens. Book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, verse 1. God does everything in his own time. There is a time for everything. And in his own time, this will happen. So, Isaiah chapter 30 verse 18 says, Blessed are the one who waits for the Lord. Surely, the Lord will show his mercy upon you. And generously, he will shower his justice upon you. So, mercy and justice will be given to you. Wait for the Lord. Continue with the same type of prayer with great expectation. And during this day of preparation for resurrection. Today is a preparation day for resurrection. Some of the youth members are working there in the church. St. Joseph Church. I asked, what are you doing? The youth group told me, we are working for the resurrection of Jesus. Every year we are doing so much of work. We have to lift up Jesus slowly, slowly and showing the people. Every year we have work hard to make Jesus resurrect. Then I was surprised without this youth group how Jesus will be risen. They said it is impossible without our help. Bible says the power of God will come upon the body of Jesus and Jesus will be risen. Bible says. But this youth group they say, without our work, this evening, resurrection process will not be completed. Now lift up our hands. We wait for, for receiving or rejoicing in the power of resurrection. A renewed power. Power is there. All of you are powerful. But we need more power to face more problems in the future. More problems are waiting for us. So every year we commemorate the resurrection of Jesus and the descending of the Holy Spirit. Every year we need a fresh anointing. That's why we do it every year to get fresh anointing. Blessed are the one who all are waiting. Blessed are the one who waits for the resurrection of the Lord. That power will descend upon you. And you will come out of your present crisis. Surely you will come out of it. Keep your hands down. When I prayed, I have received some names in this morning. What the Lord is going to do, some miracles in their life. Uh, Frederick, the Lord gives you the answer on the second day of our Divine Mercy Novena. You have a number of intentions. The Lord has given this message. Worry not my son. This year, during these 10 days of divine mercy, Good Friday and after, uh, first day after Easter, these 10 days, you are, within these 10 days, your prayers are being answered. And the Lord says, Siddharth, all your prayers are answered. You are many days being online waiting for the Lord. Today, your prayers are answered. A person's name, Maria. Your prayers are being answered and your waiting period is over. Today is the day of your blessing. Same blessing comes upon Lawrence and Mania, Lovely and Menal and Polly. They all are being blessed. These are the names that I received in this morning when I was in prayer. So when I come to this pulpit, the Lord gives what I have to preach and what I have to share and what mystery that I have to share with you and reenact with you. Today the Lord says, the greatest mystery in the Bible, the power of resurrection, that is going to be reenacted in you and you will have a new spirit of 
resurrection or resurrected life or new life in your personal spiritual life lift up our hands keep all our intentions on the altar of divine mercy hebrews 4:16 let us approach the altar of divine mercy let us approach the throne of his mercy surely he gives us his mercy and compassion and justice we are waiting for fresh anointing to receive power of the resurrection today that will happen you are going to come out of the deadly things in your life many things are deadly or not alive now many things are going to take resurrection your hope which are lost or your health that is declining or your wealth that is being destroyed or the peace of mind everything will get a revival keep our hands down keep on all our intentions on the divine mercy altar and approach the throne of divine mercy with full confidence the second day many more intentions are going to be answered a live testimony given by glenda bento from goa kindly stand up this is an encouraging testimony for us she has a complaint in her mitral valve dysfunction there is one complaint one more complaint she is suffering of osteoarthritis one more complaint she has left ventricle is not working so three problems she lost almost her hope and then she was online and looking to jesus during this adoration she applied water and salt for her healing and she drank it then she went for the medical checkup the doctor said your fatty liver is healed this functional mitral valve is all right this functional left ventricle is repaired by its own jesus did it and where is glenda Praise so glenda stands in the front you, row jesus. and she thank gives you, glory you. and honor thank to you, jesus till the time of your departure from this world if anything is declining in you it will take a revival and renewal let us lift up our hands and pray together jesus jesus on this day on this of, day, preparation, of preparation of your resurrection of your resurrection we wait for you we wait yes, for especially, you, especially for receiving for receiving a powerful anointing a powerful anointing and today's promise word and today's promise that we recollect word, now as we reflect blessed now, are the one blessed who are waits one for the lord who waits for surely the lord. surely they will get mercy they will get mercy and justice and justice generously, generously from the lord from the lord. this promise let this be promise fulfilled be fulfilled during this chaplet during this chaplet and second day and second of day our novena of our novena amen. amen in the name of jesus i pray over all logosians around the world let this promise word be fulfilled all logosians around the world may receive mercy and compassion from the lord generously and all all logosians may get justice from above let the lord give answer of your prayers and all intentions that we have received in this intention box let it be answered all intentions that we receive and has been receiving through this online let it be blessed those who are present here the lord almighty may give answer of your prayers in jesus name amen, amen. in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen Mama Maria beseech your son Jesus for the fulfillment of all our intentions Mama Maria beseech your son Jesus for the fulfillment of all our intentions Mama Maria beseech your son Jesus for the fulfillment of all our intentions Mama Maria beseech your son Jesus for the fulfillment of all our intentions Mama Maria beseech your son Jesus for the fulfillment of all our intentions Mama Maria beseech your son Jesus for the fulfillment of all our intentions Mama Maria beseech your son Jesus for the fulfillment of all our intentions 
Mama Maria, beseech your son Jesus for the fulfillment of all our intentions. Mama Maria, beseech your son Jesus for the fulfillment of all our intentions. Mama Maria, beseech your son Jesus for the fulfillment of all our intentions. As I kneel before you, as I bow my head in prayer, take this day, make it yours, and fill me with your love. our hands down. Testimony number four. Kenneth Peter from Bangalore giving this testimony. He has a brain tumor and a severe headache and symptoms of the relapse of the tumor happened. Then he was online and cried and prayed, Lord, as I have this tumor, now the symptoms already started. Help me, Lord, and let it be melted and removed. Suddenly, during this online ministry, he heard somebody's tumor being dissolved. Suddenly, that pain disappeared. Then he went for the medical checkup after the adoration. The doctor said, there is no tumor and there is no pain and he is healthy. Thank Praise the Lord. Praise Our Jesus. glory Thank and honor Lord. to Jesus. Lord. Amen. So the spirit of resurrection, that is Holy Spirit. Descending upon the sick, they are being healed. Descending upon the dead body of Jesus, it is risen. Descending upon your blindness, your eyesight will be restored. Descending upon your cancer, it will be dissolved. Let that power of resurrection descend upon you and on me. Blessed are the one who waits for fresh anointing. Justice will be granted to you. Mercy will be overflowing in your life. And generously, lavishly, all blessings will be added to you. Let us begin in the chaplet for the fulfillment of all our intentions and intentions that we have received through social media and also through this intention box. What you are offering now, that also will be fulfilled. You aspired Jesus, Jesus but, but the, the source of life, gushed for the souls, souls and the ocean of mercy, mercy opened up for the whole world, of found of life, unfathomable divine mercy, envelop the whole world, and empty yourself out upon us. O blood and water, which gushed from the heart of Jesus, as the fountain of mercy for, for us, us I, I trust, trust in you. you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. Blessed is the fruit of your own Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. I believe in God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty creator of heaven and earth. I believe, I believe in Jesus Christ, Christ his only Son, our Lord. Lord. He, he was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and, and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father Almighty. From there, he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, life everlasting. Keep our intentions on this altar connected with the family and finances. These two areas are going to be blessed now. 
our family is a vineyard of the lord it should not be filled with weeds and pest let it be freed from the attack of the devil and disintegration let the family become domestic church every day we pray that let the family become domestic church assisting partner be turned as the best partner all children be spirit filled so that children may not give you trouble but day one onwards day one onwards their assistance in the world will be a blessing for you let the children be spirit filled then the children are blessing in your family never they will give you some troubles they will not be a cause of your financial shortage do not worry about your finances how to bring them up if they are spirit filled they will make their way in this world without anybody's help holy spirit the paraclete will help them lord bless all children in all families in all religions and cultures let all children be spirit filled assisting partner in all cultures and religions be turned as the best partner couples are to be attracted to each other other attractions let it be destroyed let everybody enjoy wonderful finance as the mother church teaches moderate prosperity do get 164 and all flowing blessing as the catechism book teaches in 517 lord bless everybody with the good finance and sound finances thank you jesus, thank you, jesus. through this online ministry and logos ministry thousands of people are already become rich and that is the mind of the catholic church everyone must become rich so that they may make their nation rich by paying huge amount of tax otherwise where the government will get the money make yourself rich to make the nation rich and also the poor people will be benefited by the calf of your tithe if you don't have a huge amount of tithe how you will help the poor by 5 percentage how will make your church rich by giving 5 percentage total 10 percentage of tithe half to the poor half to the church how you will make the poor rich if you are very poor so through this online ministry we have intended to make all logosians immensely rich praise the lord praise so lord. that they may make their nation rich we are nation builders and also church builders lift up your hands offer your intentions connected with the family and finances living in poverty may be very easy but put your effort the lord will bless your effort second thessalonians chapter 3 verse 10 everyone must to work that work will be blessed by the lord that will give you lot of material things that's a plan of god genesis chapter 215 nurture the world protect the world develop the world put your effort do not be lazy and help others to share your blessings 10 percentage only not more than of that 35 percentage of tax not more than of that and half of the tithe directly to the poor half directly to the church keep on lifting up your hands let us have a noble ideas let us have noble ideas and concept in our brain what we think that we will become think according to the promises of the lord and apply your faith in the promises by faith and meditation of the promises surely you will become healthy and wealthy and one day wait for the lord your family will become heaven on earth the assisting partner will become the best those who do not have partner whatever be your religion we pray now the lord may help you to find out a suitable partner today and give you wonderful job a house with a garden around it jeremiah 29 5 and 6 the lord may fulfill all these promises from the bible and from the magisterial teaching be fulfilled amen, amen. so keep your hands down these 10 days are so precious in our life one day is already over nine more days 
all these intentions that we keep for these ten days will be answered. Keep the same intentions for ten days and take a serious effort to participate all ten days. Then somebody asked, Father, if I miss one day, what I will do? Shall I go to yesterday and sit there? It is not possible. But through the YouTube that is possible, you can sit in yesterday and attend the yesterday's session. But you cannot go to yesterday and sit there, not possible. But you can visit yesterday's Divine Mercy telecast on YouTube today and tomorrow also. So attend these 10 days online or physically or previous telecast. 10 days attendance needed. Let us pray for families and finances. Eternal Father, Father I, I offer you, you the body and blood, blood soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion how mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion how mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion how mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion how mercy on us and on the whole world keep on lifting up our hands and praise and thank God for all blessings that we received and yet to receive Hallelujah, 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 Hava la garay sholo bala garasala bala sholo bala garasala bala sholo bala garasala bala garasala bala garasala bala garasala bala garasala bala sholo bala garasala bala garasala in the name of Jesus, I bless your families and bless your finances. I bless your career and business. I bless your farm and your business center. I bless your career center. Today the Lord says, more than of 300 people who are looking to Jesus right now, being blessed in their career. They are getting good promotion. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Thank Jesus. You Jesus. Praise A person named Isaac, Nestor, Mariapa, Irene, Francis, you all are getting wonderful blessing right now in your finances. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Augustine, Jesus. Lavina, Genevieve, and Mary and Thomas, you are being blessed right now in your families. Thank you, Jesus. Praise Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Your pastor's name, Patricia, you are looking for a partner for many years. Today, the Lord will show you the partner whom you have to marry. Thank you, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise Dimble, the Lord has answered your prayers. Pamela, the Lord has answered your prayers. Thank you, Jesus. Let us have uh, some testimonies that will help us to develop our hope in Christ Jesus. Our faith journey will be very easy when we have seen thousands of witnesses around us. Hebrews chapter 12, 1. Let us complete our faith journey with full confidence because multitude of witnesses we have around us that will help us to complete our faith journey we have hope that one day I also will be blessed like that therefore we are surrounded by great cloud of witnesses we have this experience in Logos Retreat Center there is a cloud of witnesses so all Logosians have confidence in their life now. Confidence. If anything happens similar to it or same, surely 
the same lord will set me free and you also free that's a confidence we have so let us complete our faith journey confidently in this world by hearing the testimonies of thousands of people testimony number 1 judy fernandez from mumbai giving a testimony i am a logosian and i am online one day my mother suffering from seizure and growth in her brain very difficult situation we have hope in christ jesus she was under medication it was not healed it helped her to prolong her life with the sickness then they started praying the medicines turned effective and now there is no seizure and there is no brain tumor Thank praise the jesus. lord praise thank you jesus thank you jesus praise you jesus praise there's jesus. no growth in the brain thank you lord testimony number 2 maria giving a testimony 14 years there was a problem connected with the mutation of the land document it's not happened she started confidently the prayer of acp spiritual enclosure prayer with the striking prayers within 10 days the mutation happened the lord will give command to the people who are not doing any work or impeding your benefits when you do the acp prayer your enemies will become your best friends they will be transformed and your enemies will get wonderful blessings from the lord because they are on the right track if not they can be off track please bring the whole humanity to the right track by our acp prayer especially seven groups of people will be transformed confidently do the acp prayer now we lift up our hands offer our intentions connected with enemies terrorism exploitation bribery black magic sorcery land grabbers looters food adulterers persecutors these are the groups of people troubling the whole humanity maybe you are also the victim of one of these groups and their activities do not be disheartened seeing the evil around the world the evil doesn't exist without the cooperation of the human beings the devil operates the demons operate through the human faculties we have to save these seven groups of people from the hands of the devil put them in the hands of god almighty let them receive wonderful blessing from god almighty doing right thing here after without striking prayer it is not possible without acp prayer it is not possible take the seven steps of acp prayer and do this prayer every day for the transformation of seven groups of people and uh, this format of acp prayer you will get from our prayer book page 11 to 14 acp prayer prayer book page 11 to 14 now anybody troubling you or being persecuted by others lift up your hands and pray eternal father, father I, i offer you the, the body, body and blood, blood soul and divinity of your dearly beloved son our lord jesus christ in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion how mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion how mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion how mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion how mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion how mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion how mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion how mercy on us and on the whole world 
for the sake of his sorrowful passion how must he on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion how must he on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion how must he on us and on the whole world now kindly stand up we do scp prayer testimony number 9 sushila ambat from kolkata giving this testimony her husband has three illegal court cases filed in mumbai court she did a scp prayer lord why should he has to suffer like this he is innocent but now he is under suffering as a criminal set him free lord through online prayer she cried and prayed to the lord and put this petition in the chat box within 10 days all the three cases which are totally illegal with only illegal motives unjust motives they filed that is dismissed in mumbai court it is a miracle praise the lord thank you jesus praise hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. testimony number 7 lv fernandez giving this testimony testimony number 7 my bronchitis is healed and wheezing disappeared all of you may lift up your hands look at the face of jesus who cried and prayed father they do not know what they are doing luke 23 34 people do not know what they are doing they are possessed by demons some are possessed by demons they are doing many things like a terrorism and a persecution bribery black magic injustice they do not know what they are doing and jesus said forgive them father bless them father they are highly possessed and they did all these persecution upon me but forgive them they are innocent the same way these seven groups of people brothers and sisters i tell you they are innocent but the criminal one the devil entered into them made them as criminals so our fight is not against flesh and blood not against people ephesians chapter 6 verse 11 and 12 our fight is not against flesh and blood verse 12 says we are not fighting with people having blood and flesh we are fighting the spirit against them working or spirit entered into them and working against the people turn them against the people so we strike these spirits in them and set these people free from the dominion of devil and suspend these faculties which are possessed by the devil for the time being until they are being possessed by holy spirit if not it will be destroyed by the devil better we have to suspend it now keep it safe until holy spirit comes and takes it all of you lift up your hands all terrorist all over the world strike them lord with all seven swords especially the sword of elisha messiah and saint gabriel all unjust war mongers strike them lord with all seven swords especially the sword of elisha messiah and saint gabriel all persecutors everywhere in the world strike them lord with all seven swords especially the sword of elisha Messiah and Saint Gabriel all land grabbers looters food adulterers yes exploiters liars strike them lord with all seven swords especially the sword of elisha messiah and saint gabriel all doers of injustice strike them lord with all seven swords especially the sword of elisha messiah and saint gabriel all acceptors of bribery strike them lord with all seven swords especially the sword of elisha messiah and saint gabriel all doers of black magic and worshipers of devil and demons strike them lord with all All seven swords especially the sword of elisha messiah and saint gabriel lift up
prabhu hands and pray after me luke 23 34 forgive them father forgive, forgive them father they do not know they do not know what know they are doing what they are doing they are highly possessed they are highly possessed afflicted Afflicted. their faculties faculty are being guided are being guided by the devil and demons by the devil and demons sent our brethren send them free from these bondages free from these and bondages bless them and bless more them more than you bless us more than, than you fill them fill with them. your holy spirit with your holy let spirit. them stand in favor of every one let, let them stand in favor of every one today onwards today onwards amen amen so i appeal to you on the second day of our divine mercy do the scp prayer every day take 5 10 minutes and pray through the scp prayers for the benefit of seven groups of people you will see very soon a warless society a persecution less society exploitation will be zero level corruption will be zero level amen no amount of governmental effort will be will be enough to control it but the prayer will help all the governments to check and control these seven groups of people and they will become philanthropist never they will enter into the devil's kingdom but they will enter into god's kingdom please take it up as a mission every day sit in your prayer room do the full set of scp prayer page 11 to 14 you will see a new world according to revelation chapter 21 verse 1 i have seen a new heaven and a new jerusalem a new earth if you want to see this promise be fulfilled a new heaven and new jerusalem please do acp prayer every day first of all you will protect yourself second you will save the life of your a persecutors thirdly this promise will be fulfilled in this world hallelujah hallelujah thank you jesus thank you jesus praise you jesus praise you jesus hallelujah 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 la ora sia la ora havala havara sala havala havala havara solo havala havara sala havala havala havara sala havala havara solo havala havala havara solo havala havara solo havala havara sala havara solo havala 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 havara Thank you. All of you may sit down. Testimony number 10. Nine eight giving this testimony. I was suffering of sciatic pain for a long time. I was under medication but not being relieved. But during the mid march I was attending this online healing service Divine Mercy Chaplet Adoration Holy Mass. within few days i am completely freed the day one on was i am relieved after some time i am completely freed thank you Jesus. praise the lord praise the lord testimony number 11 prexodus giving this testimony from the place is not given five years there was a problem i am healed from severe skin problem for five years i applied the holy oil blessed through online that day on was my skin disease declining now it is completely healed thank you jesus i do not take any medication for the skin disease now praise all glory and honor to jesus forever and ever amen, amen. testimony number 12 honor in giving this testimony my brother is healed from alzheimers and also loss of memory after 6 months 6 months they noticed every day his memory is declining and alzheimer's increased during this online ministry their faith hope increased prayed well he is freed uh, from alzheimer's and loss of memory he speaks now perfectly thank you jesus thank you jesus now we pray for our emotional healing Proverbs 
sorrowful mind is the cause of all diseases fear anxiety depression continuous sorrows hopelessness hatred anger unforgiveness jealousy lust all these things are negatives negative feelings and negative emotions bible says it will destroy your health it will disfigure you now the holy spirit the spirit of joy spirit of peace that comes upon you this deep buried sorrows will disappear and you will get spirit of joy i say assisti 13 i will anoint you now with the oil of gladness psalm 92 verse 10 i will apply on your forehead new oil first samuel 16 13 jesus pours out his oil on you that is the holy spirit now on verse all the logosians will experience the power of the holy spirit permanently in their life amen the spirit of the lord will rest upon you permanently so the spirit of depression leaves you spirit of sorrows leaves you amen. spirit of joy and peace and humility will rest upon you amen let the lord anoint you now with oil of gladness and new oil and also the oil of power the lord may set you free from your emotional disturbances how many of you are emotionally disturbed and shattered now lift up your hands those who are emotionally down shattered broken in the name of jesus i pray that he may anoint you right now with the oil of gladness that spirit of joy may come upon you john 16:20 be fulfilled in you all your sorrows be turned into joy amen amen thank you jesus thank you jesus praise you jesus praise you jesus hallelujah hallelujah thank you lord thank you lord eternal father hallelujah. i offer you the body and blood soul and divinity of, of your, your dearly beloved son, son our lord jesus, jesus christ, christ in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion how mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion how mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion how mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion how mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion how mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion how mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion how mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion how mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion how mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion how mercy on us and on the whole world testimony number 15 nelson giving a testimony my second stage of prostate cancer is being healed through this online ministry by care prayer medicine word of god and faith i am perfectly healed thank you jesus my psa is very normal thank you lord thank you jesus thank you, my jesus. treatment is very successful thank you lord. and i am freed from the traits of all cancer in my prostate is a wonderful testimony given by nelson testimony number 15 thank, thank you jesus thank you jesus praise you jesus praise you jesus now gently lift up your hands a gentle breeze moving over you 1984 when i i was praying a gentle breeze moved over me for half an hour a gentle breeze that made a big change in my life that was the day of my anointing in 1984 and i heard mark 
whatever you have asked you believe that you have received it it will be yours i felt that my hands or my body is in contact with a live electric wire half an hour that continued now lift up your hands a heavenly breeze moves over you genesis 1 2 ruwa was moving over the chaos it was moving over the darkness it was moving over shapelessness the face of the earth was covered with darkness now your life may be covered with the darkness because of sickness or hopelessness or emotional disturbances or mentally breakdown mentally you are totally broken in a shapeless situation emotionally broken shapeless situation now the spirit is moving over you experience a gentle breeze more than 4000 people experience now a gentle breeze thank you jesus Christ. thank you lord a power that moves as if your body has contact with live electric wire listen the message that the spirit speaks the spirit speaks through today's promise word blessed are the one who waits online for receiving fresh anointing amen. blessed are the one who is present in logos amen waiting for fresh anointing justice will be given to you amen mercy will be multiplied and granted a generous blessing from the lord comes upon you amen more than of 7000 people are being touched by the holy spirit now thank gives you spirit of joy and peace thank you jesus praise you jesus thank you lord thank you jesus all of you pray i bind you and cast you out and send you to the feet of jesus thank you and cast you out and send you to the feet of jesus keep your hands down and pray in the name of jesus i bind you and cast you out and send you to the feet of jesus in the name of jesus we bind you and cast you out and send you to the feet of jesus all bad spirit of infirmities entered into our bodies in the name of jesus we bind you and cast you out and send you to the feet of jesus all bad spirit of depression suicidal tendency last anger unforgiveness in the name of jesus we bind you and cast you out and send you to the feet of jesus all bad spirit of blindness in the name of jesus we bind you and cast you out and send you to the feet of jesus all bad spirit of cancer in the name of jesus we bind you and cast you out and send you to the feet of all jesus all bad spirit of allergies that entered into you in the name of jesus we bind you and cast you out and send you to the feet of jesus all bad spirit of legion that entered into you in the name of jesus we bind you and cast you out and send you to the feet of jesus all bad spirit of substance abuse that entered into humanity in the name of jesus we bind you and cast you out and send you to the feet of jesus all bad spirit of anti christ entered into many in the name of jesus we bind you and cast you out and send you to the feet of jesus all bad spirit of witchcraft and magic in the name of jesus we bind you and cast you out 
and send you to the feet of Jesus. Lift up your right hand and pray after me. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We all pray together. We all pray together. And bind and cast out. And bind and cast out all negative spirits. All negative spirits from all human beings. From all human beings. And send them to the feet of Jesus. 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 I am set free. I am set free. I am set free. I am set free by the power of Jesus. By the power of Jesus. By the power of the Holy Spirit. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Through the intercession of saints. Through the intercession of saints. Keep your hands down. More than of 120 people are set free from the spirit of allergy. Thank Dust you. allergy, food allergy, and cloth allergy, some kind of metallic allergies. Thank you, Different types of allergies are being healed. Thank you, Jesus. 120 people are set free now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jayanath, the Lord has set you free from all your allergy, and you have um, dust allergy, watery eyes, cough and cold in the morning. Jayanath, you are being healed. Thank David, you, you are being healed now. Thank Cheryl, you. the Lord has answered your prayers. Thank you, Lord. Matilda, the Lord has blessed you now. Thank Poonam, you. the Lord has answered your prayers. Thank Braille, you. the Lord has answered your prayers. Thank you, Lord. Fabian, the Lord has answered your prayers. Alice, the Lord has blessed you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Rupali, the Lord has answered your prayers. Thank you. Norma, the Lord has blessed you now. Thank you, Jesus. Namida, the Lord has answered your prayers and removed the cancer from your body. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I pray over all Logosians. Let their faith increase. Hope increased in Christ Jesus. Let everyone be blessed today. And on this second day, we pray for priests and religious. Let there be occasion to priesthood and religious life. They are intercessors of the world. Give us, Lord, more intercessors. Those who participate this second day's session and mysteries, let their intentions be fulfilled. And all the ten days, the intentions that, be, that they place on the altar of divine mercy be answered. Thank you. The Lord may bless all ten days' intentions together. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Now we pray for physical healings. Eternal Father, I offer for you, you the, body the body and blood, blood soul, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, Son, our Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ, in atonement for our sins, sins and, and those of the whole world. world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Let us listen to two testimonies how the physical healings take place in Logos. After that, I pray for all the sick and suffering. Testimony number 16. Braganza from UK giving a testimony. I am suffering from endometrial polyp. It was 1.4 millimeter. Through this online ministry, I am completely healed. I am scared and stressed out. And I am suggested for endoscopy. To clear the doubt but I was online then the doctor told me all your endometrial complaints are being healed you are freed from your sickness through this online ministry the Lord heals thousands of people around the world testimony number 18 Arlene Elisa from Kolkata giving this testimony she says I am very high in my thyroid TSH was 12.48 and that is reduced within one day after the adoration 4.72 very normal 
now lift up our hands we have a lot of hope in the wounds of jesus there is not a presumption it is not an illusion is a reality the wounds of jesus in his body now the marks of that wounds another reality john 20 was 28 27 says see my wounds the marks of my wound 28 put your finger in my marks he said my lord my god i believe so this wounds and marks are still valid for us saint thomas touched it and verified it there is wound and marks put your hand on your sickness be healed in the name of jesus and be filled with the holy spirit the lord may touch you and heal you let your thyroid complaint be healed let your tremor in the body and parkinson's be healed right now jesus may heal your brain tumor thank you jesus the lord may help you to get a healing of your paralysis blindness children who are mute deaf dumb let them be healed those who are autistic let them come out of it those who have a skin infection let them be healed those who have gynec issues several types let them be healed those who have neurological problems let them be healed in jesus name i pray let the lord heal your excessive hair fall the lord may heal you are prostate enlargement and the lord may heal all types of cancer in your body as is a rebuke to the spirit of infirmity that left to the body luke chapter 439 i rebuke the spirit of infirmity in you spirit of cancer in you luke chapter 436 jesus rebuked the spirit working against the people he has given a command and asked the evil one to get out of the body they obeyed let all the evil spirit be bound at the feet of jesus and spirit of infirmity be rebuked as jesus rebuked the spirit mark chapter 1 verse 25 jesus rebuked a spirit silent spirit in a man that man was set free now jesus sets you free by this prayer of rebuke in jesus name i pray that the lord may heal you make a sign of the cross on your sickness and just pray jesus, jesus i am healed I am by healed your wounds by your wounds amen amen lifting up our hands let us pray for fresh anointing and outpouring of the holy spirit eternal father i, I offer you, you the body and blood, blood soul, soul and divinity, divinity. of your dear and beloved son our lord jesus christ in the atonement for our sins and those of the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion how mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion how mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion how mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion how mercy on us and on the whole world let the spirit of the lord descend upon you and stay with you permanently the spirit of the lord may open your eyes second king chapter 6 verse 17 open his eyes o lord let him see what all that you have already arranged for us let that fire come upon you let that spirit open your eyes second king chapter 6 17 be fulfilled in you let your inner eyes be opened let the lord allow you to see the miracles already happened around you and in you mark chapter 4 verse 41 mark 
Jesus commanded even the wind and the sea that also obeyed him he made the wind and the sea into sleep now huge amount of problems multitude of problems in your life according to mark 4:41 jesus sent them to sleep do you believe it yes sir do you believe it yes sir and people amazed and filled with great joy and great fear of god they all said what a power it is even wind and sea obey him what jesus did he put the wind and the sea into sleep those who have a wind and sea and raging problems in your life lift up your right hand on the second day of our divine mercy days the lord going to put your wind and sea into sleep amen don't amen. sleep now get up <laughs> hallelujah hallelujah thank you jesus thank you jesus but uh, your problems the wind and sea going to sleep amen and you are going to become alert holy god holy, holy mighty, mighty one holy mortal one, one have a mercy on us and on the whole world, world. Holy, holy god holy, holy mighty, mighty one holy mortal one have mercy on us and on the whole world, world. Holy, holy god, god holy, holy mighty one, one holy mortal one, one have mercy on us and on the whole world, world. closing prayer eternal and god in whom mercy is endless and treasury of our compassion in a sustainable look kindly upon us increase your mercy in us that in difficult moments we might not despair nor become despondent but with great confidence submit ourselves to your holy will which is love and mercy itself amen now we have the second day's novena prayer and also the reflections on today's message about so also priest and religious we pray for wonderful religious occasion and occasion to priest to in the catholic church the reason that they are in the sources of the world and they are doing in the continuation of the ministry of jesus somebody has to continue it somebody has to continue the ministry of jesus he explained in matthew chapter 9 verse 35 healing deliverance proclamation and casting out demons this is a ministry of jesus so we need priest and religious an occasion to priesthood and religious life to continue the ministry of jesus in this world you can also continue but somebody has to give leadership without leadership how we can de- develop our talents without leadership how will make development in our spiritual life so we need a lot of holy priest and holy religious in in a serious way we pray during the second day of our divine mercy preparation days for good occasions holy occasions to continue the ministry of jesus now the ministry of jesus intercession romans 8:34 jesus interceding for us sitting at the right side of the father so the religious imitating that part of the mission of jesus sitting quietly and interceding that's the mission of the religious then the priest continuing the ministry there in matthew matthew chapter 9:35 now i invite reverend dr george wet our mill the region superior to give today's message and lead us in second days novena prayer with a final blessing Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 My dear brothers and sisters, we are on the eve of Easter Vigil. After this novena, 
we will be going back to our own parishes and to celebrate the joy of easter and also a fruitful conclusion of our lenten season so i wish you all a happy easter praise the lord same to you father today the second day of our novena and bring to me the souls of priest and religious why we have to bring the souls of priest and religious to the mercy of jesus and what's the need of it in the diaries of the writings of saint faustina it is said that my mercy is just like an ocean my mercy is just like an ocean what kind of ocean we cannot measure it unfathomable divine mercy is a z unfathomable we will not be able to measure it how deep it is how the width and how much it can contain so such that is the nature of divine mercy we cannot think about the extension of divine mercy in the world amen amen and saint faustina through her vision telling us this nine days of novena nine days of novena each day you have to bring a certain group of souls into my mercy and yesterday it was the day we brought all the sinners the souls of all sinners to the mercy of jesus and prayed for them today we have to bring the souls of all the consecrated people priest and religious for what purpose immerse them immerse them into the ocean of mercy so that they should experience in their life the mercy of jesus then what they have to do they have to be the channels of mercy living channels of mercy and it is through them this mercy of god is spreading all over the world amen hallelujah only we can do the spiritually we can bring them to the mercy of jesus by your prayers so here today i don't think any of you have brought any priest or religious with you but spiritually the all priest and all the religious are here present in front of the mercy of jesus because we have brought them spiritually that is possible for us spiritually bring everybody to jesus and immerse this their soul spiritually and but they are living in different parts of the world in all the continents how this grace that we have achieved or we we have received for their soul spiritually how it will be communicated to them how spiritually we can give this grace to others and all categories of souls it is through the continuous ministry of jesus and this power and this authority and this duty was given by jesus to the priest and religious as it is written the consecrated people and they are the living channels they must be the living channels just like if there is a reservoir of water and that water if it is only in the reservoir no use at all it must be channeled for the use of the people and the purpose of the world the same way if the reservoir is here the mercy of jesus is here that must be channeled we have to be we have to take this mercy physically to other people 
to reach other people so that they will also receive the mercy of Jesus, grace of Jesus and they will be the living testimonies of the mercy of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So are you ready today to pray for, the, pray for all the priests and religious? Praise the Lord. When we look at the world, there may be three types of people. The majority will be always appreciating the priestly occasion and religious occasion. We work hard that let there be more and more occasions. And we always support them. But there will be an opposite group also, deadly against the priesthood. And they believe that if the priest and the religious were extinguished, or if we strike them like the shepherd, if we strike the shepherd, all the sheep will be scattered. If we want to destroy the Catholic Church, the easiest way to strike the shepherd, the consecrated people, automatically the church will fall down. So there is a big group working against the priesthood, the Catholic priesthood. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So to counter that then, it is our duty to support them in their needs. So prayer is the best support a person can extend to the lives of the consecrated people and it is our God-given duty. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Why we should pray for the priest? Why we should pray for the priest? It's the need of today. Have you ever attended the burial of a priest? Yes. And uh, when you attend the burial of the priest, look at the people, other people, how many drops of tears there will be? Hardly any people. Hardly any people having a little drop of tears in their face. Because, why? But on the other hand, the burial, something happening in our own family. What was our reaction? How much tears will be coming? How we face it? Any of that tension, any of that sadness, have we ever felt the departure of a priest? Just after the burial, everybody will come back like attended a big celebration and going back. Only very few people may be speaking, oh, he was a nice man. He was a nice parish priest. Okay, let his soul rest in peace. Let's, let his soul rest in peace there and we will rest in peace somewhere else. Praise the Lord. Why? Why we feel that? Are they such? nasty people never touch the heart of anybody in this world or theologically theologically that must be the thing we have to rejoice in the death of a holy one praise the Lord because it is not a burial but we are making a send off to heaven I think theologically people are doing that no tears but always smile and by goodbye, my dear priest, my dear religious. But I always feel that a man betrayed. Throughout his life, he spent for the people. Now nobody is there, at least one tear. Nothing. But when we experience and understand a priest well, I don't think that we can just be an onlooker because they are not strange people. They are also coming from one of the families. Just like your sons or daughters. Just like your brother or sister. And when we feel that, yes, they are belonging to us, then our mentality will change. We will be always praying 
for this consecrated people. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise, you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why they are so important in our life? Why they are so important in the life of church? Whenever I reside the stations of the cross, the sixth station, what is it? Veronica coming and wiping the face of Jesus with her towel and the face of Jesus was imprinted on that towel. But in the Bible we never see such a person called Veronica and this wiping the tears of Jesus in the stations of the cross. In the Bible it's a part of legend, isn't it? And from where this name Veronica came and what is the theological significance of this Veronica and wiping the face of Jesus and his face was imprinted. It is something the theologians used to explain it. It came from two words. Vera Icone. Vera means the true. Icone means icon, the picture. The true picture. That is Veronica. The true picture of what? The face of Jesus. The true picture of the face of Jesus, that is Vera Icone Veronica. It need not be a historical person, but it's a theological concept that each and every Christian must be a Vera Icone of Jesus. The true picture of Jesus and especially if the consecrated people, priests and religious are called to be the Veronicas. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. By seeing them, we have to experience the presence of Jesus. Because the priesthood and religious life established by Jesus. It was established by Jesus. First Corinthians Chapter 11, 25 and 26, it is that when Jesus instituted the Eucharist, he said, wherever you gather, do this in remembrance of me. That is the institutional word of priesthood. That means this authority, Jesus was communicating to apostles. And the bishops are the representatives of apostles. And this authority delegated by the doing the hands and blessing upon the people and to consecrate them into priesthood. This the same authority of the apostle was communicated to the priest. That means it is through the apostles, through the bishop, from the apostles and from Jesus, there is a continuation. So priesthood and religious life instituted by Jesus to this ministry to be continued, as Father Joe said in the introduction. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 And as we are the living channels of God's grace for the people by the administration of sacraments. By the administration of sacraments, the consecrated people are the living channels. Therefore, to be a living channel, first and foremost, they have to be filled. They have to be filled with the divine grace, divine mercy. Then only they will be able to communicate and give this mercy to other people. Other people. That is why we have to bring the souls of all priests and religious into the ocean of mercy. So it is our God-given duty to pray for them. And again, today it is a must because the number of priests and religious is now decreasing so fast. And every year, from the document from Vatican, the Anuario Pontificio, the name is called Anuario Pontificio, there the statistics, statistics are given every year the number of priests and religious are now decreasing with an exception of Africa and Asia. 
the laity the christians increasing in two continents the latin america and africa africa is the highest the number of christians are increasing and the number of consecrated people increasing africa and asia there also africa is the highest number praise the lord all my brothers and sisters from africa may god bless you and but in europe the number is far decreasing exception only in one country that is poland poland was having the grace of having two saints the reason saints saint faustina and saint john paul the second the apostles of divine mercy they are the number of christians are increasing number of consecrated life are increasing except to poland all the other place in europe it was decreasing but god's grace is upon now africa asia and latin america they are the number of christians increasing and also consecrated life is increasing praise the lord hallelujah but believe once upon a time the european church was the backbone of all christians in the world the european missionaries they were the people came out from their own country and land and they spent their life for the grace of god and to spread the faith now it is our god given duty then give back what we have received for that purpose we need more and more occasions in our own families believe we need more and more vocation where in our own families if i am not ready to send my son or daughter who will send for that holy families are needed the families must be the domestic church so my dear friends so let us now close our eyes and pray for all the consecrated people priests and religious and anyone who is in need of our prayer those who are sick those who are suffering those who are in troubles those who are in difficulties and even those who are committing certain sins and go try to go away from the church by our prayers and support let us bring them back for their sinfulness let us ask mercy to god that our heavenly father will have mercy upon them and bring them back let us pray for them and also let us pray for all the candidates for priesthood and religious life let all these young ones be strengthened in the name of jesus knowing the importance of their occasion and let our families be the source of occasion so in the book let us take page number 54 the second day's novena and let us recite together page 54 today bring to me the souls of priests and religious most merciful jesus from whom comes all that is good increase your grace in men and women consecrated to your service that they may perform worthy works of mercy and that all who see them may glorify the father of mercy who is in heaven eternal father turn your merciful gaze upon the company of chosen ones in your vineyard upon the souls of priests and religious and endow them with the strength of your blessing for the love of the heart of your son in which they are enfolded impart to them your power and light that they may be able to guide others in the way of salvation and with one voice Sing praise, praise to your boundless mercy 
for ages, ages without, without end. end. Amen. Let us all stand now. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you all. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So we will have a blessing of objects and pious articles. Now we give our love offering and tithe for the spread, spreading of divine mercy, devotion, and uh, chaplet and prayers. For the expenses of Divine Mercy Convention, you are free to give your love offering and tithe now. And all of you may sit and also prepare your pious articles and objects, water and salt, which are to be blessed. After this blessing prayer, the priest will stand in different places to give uh, blessing prayers and laying on our hands for the sick and suffering and those who have a token for a three minute counseling after the blessing session is over you are free to assemble in the divine mercy hall there you will have uh, the time for three minute counseling only those who have uh, tokens and on Saturdays we issue only 100 tokens and it is for people who are coming for a one day retreat those who are residential here these days they will have a service 6 30 only for people who are staying here they will have a vigil service in the third floor of our building in the retreat hall others are not allowed they have to go to their parishes inmates and to the People who have come for residential retreat these days who are staying here, they are welcome uh, to be there 6.30 for the Vigil Mass. Let us take the salt. In the name of Jesus, we bless this salt for exorcism and deliverance. Those who use it may get a wonderful blessing, anointing. And also, the powers of darkness be subsided. Whoever uses it may get healing of incurable diseases, especially lifestyle diseases like diabetes, cholesterol, and high BP. The Lord may set you free from all types of food poisoning and every type of demonic affliction be subsided. Amen. In the name of Jesus, we bless this water. Let this water get the power to heal the sick and cast out demons. Those who mix this salt and water and drink it, they may get wonderful healings of all their ailments and sickness. Let this water be turned as the water in the pool of Besada and Siloam. And let it be like the water in River Jordan, that portion was blessed by Prophet Elisha to heal Naaman. Those who use this water may get physical healings and their eyesight be restored if that is destroyed. All your sickness be healed. Wherever you sprinkle this water, that place be redeemed from the dominion of evil one. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Trace the sign of the cross on your medical report, all pious articles, list of your intentions, list of your enemies and list of your lost articles. In the name of Jesus, we bless all the rest of the pious articles. Let it be turned as sacramentals. And you may get a divine grace and assistance when you use it. Amen. Let your medical report be turned favorable after your ICU prayer. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, I pray over the list of your intentions, especially the intentions that you have prepared for 10 days of divine mercy. Let it be answered. The Lord may give wonderful blessing. In the list of your enemies, let them be turned as your friends. The list of your lost articles, that Jesus may help you to get it back. And you may find it in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. We bless all Logosians all over the world, and let everyone be blessed and anointed. Amen. Now the priest, they come and sprinkle the holy water over you. And the holy priest and holy nuns come out of you. 
by being sprinkled by this holy water. Tomorrow the session begins 2.30 to 5.30. Third day's novena session. Living waters flow on Sweep away my pain Bring your healing to my heart Help me love once again Living waters flow on Sweep away my pain Bring your healing to my heart Help me love once again Bring your healing to my heart Help me love once again Lay your hands gently upon us Let your touch render your peace Let it bring your forgiveness and healing lay your hands gently lay your hands you were sent to heal the broken hearted you were sent to give sight to the blind you were sent to heal all our illness Lay your hands Gently lay your hands Lay your hands Gently upon us Let your touch Render your peace Let it bring your forgiveness and healing lay your hands gently lay your hands you were sent to heal the broken hearted you were sent to give sight to the blind you were sent to heal all our illness Lay your hands Gently lay your hands Lay your hands Gently lay your hands Pour out your spirit Pour out your spirit Pour out your spirit on me Jesus, pour out your spirit Pour out your spirit Pour out your spirit on me Spirit move in this temple Spirit move in my life Spirit move I am calling Spirit move I am here Pour out your spirit Pour out your spirit Pour out your spirit on me Jesus, pour out your spirit Pour out 
your spirit pour out your spirit on me holy spirit oh Now we enter into silence of the heart and we enter into silent prayer. There is no exposition of the Eucharist today being the Holy Saturday. And tomorrow being Sunday, the third day of the Novena days, we have a Holy Mass also. These nine days, all services will be here, including Sunday. And Divine Mercy Sunday, our Bishop, Archbishop will celebrate the Holy Mass. Tomorrow I will celebrate the Holy Mass because the Novena days are so precious and we have only Mass on two Sundays in an year in Logos Retreat Center. There is Divine Mercy days only. One is done by Bishop, other one I will do it. So tomorrow for 30 we will have the Mass as the completion of the Divine Mercy Novena on the third day. By this we stop the telecast. All of you enter into deep silence and prayers. 6.30 in different parishes. We begin our vigil masses.